The Bad Boy Next Door by Jody Halford Chapter 1 If researching, enrolling, and dropping career prep programs were an Olympic sport, Shay Matthews could have taken the gold. Which was why, this time, she was going to follow all the way through. Everyone else may have let her off the hook, but Shay was done making excuses for herself. Standing in the lobby of what would be her new home, she tapped her pen against the countertop in quick succession. A new start in a new city would give her what she needed. Antsy to get going? Brady, the acting building manager for her new place, asked. He had a wide smile and a handsome face that reminded her a little of Simon, the youngest of her three older brothers. Like you wouldn't believe, she answered. I feel like I've been waiting forever. Brady held two keys on a ring, letting them swing back and forth teasingly. Sorry about that. I'm not really in charge of the building. I'm only helping out, and I have, to do it around my real job. Shay's cheeks warmed. She'd always suffered from foot-and-mouth disease. No, sorry. I wasn't complaining. Really. I'm just anxious to get settled. She followed him down the well-lit hallway toward the elevator, shifting her long-strapped purse so it slid behind her back. Brady gestured for her to go ahead of him when the doors opened. Your application said you're from Burlington? Relocating all by yourself? Yes to both. It was time for a change. More. Than time. He didn't push for more, which she appreciated. She'd need to unload the U-Haul and return it by morning, which meant she had a long night ahead. The elevator stopped on the third floor, and Shay's stomach filled with butterflies. A fresh start. And this time she wouldn't mess it up. Brady stopped at 302, her new home. From the online ad, she'd learned hers was one of 18 units in the building. Brady had offered to show her around, but she just wanted to get inside her. Apartment. He handed over the key, his blue eyes all but sparkling. I have to head into work, I own an auto repair shop about 15 minutes from here. But I'll be home in a few hours. If you need help with your boxes or anything, just buzz unit 202. She held the keys tight in her hand, closing her fingers around them like they were precious gems. She smiled up at him, and her gaze locked with his, pleased that his offer sounded genuine. There was no pressure in the statement or any, hint that he didn't think she could handle it. She stared at him a moment longer, taking in his handsome features and friendly nature. He was exactly the kind of man that would mesh perfectly with the new life she was building for herself. Safe. Sweet. That's really nice. Thank you. No problem. And if you ever need work done on your car, I give all the tenants a 10% discount, Brady said. Then he winked and added, but I'd make it 20 for you. Biting her lip, Shay tried to decide if he was being serious, silly, or flirting. After what she'd just been through, she knew better than to trust her own judgment on intentions. Brady's flirting seemed to be as much a part of him as his dark blonde hair. I need a car for that. I only have a bike. His eyes widened. Oh. Okay then. If you need some wheels, I have connections. The keys dug into her palm. Wheels were not something she could afford right now, but it was a nice offer to put. On her Sunday list. Cool. Thanks again for your help. My pleasure. Welcome to the building, Shay. He gave a mock salute and ambled down the hallway, back toward the elevator. Shay pressed an open palm to the dark wood door and just let herself breathe. In time, she'd not only be settled, but she'd have her event coordinating business up and running and she'd be able to tell her family the whole truth. But for now, she had some heavy lifting to do. Despite the chill in the underground parking garage, sweat dampened Shay's back. She yanked the elastic out of her hair and pushed back the strands that escaped, securing it into a ponytail once more. The bed and couch she'd ordered online would hopefully arrive within the week. Shay had been wary of spending the money to buy them new, but at the moment, with her breathing labored, she was glad she didn't have anything too big to carry. The small U-Haul held boxes, shelves, a coffee table, her TV, and her computer. Not. A lot, but enough to start. 
She pulled all of it to the front so getting it off the truck would be simpler. Her antique desk was the largest item in the truck, and she hadn't figured out how she'd get that upstairs yet. Her television sat on top of it. Maybe she should have taken one or all of her brothers up on helping her get settled. She dismissed the thought. As the baby of the family, she knew her siblings considered help when it came to Shay synonymous with taking over. Now that the last of the boxes rested on the opening of the truck bed, Shay jumped down and began to load the dolly. A couple more loads of boxes, then the big stuff and she'd be done. A dark, four-door car with tinted windows crawled past the truck. A few other neighbors had come and gone in the couple of hours she'd been hauling her stuff, but she'd yet to meet anyone other than Brady. Not that she was itching to make a first impression in her grimy, sweaty condition. She loaded another box onto the first one and was just placing the third down when footsteps made her look up. Her breath caught in her throat at the sight of the tall, dark-haired, scowling man walking toward her parking stall. Despite his menacing stare, which landed on her as he scanned the lot, she wasn't scared. She felt fascinated. And sticky. There was absolutely no reason to smooth out her tangled hair, but she reached up and tried anyway. Shay's pull sped up, and when tall, dark, and Franny stopped in front of her, it skipped a couple of beats entirely. He wore dark jeans and a leather jacket. He carried a small black duffel bag in one hand and gripped his keys in the other. Belatedly, Shay's sanity kicked in. He could be anyone, a murderer, a mugger, a thief. With her heart hammering, she took a step back. He arched one of his dark eyebrows. You shouldn't be down here by yourself. Why don't you have someone helping you? His voice was gruff, like he didn't use it often. It made a shiver run down Shay's spine before she registered that his tone was accusing. Her shoulders stiffened, and she sidled back toward the bed of the truck. Because I don't need any help, she said, hoping her tone was more aloof than tired. He leaned forward and glanced into the U-Haul, then looked back at Shay. You're going to move those, all by yourself? He pointed to the desk with the TV on it, then looked back at her. The disbelief etched into the lines of his face steeled her resolve. Still, she could have a backbone and manners at the same time. Letting out a breath, she gave in to the etiquette her parents had instilled in her. With a tight smile, she held out a hand and replied. Yes, actually I am. I'm Shay. I just moved in. He'd likely guessed that, but she couldn't think of anything better to say. The combination of sexy and sulky was messing with her head. He didn't even bother to extend his hand. You're taking over 302? Shay scrunched her brows together, waiting. When he didn't offer his name, she pushed down her annoyance and answered. Yes. The last tenant left quickly, so the rent was paid until the end of the month. Which had basically been the deciding factor in where to settle. His lips tilted further down, drawing Shay's attention. He gave a curt nod. Yeah. Bet he left a mess. Shay leaned against the truck, continuing to study him. He did. How do you know that? His eyes darted from side to side, then landed back on her. Shay hated the ripple of interest that danced in her stomach when that dark gaze locked on her own. Just a good guess. Free rent makes up for that, though. It was true, so she said nothing. Keeping quiet made it easier to prevent the whole foot-in-mouth thing, anyway. Good lord. Did he need to be so sexy, standing there like he was ready for anything? Stop it. You do not need another alpha male trying to take care of you. Especially not a sexy s in one with an attitude problem. The sweat was starting to pool at the base of her back now, and she shivered again. Mr. Moody set his duffel on the boxes she'd stacked and walked to the truck. Shay's heart rate spiked like she was carrying the heaviest box up a flight of stairs. With his hands on his hips, he shook his head and gave a put-upon sigh. The sound reminded Shay that she did not ask for help. Irritation replaced her momentary attraction. She nudged him out of the way. Or tried to. He didn't budge but just looked. Down his nose at her. His slightly crooked nose that added to the mystery of his good-looking face. Had he broken it? 
in a fight? Go hold the door open and I'll bring this desk in for you, he said. She pressed her lips together. His wide shoulders said he'd be able to cart the items in with far less effort than she could. Realistically, she knew she wasn't getting it in alone, but she didn't want to owe this unfriendly man anything. She'd come here to start over, to start fresh. She didn't need or want anyone's approval. Or disapproval. That's quite all right. I can manage on my own. An engine revved as a car turned into the lot, but neither of them looked away from the other. His eyes were dark, a mix between green and brown, but not really hazel. The way he looked at her, Shay couldn't tell if he was amused or exasperated and didn't want to care. She definitely didn't want to acknowledge the spark of attraction that seemed to flash in his eyes. A car door. Slammed. His frown deepened and tiny creases around his eyes made him look more frustrated. Suit yourself. He walked past her, the sexy scent of his cologne invading her space as he had. Only it stayed with her after he'd picked up his duffel, grunted a greeting to someone, and walked away. Shay leaned against the tailgate and steadied her breathing. She jumped at the sound of Brady's voice. Sorry. Didn't mean to scare you. You're wearing yourself out, he said as he looked her over, wearing a long sleeve shirt with several grease stains. He walked to the truck and looked inside. Wow. You're a workhorse. You need help with the desk? Tension she hadn't been aware of released from her shoulders, and she smiled at him. Despite being similar in height to the mystery man, Brady didn't feel nearly as imposing. In fact, his happy smile and laid-back vibe put her instantly at ease. This was the kind of man she needed to fall for, one who wouldn't think he always knew what was best for her. One who would roll beside her rather than bulldoze over her. A man she could enjoy without losing herself. She nodded. Yes. Please. I really do, she said. Brady turned out to be funny and helpful. Once they got the last of her things inside her apartment, she offered him a beer. They stood on the balcony overlooking a gorgeous courtyard. Water splashed gently in the round fountain below. The building was shaped like an incomplete, three-sided rectangle. A block letter U. With the brick and stonework facade, it had an old-school vibe that she loved. Good things will happen here. Brady tipped his bottle toward hers, clinking them. To new. Neighbors. Shay grinned and took a sip of her beer. Dark green eyes popped into her mind, making her stomach jump. May they all be as nice as you. Leaning his forearms on the rail, Brady gave her a sideways glance. She could see from the scruff on his face, he hadn't found time to shave. Or maybe laid back and carefree was his style. It suited him. Brady's blue eyes were happy and a little flirtatious. I can guarantee most of us are a hell of a lot friendlier than Wyatt. Shays. Heart jumped. Wyatt. She stopped herself from saying it out loud just to feel the sound of it on her lips. Wyatt. It suited him and his annoyingly sexy eyes. Stupid heart. She was standing outside on a cool, starry night, with a good-looking, genuinely nice man. One who didn't make her stomach feel like she disturbed a nest of butterflies. But who needed butterflies anyway? Not Shay. Not anymore. Oh. Well, that's good to know. Shay ran her hands up and down her arms. Despite the heavy sweater she wore, the chill seeped through. Brady noticed and nodded toward the sliding door. Let's head back in. You're probably exhausted, and I still need to shower. Considerate and perceptive, too. Why it probably wasn't any of those things. Focusing her thoughts, Shay turned to the door. I am, actually. When they came back in, Brady gestured to the boxes stacked against the wall. If you have some stuff that you want out of the way, there's a shared storage room downstairs. None of us put anything of real value down there, but it beats keeping your Christmas tree in your closet. Shay grabbed his beer bottle and brought both empties to the kitchen counter. Oh. Thanks. I'll see how it all unpacks. Actually, I might just put some of my storage containers down there. He ran a hand over his short hair, 
which made his biceps flex noticeably. Okay. There's a shelf with your unit number. We, uh, we had a bit of trouble a couple of weeks ago, but the guy responsible moved. Out. Still, I'd label anything you put in there with your name. Meeting his gaze, she nodded. If I put anything in there, I will. Walking him to the door, she waited until he put his shoes on before saying, I really appreciate your help, Brady. She took a deep breath. If she wanted her life to be different, she had to make different choices, safer ones. Once I get settled, I'll have you over for dinner. As soon as the words left her mouth, she cringed. Did that sound like a lame? Come on? He moved aside as she opened the door. Dinner sounds great. Shay stepped back and smiled too widely. Then dinner it is. Brady stared at her for a moment, and Shay waited for her belly to do some sort of flip-flop. It remained as calm as an undisturbed puddle. You don't know anyone around here, so I can introduce you to a few other people in the building. It'll feel more like home if you have friends close by. Was that some sort of hint? Yes. For sure. Friends are good to have. I, mean, I, yes. I like friends. She hung her head, wishing she could disappear. Or invent a rewind button, a magical way to take back the words that flew from her mouth without permission. Brady laughed, a deep belly laugh. I like friends, too. She looked up through lowered lashes. Thanks for your help today. Brady squeezed her shoulder. You're welcome, and you seem like a nice girl, Shay. We look out for each other around here. Which is why I'm going to give you some friendly advice. Steer clear of Wyatt Daniels. He's dark and not all that friendly. Shay frowned. She'd come to that conclusion all on her own but couldn't say why she wanted to defend her neighbor. Something about him made her feel like people only saw the surface, what he wanted them to see. And if she wanted to see more, it was her choice. Just as a neighbor and friend, of course. Because she wasn't looking for more with a man who wouldn't even share his own name. Shay tried not to let her tone convey. Irritation over Brady's not-so-subtle warning. I'll take that under advisement. Her fingers gripped the door handle. Still smiling, he gave a nod and headed out. Night, Shay. Closing the door behind him, she rested her head on the cool wood. Whatever choices she made, good or bad, from now on, were her own. She hadn't meant to be flighty, but as the baby in her family, she was pampered and protected, encouraged to do only what made her happy. She was taken care of, and when she didn't, like something, her family understood, helped her resolve the problem and start fresh. Their steadfast willingness to smooth the way for her had let her believe the first man she'd fallen in love with would do the same. Despite all their hovering, her family hadn't been able to protect her from a broken heart. They'd said it wasn't her fault, she'd been taken advantage of. But she knew it was time to own up and be responsible for where her choices led her. In a new city, she could reinvent. Herself, become who she wanted to be. As she readied herself for bed, the guilt snuck in about lying to her family. She'd told them she had a job lined up in Boston, but really, she'd found the apartment and taken it as a sign. If they'd thought she was coming here to start from scratch, they'd have tried to change her mind, or worse, her mother would have arranged a job for her through one of her many contacts. If her mom hadn't, one of her brothers would have. If she didn't show them she could stand on her own and follow through, they'd never believe she could, and neither would she. She didn't need Brady's advice or Wyatt's grumpiness. She just needed to get settled in her beautiful one-bedroom apartment. And she needed to get her business up and running. Fast. Or she'd have no way to pay for the apartment that was meant to be her new beginning. Dot. Chapter 2 Wyatt Daniels had exactly two things on his mind, shower and sleep. In that. Order. After locking up his gun, he pulled his shirt over his head, tossing it somewhere near the hamper. He detoured through the kitchen and grabbed a can of cola, knowing the caffeine wouldn't keep him awake. The Patriots cheerleaders performing in his living room couldn't keep him awake for any longer than it was going to take to shower. The hot water sluiced over his skin, and as he lathered soap along his body, he felt bruises that had yet to show themselves. 
some would be covered by the tattoos inked around his biceps, but plenty of them would be visible. He'd hit the gym before work that morning and changed his regular routine with some kickboxing. He followed it up with 10 hours on shift, a good portion of that time spent running down leads. And making headway. It was important he remind himself that he was out there doing good, or he'd never stop being pissed at himself. He did a quick rinse of his hair and dragged himself to his bed, falling into it, naked and still a little damp. It didn't matter. He just needed to close his eyes. They popped open when his phone buzzed not even 40 minutes later. Daniels, he said, not hiding his irritation. Hey boss, it's Jimmy. Wyatt threw his arm over his eyes and kept his groan to himself. See? He had manners. I have caller ID. What's up? Prince came back on the Muller case. They're a match to the brother. Wyatt looked at the clock. It was just after six. All right. Bring him in. But give me a couple of hours. He disconnected and tossed his phone back on the nightstand. Just one more hour of sleep, and I'll pretend to feel human again. Since he'd come off his undercover assignment a few months ago, he was having a harder time than usual with the whole acclimating back to normal life thing. He was supposed to see some head doctor, which was protocol after going UC, but who had time for that? He was too busy trying to forget the shit he'd seen. The shit he'd done had had to do. He didn't need to talk about it with anyone. More than that, he didn't deserve to unload on a department shrink and be absolved. His captain had reminded him more than once that undercover meant sweeping a few things under the rug for the greater good. Rolling onto his stomach, he put the pillow over his head to drown out his own thoughts. He'd barely fallen back asleep when his phone buzzed again. He didn't even look at the caller ID. What? Um, hi. His brain was mud and his thoughts were having a hell of a time wading through it. The voice sounded vaguely familiar. What? He didn't have energy for more than that. It's Shay. Your neighbor. Do you remember me? I met you in the underground, well, the parking garage, and I guess we didn't really meet because you didn't tell me your name, but... He cut her off. Yes. I remember you. It was only a few days ago. And what red-blooded male would forget that face and body? Or the way she'd gotten her back up when I tried to help her. Though every time she'd popped into his head, he'd done his best to think about something else. How had she gotten his number? As the sleep fog cleared his brain, he remembered he'd forwarded the apartment intercom to work through his phone. Apparently it had been a while since his last visitor. Oh. Good. Okay. Well, this is a bit awkward. I tried Brady, but he's not answering and you're the only other person I've sort of met in the building, she said. Her voice sounded tinny and far away. Are you outside? He sat up, shaking off the last of his sleep haze. She laughed and it should have been annoying, since he hadn't said anything funny. Yes, she said. That's the awkward part. You locked yourself out. Sighing, he grabbed some boxers and pulled them on one-handed. Yes. But when I do things, I like to go all out. So I also broke my key in the lock. He shook his head, her words muddling his brain further. What am I supposed to do about that? I'll buzz you up. Thanks. He pressed the button and figured he'd achieve good neighbor status for the day. Others certainly wouldn't put him in that category but he didn't have it in him to care. He needed to figure out how to live again before he worried about friends or family. Which his sister and mother clearly didn't understand, either, since his phone showed they both texted. Several times. After pulling on his jeans, he went to make a sandwich before he headed. Into the station. He barely opened the fridge when the knock came. Wyatt opened the door to find Shay standing in the hall, her cheeks red her blonde hair windblown, and her blue eyes bright with unshed tears. His heart hammered. He did not need this. Her face was innocent and sweet, but Wyatt would never be fooled again. The last time he'd let himself get taken in by a pair of gorgeous eyes, he'd nearly ended up dead. 
It grated on his nerves that he wasn't immune to this woman who was no more than a stranger. What's the matter? He looked her up and down, but she didn't seem hurt. She wrung her gloved hands together. Oh. Well, a lot at the moment. The Kia broke in the front door? It was to my apartment. Her gaze was glued to his chest, and he realized he hadn't grabbed a shirt. The way her eyes widened slightly sent a quick jolt of lust through his blood. He didn't like people in his space, but what choice did he have? Come in for a minute, he said. She looked so damn grateful, his heart twisted. An unfamiliar feeling for sure. I'm sorry, she said, still eyeing his chest. He arched a brow when her gaze finally met his. I tried to call Brady. The repeated mention of their neighbor bugged him. So you said. It wasn't that hard to buzz you in. Brady isn't the only one capable of doing so, obviously, he said. Shay stayed by the door and gestured to him with her hand. Do you I want to put on a shirt? The way she stumbled over her words, licking her lips after she spoke, caught him off guard. Partially amused, partially turned on, he shook his head and walked away. When he came back, pulling a tea over his head, she was still standing in the entrance. He checked his watch. He needed to leave soon. I'm sorry to put you out like this. Like what? Letting you into the building? He gestured for her to follow him to the kitchen. Well, yeah. Um. I didn't know what to do about the door. I mean, I need to call a locksmith, obviously but I wasn't sure if I should just do that or if there was one Brady would recommend. He said he's kind of acting manager right now. I don't even know if there's a maintenance man in the building. Thankfully, she must have realized she was babbling. Normally, a person talking non-stop when he'd barely opened his eyes would have irritated the hell out of him. The fact that she didn't was a source of frustration on its own. The rest of her body was stiff and still as her eyes moved around the kitchen. Wyatt took a quick glance. Papers and files were piled on the countertops. Grocery bags he hadn't bothered to put back in the hall closet were littering the floor. His dishes from whenever he ate last were in the sink. Heat warmed the back of his neck. Why did he care what she thought? They rinsed at least. He scowled. He didn't ask for company and definitely didn't want it. There'd been no time to clean up. So what? I work a lot. He knew his tone was defensive. Her eyes widened, and she nodded slowly. Clearly not from home, she said. Surprised by her candor, his lips twitched and he nearly laughed. He hadn't spent much time with people lately who made him laugh. No. Not from home. Listen, I have to eat and go into work. You can hang out here until Brady gets home. He'll have a spare key and can take care of the front door. Something about her made him want to soothe her, but he shook off the feeling. Not even an adorable laugh, a sexy body, and a kick-ass smile would get past the shield he directed. Never again. Thanks. A few days here and I'm breaking things, imposing on people, and ignoring advice. She chuckled, then stopped abruptly. Wyatt tilted his head. Ignoring advice? It was his job to read people, and something told him that if she didn't want someone's opinion, she had enough backbone to let them know. He couldn't help but admire that. You want a sandwich? He was damn good at his job, and the skills transferred to everyday life when he wanted them to. Right now, he wanted to know if his hunch was right, had someone said something about him. If so, it was likely Brady, since he interacted with damn near everyone. On purpose. Brady didn't know him, and even if his neighbor was right, it grated on his skin like a rake over cement. Wyatt was a lousy bed in terms of a relationship. Most days he could barely put up with himself. Are you sure? She pressed her lips together. They were bare and he liked that. Jesus. He could like whatever he wanted, but he did not need a romantic entanglement any more than he needed to talk about his feelings with a department shrink especially with someone in his own building. I'm making one anyway. You're not a vegetarian, are you? He pulled out deli meat and cheese, tossing them on the counter. 
She unzipped her jacket and shook her head while he grabbed condiments. Only the meat-eating variety, she said. Again, her words made him smile. She looked around frowning and held her jacket against her. She was wearing jeans and a dark sweater that made her blonde hair glow like a halo. Yeah. She was angelic looking. And he was the exact opposite of anything to do with angels. He also felt a lot older than she looked. Integrating himself into the worst of society had aged him. How old are you? He grabbed the bread and some plates. She set her jacket over one of the chairs and came to help. Him with the sandwiches. Picking up the mustard, she paused long enough to arch her eyebrows primly. 24. You? He laughed under his breath. Not 24. Too old for you. That's not an answer. You look older when you frown. You seem to frown a lot, she said. He grabbed the mustard from her hand and squirted some on four pieces of bread. He'd have felt bad about her making her own, except she just called him old. I'm 30. Other than his sister, mom, and nephew, he hadn't had anyone in his apartment. It was strange, standing side by side making something to eat with a woman he didn't want to like. She reminded him of one of his other neighbors. You meet Gabby yet? Wyatt didn't socialize much, unless work and arresting people counted. But Gabriella had ignored his lack of social graces, made worse by his last assignment, and, like Shay, actually made him smile. Newly engaged to another one of his neighbors and endlessly sweet, Gabby seemed like she'd be a good friend for Shay. Young woman, new to the city, she'd need some friends, and he wasn't the right person for the job. The thought that Brady might be got under his skin and made him scowl. Shay's shoulders stiffened. No. Is that your girlfriend? Wyatt scoffed and closed his sandwich. As he leaned against the counter, he took a huge bite. She took a small bite of hers, and they stared at each other over their roast beef sandwiches. When he'd swallowed, he answered her with more amusement than he'd felt in a long time. No. 1. She's engaged. 2. The last thing I want is a girlfriend. A one-night stand? Sure. But nothing with strings or access to his heart. She considered that and continued to chew as though she were dining with the damn Queen of England. That could be a good thing. This time he arched his brow. Why the hell did she amuse him so much? Attraction he understood. Anything else? No thanks. Your apartment would probably scare off any potential candidates, she said. And again, he laughed. He grabbed the Micha soda, cracking the top on hers before passing it. Thanks. Wyatt nodded. He liked the sound of her voice. It was soft and sweet. Gentle. She'd make a good audiobook reader. His mother was always, listening to those. Wyatt didn't understand why anyone would listen to anything other than music, but if he was going to listen to someone talk. He liked the way Shay's words sounded. Good thing I'm not looking. And because he'd missed seeing the way a woman's cheeks flushed, he added, You don't seem scared. Lust twisted low in his stomach when her light skin turned pink. Not a good idea. Incredibly bad idea. She didn't back down or shy away. Because I'm not. Scared or interested, that. Is, she clarified, lifting her chin slightly. He read liars for a living, but he didn't have time to call her on it. Plus, it was better she keep telling herself that. Wyatt cleared his throat and looked at his watch again. I need to go. The door locks behind you. Obviously if you turn out to be a thief, I know where you live. She nodded, her lips forming a pout. If I tried to be a thief, I'd probably mess it up anyway. I do that a lot lately. She looked down at her sandwich, and he wanted to push her to tell him more. Which irritated the hell out of him. He didn't need to know more. He needed to go to work. You mind throwing that stuff back in the fridge? Of course not. Thanks, Wyatt. You're a nice guy. His chest tightened, and he stepped closer. How did you know my name? Shay lowered her voice and leaned in. Is it a state secret? 
spelling at her, he put some distance between them. Of course not. I just didn't tell you. Brady did. She waved him off. Anyway, the secret is out now. I know your name and where you live. And, unlike some of the other people in the building, I know you're a nice guy. His heart squeezed painfully because for one second, he wished it were true. Said no one ever. She tilted her head, strands of hair falling across her face. His fingers itched to brush it back and see if it was as soft as it looked. They would if you let them get to know you. Aha. Uh -huh. Someone, a.k.a. Brady the busybody, had already warned her off him. Saves me having to do it myself. Take care, Shay. Grabbing his jacket, gun, and holster, he didn't look back before he left. If only he could avoid looking back in other ways. Wyatt saw Brady as soon as he stepped off the elevator. His neighbor was kneeling outside the double glass doors, staring at the lock. Wyatt suppressed his grin. New girl already had the men of the building on their knees. One of the men, he, amended. Brady looked up and gestured to the lock and tugged on the door. Wyatt pushed it open. Hey. Someone's jammed a key in the lock, Brady said. He was about Wyatt's height, stockier, probably from lifting heavy equipment. He knew the guy owned an auto body shop and did well. His neighbors might not know much about him, but Wyatt needed to know who he was living next to. That would be Shay. The new girl. I believe you've met her, he said. And already given her your opinion on me. Brady's gaze locked with Wyatt's. I have. She did that? He pointed to the lock. Not on purpose, obviously. She's up in my apartment, Wyatt said, still holding the door open. Wait. What? What the hell is she doing in your apartment? Brady's eyes took on a protective gleam. Wyatt straightened to his full height and maybe he pushed his chest out a bit. She's in my apartment because she called me when she got in trouble and needed to be let in. Brady put his hands on his hips. From what? Wyatt knew of the guy through the few interactions they'd had, Brady was easygoing, friendly. But he didn't look too friendly right now, and even though Wyatt knew Shay was better off with a man just like this one, it still rubbed him the wrong way. Especially when Brady pointed a finger at him. You just left her there? Why wouldn't I? I need to get to work. I didn't lock her up or anything, Wyatt said. And because Shay's words popped into his head, they would if you let them, he added. She's waiting for you. You weren't here, and I was the only other person she'd met. All the ego drained from Brady's posture. Okay. Uh. All right, I'll take care of this first. Just leave it propped open. I have some tools in the office. Wyatt looked at his watch and swore under his breath. He pulled out his phone to text Jimmy. Hurry up. I'll wait. Brady's eyes lit with laughter. Scared someone is going to come in and get us? Wyatt kept his voice even and low. You're the acting, manager, right? Brady nodded. Which puts responsibility for every one of these units on you. Negligence is a bitch. Hurry up and get your tools. I don't have all day. Brady frowned and brushed past him, and Wyatt sighed in frustration. People didn't get it. They lived in their safe little made-up worlds and didn't see the dangers that were literally right outside their doors. Look at Jake, the last dickhead apartment manager they'd had. That guy had broken into all the tenants' storage units, looking for something he wouldn't share with them. Wyatt had cornered him one night a couple of weeks ago, knowing in his gut that what Jake had misplaced were drugs, and had not so subtly suggested he find new employment. Jake had left shortly thereafter but that didn't mean people should drop their guards completely. Brady came back with a small red toolbox. Wyatt almost commented on the size but thought better of it. He was being neighborly. Or trying. And it wasn't doing him a damn bit of good. Brady gestured to the door with his chin. Thanks. Yeah. Sure. Brady opened the toolbox, darting glances at Wyatt. Finally, he asked, what do you do for work, anyway? Brady pulled out a pair of needle-nose pliers. 
Wyatt didn't have to hide anymore. His days of hiding were over, and he needed to get used to that. Still, unease over sharing information about himself settled in his stomach. I'm a detective with the Boston PD. Brady's eyes widened right before he gave a loud bark of laughter and slapped his own thigh. Son of a bitch. You're a cop? You're not with the mob? Why it wasn't a talker. He found that the less he talked, the more others did. In his line of work, information was power. But he rarely found himself speechless. At Brady's question, no words left his mouth. That only made Brady laugh harder. This is why I keep to myself, Wyatt mumbled. He let the door close behind him but could still hear Brady's laugh as he walked the concrete path toward the underground parking lot. The fountain splashed against the ice that had formed in the shallow bowl. Brady needs to turn that fountain off for the winter. Wyatt shook his head and pulled his collar tighter. Not his problem. There really was a reason he kept to himself, it made life easier. Originally, Kendrick Place was a shipping warehouse. In the mid-1900s, a man had immigrated from overseas, bought the building, and turned it into one- and two-bedroom apartments. The same family, though the next generation and their children, owned it still. Wyatt liked the history, the location, and, until recently, the feeling of security. He unlocked the side door that led to the garage and walked to his car, sliding behind the wheel and turning on his heated seats. Wonder what she drives. Besides a U-Haul. His phone buzzed and he pressed the speaker on the steering. Will as he backed out. Daniels. Hey, boss. The brother lawyered up already, Jimmy said. Wyatt smacked the steering wheel. That's what entertaining neighbors does. Shit. I'm on my way. He pulled out of the lot, clearing his mind of neighbors and apartment managers, and focused on the only thing he was good at, his job. Chapter 3. Shay could organize a space in her sleep, so her neighbor's apartment wasn't that scary. Not that Wyatt will appreciate it. She didn't have to know him well, or at all, to know he wouldn't want someone digging through his stuff. Private was an understatement. Closed off, guarded, and wary were better adjectives to sum up his demeanor. She couldn't help but wonder why. Then she reminded herself it didn't matter because she was done going after men who held there. Truths like a closed fist. She could probably get the key out of the door herself. Her own multi-tool was in her apartment, but surely Wyatt had one. She slid open a drawer thinking of where she kept her own for easy access. Wow, she said, her eyes widening. This was a man who really took the term junk drawer seriously. She pushed it closed and pulled open the next one, feeling a twinge of guilt for poking around. But he must have some pliers, and it wasn't like there was a garage for him to keep tools. Maybe a toolbox? Hard to find when she couldn't see any surfaces. It wasn't snooping or intruding. Straightening up was a different deal altogether. Deciding it was a neighborly thing to do, she started with the condiments, smiling over the fact that he'd grudgingly fed her when it was so obvious he didn't like company. She wondered what he did for work and tried to think of what would suit him. Navy SEAL? Pilot? Bad news giver, no, that probably wasn't a job. While piling his reusable grocery bags inside of one another, she was careful not to move too many things. He struck her as the kind of guy who knew exactly where something was, despite the chaos. Wiping the counter was easy, but rinsing the cloth was nearly impossible with the dishes in the sink. Surely he wouldn't consider it overstepping to just throw his dishes in the dishwasher? And add the soap. And take care of the dishes that she didn't think went in the machine? It seemed like the thing to do. He'd asked her to put things away, and he had been very generous with his time and food. She'd obviously woken him. And God was he sexy with his half-awake eyes and hint of growth on his chin. Even his skull is alluring. Nope, nope, nope. Stop it. Skulls are not alluring. Friendliness is attractive. Happiness. No mystery. Like Brady, she said. But it wasn't the thought of Brady making her skin hum. Shay couldn't properly wipe the counter with all of the papers and files on it. That was the only reason she straightened them. Plus, it made her twitchy to even be in a space that was this cluttered. Not unclean. Not dirty. Just a mess. 
She checked her cell phone, saw her mom had texted three times and Taylor, her oldest brother, had left a voicemail. She'd get back to them later. When she was once again in her own apartment. Shay groaned, remembering the reason she was here and what she'd been looking for. Toolbox. Tool. Maybe under the sink. Before she could find out, there was a knock on the door. Opening it, she was relieved to see Brady standing there. He looked tired, like he'd worked all day and didn't have the energy for the antics of the new neighbor who couldn't even operate a door. She frowned. How did you know where I was? He arched one eyebrow. Ran into Wyatt. Why'd you call him? Pressure settled in her chest. She didn't want to justify her decisions. And she didn't have to. Unless, was Brady jealous? Geez, if she spent as much time organizing her business as she did thinking about the two men she'd only just met, she'd probably have actual clients by now. There weren't a lot of options. Besides, he's nice. At this, Brady laughed, and even this was laced with fatigue. Guilt gnawed at her stomach. He was a sweet guy in here she was making this more difficult. She opened the door wider. I'll grab my jacket. I'm so sorry about the lock. I'll pay for it. I was just going to look up some locksmiths. Not that she could afford it. Brady was looking around the kitchen when she turned back to him, taking in the space she just cleaned. More than she should have. So sue me. Brady wouldn't know the difference. Maybe Wyatt wouldn't notice? Ha! Huh. Shay had a feeling he noticed everything. I got the broken piece out of the lock, but I think I'll change them anyway. Not until the weekend, though. Our keys still work, it's just a bit stiff. I'll need to put a note up on the information board saying to be careful until I get it done, Brady said. He held the door for her to go first and then turned the knob, checking that it was locked. Despite her intentions to stand on her own two feet, she was already letting someone bail her out. Though he'd been nothing but kind about it, Shay felt like a chastised child. I've created more work for you. I could pay to have someone come and change it, she offered again. She could dip into her savings for a few more dollars if she had to. No worries, I'll do it. Mistakes happen, he said. He pressed the elevator button and smiled wearily. She stepped in, biting her tongue. She didn't want to tell him how often mistakes happened in her presence. She was the self-proclaimed queen of two things, organization and making the wrong choices. Still. I'm sorry. Sorry with a side of mad at herself. She looked down at the dull carpeting. He nudged her with his shoulder. Shay. Stop. It's not a big deal. If you feel really bad, I can try to think. Of something you could do to make it up to me, he said. His eyebrows danced up and down comically and she laughed, the discomfort in her chest loosening. He was easy to relax around. Swatting him in the rock-hard stomach, she shook her head. How about dinner? I can make you something. The elevator opened, and she stepped out alone. He held the door with one hand. His biceps strained slightly, and Shay took a moment to admire the sight. He pulled her attention back when he sighed deeply. I can count on one finger the number of times I've turned down a gorgeous woman for dinner, but I'm bagged. Rain check? She held his gaze, trying to read him and figure out if he meant it, or if he was just being kind. He was exactly the kind of man her brothers and her parents would love to see her with safe and sweet. He'd called her gorgeous and had great arms. A win-win if she was concerned about pleasing herself and her parents. Sure. Whenever you have time, she said. Let me know about any costs. You got it, new girl, he said, winking at her just before the door shut. She'd grown again, using the spare key he'd given her to let herself in. Well, that's one way to make an impression but not the only way. Multitasking was another specialty. Shay chopped vegetables and garlic, sautéed some chicken, and slipped a casserole into the oven. While she waited for it to bake, she returned her mother's texts, assuring her she was fine and just settling in. She kept her responses about her new job vague and hoped her mother would let it go. She unpacked her books and set up her computer. By the time the oven timer went off, she'd finished organizing her workspace, had checked her emails, happy to see a request to plan a small author's event at the local library, and tweaked her website. She added a tab for virtual personal assistant and listed the services she could offer from the comfort of her own living room. It was something that would tie in nicely to the book event and any connections she made there. 
Since graduating as valedictorian six years earlier, Shea had enrolled in, prepped for, and dropped out of programs for early childhood education and paralegal training. When those hadn't worked out, she tried a different route and received a diploma in business administration and marketing. While it interested her and pleased her to finish it, she wasn't sure what to do with it, which had led her to enrolling in a hotel management diploma program. After six months, she dropped the program for a variety of reasons, none of which she wanted to think about right now. As she tried to put herself back together, she had worked as a nanny for a lovely couple with two adorable little boys. She'd probably still be doing that if they hadn't moved. Which was for the best. The nanny position had been a safety net. Now that it was gone, it was time to grow up. She was done flitting around from one thing to another, trying to find her place. And done with disappointing her family, all of whom had solid and steady careers or at least a fixed destination for where they were heading. They also had far better judgment than she did. Not that they ever held her choices against her, in fact, they indulged and encouraged her to live at home and fall back on their support. Ian, her second oldest brother, offered her a job in his real estate office after the nanny gig, but she'd known it was time to move forward. It was time to make her own place and put down some roots that others hadn't started on her behalf. The knock on the door startled her. It was nearing 10 o'clock, but an eagerness to do something made energy, or restlessness, rush through her. She opened the door to Wyatt's sexy, scowling face. You clean my house. She didn't smile. No. I straightened your kitchen. Did you know you have countertops? His eyebrows scrunched. Together. Not funny. She disagreed. Wyatt's eyes scanned down, taking in her bright blue pajama bottoms and sleep top. When his eyes made it back to hers, she felt like it had been his hands roaming over her. Every inch of her skin warmed. Swallowing down unexplained nerves, she stepped back and gestured for him to come inside. At the risk of further upsetting you, I made you something. Come in. He stared at her, his dark eyes trying to see through her, like if he looked hard enough he'd have all the answers. Maybe he'd share them with her. Stepping in, he shut the door and locked it. His silent staring made her skin feel alive, like it was pulsating with energy. I only intended to look for some pliers. I didn't mean to clean up. He followed her into the kitchen. So it was an accident? She laughed. Sort of. By the way, where do you keep your pliers? In my toolbox. Why? She nodded. She'd known he had one. Where's that? You ask a lot of questions. My toolbox is in. My hall closet. I didn't check, but you better not have cleaned it. Shay turned around only to realize he was right behind her, which meant they were now standing too close. Too close if she wanted to breathe something other than sexy Wyatt scented air. I didn't. I swear. While he stayed quiet, making her wonder what he was thinking, she pulled the casserole out of the oven and then grabbed a Tupperware dish out of the cupboard where she'd put them earlier that day. The stove had been off. For a bit so the dish wasn't warm. Much like Wyatt's voice when he spoke. Why would you make me something? His voice was hard, which, for reasons she couldn't fathom, made her want to be gentle. You're not very trusting, you know. I don't know you. You don't know me. Trust doesn't work like that. It's earned. And even then, it's the easiest thing to break. He had a point, but Shay couldn't help but think it was a jaded one. He leaned his hip against the counter, which revealed the butt of a gun. His eyes followed her gaze, which must have shown surprise. Her heart hammered in quick beats. Wyatt moved his jacket aside, revealing a badge clipped to his jeans. And a hint of smooth, sexy stomach. I'm a cop. She let out a heavy breath and gathered her jumbled thoughts, stuck on the sadness of his view on trust. Or maybe he was the smart one, and she should learn to trust less. Still, if she couldn't risk a little, she'd get nowhere. One of them had to start. Okay. So I can trust you, right? I'm not a cop, but you can trust me too. At least enough to accept dinner as a thank you for helping me. She cut into the casserole, transferring half to the container. He leaned in. You made that for me? She nodded, glancing over with a smile. With very little space between them, their eyes locked, and Shay's pulse ramped up, working toward a steady gallop. His breath smelled like peppermint. Peppermint was. Delicious. Wyatt nudged the casserole dish. Why are you cutting it in half? 
She laughed and put the lid on before handing it to him. Because I'm giving the other half to Brady. Brady. The nice, sweet neighbor who doesn't make my heart feel like it's about to enter the ring for twelve rounds. He continued to scowl, but she thought she saw the hint of softening in his features. When his eyes locked on hers again, her stomach dipped, fluttering with excitement. Just nerves and restlessness. He stepped closer, and Shay's breath caught, lodged in her chest. One corner of his mouth quirked up. He didn't try to be sexy. He just was in that dangerous way some men were. Men like Wyatt should wear signs that read, proceed with caution. Why does he get half? More fluttering. And heat spreading out from the pit of her belly, making her feel like she was melting from the inside. Because he helped me too. Her voice was low, nearly husky. She cleared her throat. His eyes held hers captive. But I helped first. So I should at least get a bigger portion, he said. Shay laughed around the tightness in her chest. This was how trouble started, and she did not need any more trouble. Her heart couldn't deal with another crack. He smelled like dryer sheets and cologne. And maybe a bit of the cold air he'd been out in. It made her want to wrap herself around him and snuggle in like she would with a favorite blanket on a stormy night. She shook her head. This man was the exact opposite of what she needed in her life, and she wasn't even entirely sure he liked her or anyone that much. She grabbed a fork out of the drawer and scooped up a huge bite. It was just barely warm still and smelled of rosemary and thyme. Her stomach growled loud enough to compete with the heavy beat of her heart drumming in her ears. Taking a step closer, she went up on tiptoes to hold the bite to his mouth. His eyes were darker up close, with a hint of green. They sparkled with amusement and maybe something more. The more should have stopped her, but instead, it made her want to get closer. Taking. His time, he leaned forward, slowly opening his mouth, letting her feed him. He chewed and then sighed in pleasure, his eyelids flitting closed for half a second. Everything inside Shay pulsed with awareness and want. She took a step back. The fork rattled when she set it on the counter. Those eyes pinned her once again. When he licked his lips, she bit hers to keep from making a fool of herself. Good lord. What was wrong with her? Had she learned nothing from the past? He swallowed before, asking, what do you do? It took her a second to refocus enough to answer. I'm an event planner. Well, that's my goal. So if you need anything organized, other than your house, she said, laughing as she trailed off, thinking of Wyatt at a party or social function. Actually, he said, grabbing the fork and scooping up another huge bite of chicken and potatoes. The tenant I told you about, Gabby? She just got engaged. She was prattling on in the elevator the other day about how she wanted to have a party, but she doesn't have time to put it all together. Her fiancé is the planner of the two, but she told him she wanted to take care of it. Excitement of a different kind bubbled. Really? That's great. Can you introduce me? An introduction didn't count as relying on someone, right? His skull returned. They live in 403. Shay laughed with less humor. Wyatt Daniels was not a man she'd have to worry about coming to rely on, he'd make sure of it. Great. Thanks a lot. He shrugged and took another bite. She smacked his hand and one of those eyebrows arched up perfectly. It was a look he probably used to scare people, but Shay just smiled. The rest is for Brady. Wyatt held her gaze a moment, then looked at her lips. Setting the fork down, he took a step closer. His voice was low. You going to feed it to him? Shay took another step back and felt the heat rising up her neck and covering her face. No. She wasn't sure why she'd done that with Wyatt, except there was something magnetic in his gaze that made her need to be closer. Wyatt gave a curt nod and held her gaze for another moment. Then, it was like a switch had been flicked. The warmth and openness she thought she'd glimpsed shuddered closed. Thanks for the casserole. He let himself out, and all Shay could do was grip the countertop wondering why her heart couldn't do jumping jacks for the right man. It didn't matter this time, though, because her new life was all about living smart, thinking with her head, not her emotions. You're welcome, she whispered. Dot. Chapter 4 Wyatt pulled into the grocery store parking lot and found a space reasonably close. He turned in the driver's seat, reaching into the back for his reusable bags. The ones Shay had placed inside of each other when she'd cleaned his damn house. Don't think about her. 
he'd been telling himself that for two days. Though thinking about his cute new neighbor was a far sight better than the thoughts that usually occupied his mind. With bags in hand, he headed into the store. He should have made a list. You say that every time. Who needed a list? He ate the same things every week anyway. Frozen pizza, pasta, sandwiches, cereal. Quick, easy, on-the-go food. Nothing that required too much energy or effort. Nothing that tastes like the delicious meal Shea whipped up. The woman could cook. So could he, if he cared to, but most of the time, it was easier to just heat something up. The store wasn't busy. Two women were standing by their respective cash registers, chatting with each other, and looked up when Wyatt came in. Good morning, said the taller of the two women. He gave a small nod, grabbed a cart, and made his way to the back of the store. His sister was, always harping at him about eating better. There were some perks to being an adult, and eating what he wanted definitely counted. Still, he stopped at the produce and picked up some oranges, apples, and bananas. They'd balance out the Doritos he planned to buy. Maybe he could make a casserole and freeze it. He pushed the cart around a woman studying the label on a container of yogurt like the secret formula for life was printed there. Stopping just shy of the meat section, he pulled out his phone. He could find a simple recipe online and make his own casserole. Without help from the neighbor he was not thinking about. He scrolled as he pushed, passing over a weird pork and mushroom recipe. No thanks. Shays had chicken and potatoes, some carrots, and a few spices he couldn't identify. When his cart stopped without warning, Wyatt realized he'd hit something. His neck snapped up, and he swore under his breath. Make that someone. The shapely shopper with the gorgeous, flowing blonde. Hair reminded him of his neighbor, and just as he started to berate himself for thinking about her again, the woman turned. It was Shay. I'm so sorry, he said. He hadn't blushed since he was a kid, but his neck felt warm enough right now that he knew his skin was turning an unflattering shade of pink. Shay rubbed her hands over her bottom, and Wyatt's thoughts took a sharp turn. He held her gaze like a lifeline so his eyes didn't wander. She smiled through a wince. Hey, neighbor, she said, pulling his attention to her mouth. I'm sorry. You said that. She turned all the way around now, he'd driven the cart right into the back of her. Are you okay? I'm fine. Well padded, she said, her eyes sparkling with amusement. He started to say her S was perfect, but stopped himself. Thank God. Strands of her blonde hair fell into her blue eyes, and Wyatt watched her tuck the locks behind her ear. Speak. What's wrong, with you? I'm sorry, he muttered again, pulling his cart farther away. Shay laughed and his stomach tightened with awareness at the feminine sound. He was losing it. He'd spent so much time alone since returning to regular duty, he was obsessing over the sound of a woman's, a stranger practically, laugh. I should go, Wyatt said. Shay frowned. You're a pretty big guy. Kind of seems like you'd eat more than fruit. Right. I meant go finish my shopping. He started to push the cart. Forward, intending to say goodbye and be done with it, but Shay pushed her cart alongside his. Me too. You doing a big shop? Wyatt gripped the handle tighter, focusing on the feel of the cool plastic casing on the bar. Big shop? When she turned her head to look at him, her hair flew out, and he caught the scent of, he didn't even know how to describe it. Like softness and flowers. Big shop. You know, every month you do a big shop and then a few mini ones to fill in the gap. You get all your large ticket recipe items in one shop and then you can just run to the corner store or whatever for milk and yogurt. I don't eat yogurt. You're an idiot. That's the best you could come up with? H.M. You're missing out. Anyway, she continued, nudging them both down an aisle by veering her cart slightly, I have three brothers, so my mom always did one big shop a month. Usually Costco. Seems like a lot of work for just one person though, I guess. Despite not wanting to be curious, he couldn't help but ask. Three brothers? Shay nodded gravely. Yup. All older. Wyatt gave a gruff laugh. Wow. There's a roadblock to having a life of your own. He knew how he was with Abigail. He hadn't seen her much lately, but if anyone tried to hurt her or she needed something, he'd be there in a heartbeat. Shay stopped pushing the cart and stared at him. What? he asked. That's exactly what it felt like. 
a roadblock. I love them all, but they'd prefer I sit back and let them take care of everything. Wyatt shrugged. What was wrong with that? Then he thought of Abigail's stubborn independence. When her ex had flaked out, Wyatt had wanted to help financially, and she'd all but shoved that idea and his money down his throat. They love you. Her smile was more than a simple upward tipping of lips. It was a brightening of her whole face. Like a light shining from inside. They do. But I'm enjoying my freedom. She turned to look at the shelf, and Wyatt realized they were in the cereal aisle. He could use some more cereal. She chose a box of Cheerios, placing it in her cart. When he grabbed corn pops, she frowned. You like those? He started to answer sarcastically but went with a shrug. They continued to walk, her grabbing high-nutrient granola bars, him choosing chocolate-coated ones. In the next lane, she selected whole wheat pasta and cans of tomatoes. He pulled a huge jar of red sauce off the shelf, putting it in his cart. You just put tomatoes on your pasta? That sounded gross. She looked up from the list she was crossing off. He really should make one before coming. No. I use the tomatoes to make a yummy marinara sauce. It's really easy. Takes less than 10 minutes. Was she offering to show him? Jesus. Now you want cooking lessons? He pushed the cart forward and headed for the frozen pizza. Shay stayed at his side. He expected her to chat, but she seemed content with the quiet between them. He'd never done this, shopped with a woman, other than his mom and sister, for groceries. In the dairy aisle, she stopped and checked her list again. Shoot. I forgot eggs. Can you watch my cart and I'll just run back and grab them? Sure, he said, pulling a carton of milk out of the cooler. He chose to watch her instead of the cart. She moved gracefully, like a dancer in a rush. When a little girl stepped in her path, Shay just smiled and went around. Because Wyatt was. Watching, he didn't miss the way the little girl's dad eyed his neighbor appreciatively. Why this made him want to get in the dad's face, he couldn't say. Shay hurried back, eggs in hand, and they carried on through the store. Wyatt had meant to be in and out, but Shay was making the mundane chore almost relaxing. With a pen she pulled out of her jacket pocket, she crossed off a few more items on her paper. He'd added some frozen pizzas to his cart, some mac and cheese, and was opening the freezer to grab some fish sticks when she put her hand on his arm. She was looking up at him with concern. I've let everything else go, but tell me you're not buying fish sticks. The freezer was pushing out cold air, chilling his fingers. What's wrong with fish sticks? She pushed the door closed, which should have irritated him. Instead, he crossed his arms over his chest and waited. Real food doesn't come in sticks, she told him. He smirked. Not true. Sticks of butter. Bread. Sticks. Wyatt saw her lips twitch, but she didn't smile. An unexpected desire to make her smile, to be the reason for her amusement, filled his chest, surprising him. Wyatt. He pointed at her. Kebabs. She laughed and it felt like he'd won a race. What the hell was wrong with him? He didn't even like grocery shopping. Okay, you get that one. But that's an exception. Lots of sticks, he added. He pulled open the freezer door again, ignoring her sigh. He winked at her as he tossed the box of fish in his cart. She shook her head. You are a grown-up, right? Popsicles. Fudgesicles. Tell me you don't like popsicles, he said. Shea pushed her cart forward, laughing. That's not the point. Have you tried fish sticks? When I was a kid. They taste like cardboard, she answered, heading into the checkout. Only two people were in front of them, but the store was getting busier. Snob. She turned around and faced him. Excuse me? He kept his face serious. You're a food snob. Because I don't like it out of a box. You're judging the food by its packaging. Isn't that sort of the same as the book by its cover? She actually looked frustrated by that statement, and it amused the hell out of him. She eyed his fish sticks warily. I'll try them. But you have to try something I like. He stepped closer, ignoring the voice in his head that told him not to. When he was close enough to touch her, he stopped. Tell me what you like. The sharp intake of breath told him she caught the innuendo. Her eyes widened, and she turned to start putting her items on the conveyor. She didn't answer him, and he wondered if he'd taken the teasing too far. 
why was he teasing her anyway? He touched her arm, and she startled, looking up at him. I was joking. It's a good look on you. The teasing. It was Shay's turn to go through, and she waited for him to be finished as well. He thought about her observation, he hadn't teased anyone in so long. Not genuinely. He laughed and joked with the guys at work sometimes. He wasn't a complete social moron. But he couldn't remember the last time he'd teased a woman. Enjoyed a woman's company. For good reason. Even when he was ready to get back out there for something more than a night of mutual pleasure, it wouldn't be with someone so sweet and innocent she turned red from a little banter. The cashier took her time giving him back his change, trying to make conversation with him. Funny, he didn't feel the need to chat with her. As she handed him back a couple of dollar bills, she asked, did you get that sweater at the Gap? He took his eyes off Shay and looked at the woman. Probably about his age with bleached hair and a weary smile. What? The Gap? It's a great blue, and it really pairs well with your eyes. Makes them seem almost hazel, she said. Why it's skin itched? What the hell was she talking about? When he heard Shay's muffled laughter, he sent her a hard look that did nothing to cut off her amusement. Ah, uh, they are hazel, he said. He shoved his cash into his pocket, not even taking the time to put it in his wallet. He grabbed his bags and brushed past Shay, who followed after him. Uh, did that fluster you? He walked toward his car, not slowing his stride. What are you talking about? That woman was totally flirting with you. You practically ran from her, Shay said, her laughter ringing out through the crisp air. It was almost the end of January, but the weather was being surprisingly kind. Cold, but bright. I did not run. Let me load these things in, and I'll walk you to your car, he said. I don't have a car. He tossed the bags into the back seat and turned to see if she was joking. It didn't appear that she was. How did you get here? She smiled, almost like she was indulging him. On my bike. You rode a bike here? She pointed toward the store, where a bike rack, with only one bike, was located outside the entrance doors. That's my ride. Or I take the bus. Not his business. Not his problem. Why didn't she have a car? She lifted the bags and smiled. I'll see you later. Thanks for shopping with me. What? Wait. You can't ride your bike with groceries, he said, though he didn't know why it bothered him so much. What did he care how she got? Home? Shay looked over her shoulder at him and frowned. He caught up with her and took one of the bags from her hand, despite her protest. I can get myself home, Wyatt. I'm not a little girl. Trust me, I can see that. It's freezing out. I'm wearing a jacket. There's traffic. I know all of my signals. I'm heading home. She stopped at her bike and put the bag she was holding in the basket attached to the handlebars. Then she pulled the other one from his hand and placed it in, as well. Then I'll see you there. Shay. Stop being so stubborn. She reached into her pocket and pulled out a key, unlocked her bike, and pulled it out of the slot. I'm not being stubborn, Wyatt. Why is it that every time a person does what they intended to do, it's seen as stubborn? Am I telling you you're pig-headed for taking your car home? No. Why would I? I've been riding a bike since I was four years old. I got myself here, and I can get myself home. How I choose to do that is none of your business. All true. Yet he continued to push before he could tell himself to back up, back off, back away. I can put the bike on my roof rack. Her mouth twisted and then she pressed her lips together, like she was thinking of what to say. Maybe stopping herself from saying what she was thinking. Here he was trying to be neighborly, which she'd told him to do, and she was mad about it. How did that make sense? I don't need to be taken care of. His mouth dropped open. I am not. Trying to take care of you. Irritation replaced concern. Shay put on gloves and strapped her helmet over her pretty blonde hair. Maybe you don't see it that way. But I do. Thank you for the offer, but I'm perfectly capable of taking care of myself. He hadn't said otherwise. She straddled the bike and gave him a soft, almost muted smile. See you, neighbor. He watched her ride away and tried to swallow the desire to follow her in his car. She was a grown woman, and she was absolutely right. She didn't need to be taken care of and even if she did, he was nobody's caretaker. 
He was her neighbor. Nothing more. Checking his watch, he decided swinging by the station wasn't a bad idea. It was in the opposite direction of his building. Chapter 5 Shay held the phone in the crook between her ear and shoulder and grabbed a pen. That's lovely of you to think of me. Thank you, she said to Laura Weathers, the librarian she'd met with yesterday. I'd like to do one local author event each month at the library. I was discussing this with my staff, saying how you had some fabulous ideas for this month's, and I just thought, well, I want something special for our head librarian's retirement. I don't know why I didn't think of it while you were here yesterday, Laura said. We were busy planning other things, but this is great. You said end of March, right? Shay wrote that down on the paper in front of her. She'd logged the information into her computer after the phone call. Yes. Lots of time, but I thought it best to ask now. I have a feeling you'll be booking up. You've got such great rates, and you're just so sweet. You remind me of my granddaughter. Shay smiled into the phone. Thank you. They chatted. For a few more minutes before hanging up. She resisted the urge to squeal for about ten seconds. Then she gave a dramatic fist pump and twirled once in front of her computer, tossing the pen onto her desk. Yes. This morning, she'd been contacted through her website for quotes on planning a sweet 16. Paying the money to run the ad on social media had been well worth it. Excitement pulsed through her veins. It was happening, and the best part was knowing she was doing it on her own. Google Analytics made it easy to see her website was getting more traffic every day. She'd put aside a little bit of the library deposit to pay for more advertising. People wanted easy access and since they were on social media anyway, it was a great place to network. Her phone chimed and she answered immediately. Shine by Shay. Simon's chuckle sounded in her ear, making her heart pinch. Hey, shiny Shay. Her stomach dropped when she realized she answered with her business name. Her brother didn't question it, though. They were overprotective, but her brothers were really great siblings. Wanting to do things on her own forced her to walk away so there'd be room to spread her wings, but she missed her family. She and Simon were particularly close. She shut down her email and went to get dressed with the phone to her ear. Hey yourself. How's it going? Pretty good. My new classes are intense. I'm glad this is my last semester. How are you? Simon was finishing up his degree at the Yale School of Architecture. The reminder of that, compared to her booking a gig that would pay under $500, made her heart clench in a different way. I'm great. I love my new place. I've got some great neighbors and Boston is amazing. My bed and couch were delivered yesterday, so I'm heading to Target to get some tools and new linens. All great things. She did not need to measure her own success by that of her brother's. Tools for what? Shay pulled a long gray sweater out of her closet and grabbed a pair of black patterned leggings, putting her brother on speaker so she could dress. For putting my bed together. The delivery guys didn't do that for you? Where did you get it? Let me call them. They should have done that when they dropped it off, Simon said. She could hear him rustling around in the background and rolled her eyes. She yanked the sweater over her head, then replied with a patient tone, even though resentment tickled her spine. I told them not to. I want to do it myself. Simon laughed. Come on, kid. There's a difference between showing us you can do it on your own and just being stubborn. I'm not being stubborn, she said, hating how her voice rose. Simon and Wyatt would get along great. Not that she'd be introducing her grumpy neighbor to her brother. She grabbed her leggings and pulled them on. No. Not you. Listen, I have a reading break coming up in February. I want to come check out your place and see you. Before she could tell him she didn't need to be checked up on, he added, I miss you. Shay's heart softened. I miss you too. When's the break? Second week. I'll take the train up. You got somewhere for me to sleep? Shay smirked and took the phone off speaker. Yep. My couch. Don't worry, it came fully assembled. His laugh brought out her smile. Smart ass. I love you. Love you too. 
I'll send you a picture when my bed is together. From the floor after it, collapses? Goodbye, Simon, she said. She bit her lips so she wouldn't laugh at his teasing. Bye, kid. She grabbed her purse, her list, and her keys. She'd memorized the bus schedule and had about twelve minutes before the next one arrived. Kendrick Place was central to everything she needed but not right in the heart of the city. The building was more than she'd expected when she'd found the ad online. As she got off the elevator, an elderly man in a funky fedora smiled at her and said, Hello. Shay did the same. Why didn't you introduce yourself? Because her brain was zipping around like a bumper car thinking about her brother's visit, what she needed at Target, and whether or not she should ask to put up some business flyers in the lobby. Next time. When she was seated on the bus, she took a deep breath, pulled out her phone, and brought up Brady's number. He'd texted to thank her for the casserole. She'd sent a quick message back telling him he deserved that and more. She couldn't help but think that if she and Brady went on a couple of dates before her brother arrived, she could show Simon, who would then report back to the family, that she was doing fine. Happy, settled, and making good choices, her fingers hovered over the keyboard. Hey, neighbor. Was wondering if you wanted to come for dinner tonight? Before she could talk herself out of it, she pressed send. The bus lurched to a stop, and Shay put a hand up to steady herself, finding her breath again when she saw on the screen that Brady was responding. Brady, sounds good. What can I bring? I'm working until six. Seven okay? You did already thank me, you know. Not that I'm complaining. Shay smiled and went all in. I did thank you. This one is just because I want to see you. Seven works great. There. Shay congratulated herself on her wise decision. Finding romance hadn't been on her agenda when she'd decided to move. If anything worked out, it could just be one of those perks to taking a chance. The bus pulled up to her stop just as another text from Brady came through. Brady, see you later, new girl, winky face. Thankfully someone else was getting off at Shay's stop, seeing as she'd been too busy texting to pull the stop cord. She smiled at the bus driver and wished him a good day. Boston was beautiful. Shay loved cities. She loved being surrounded by skyscrapers and people. The view of the water didn't hurt, either. She weaved between and around people who hustled down the sidewalk. Target was on the next block, and she reminded herself she could only buy what she could carry home. Maybe it would be smart to think about getting a car. Need a few more event bookings to make that happen. Once inside the massive store, she removed her jacket and put it over her purse in a huge red cart. She took her time looking through bins and at sale items. She hadn't been shopping for a while, and now that she was here, she wanted more than to just check off the items on her list. She relaxed, picking up a cute purple wallet to check it out. Opening it, she saw it was very roomy, given that it was small. Bright polka dots decorated the inside. Shay ran her finger along the smooth seam of stitching. Good quality. Then she checked the price tag. She didn't need a new wallet, but it was a great size and so bright. Shay put it back. See? I can be disciplined. Her parents had given her a credit card at 18, telling her she could use it for shopping or going out with friends. She also used it to pay for courses, books, and anything else she desired. She'd never once looked at a bill. When she'd taken her nanny position, the family she worked for had done much the same, telling Shay to purchase anything she'd needed and they'd sort things out at the end of each month. Pushing the cart toward the tool section, she realized she should be grateful she had any concept of money at all. Before Shay could turn left down the aisle for tools, she caught sight of Wyatt holding up a beautifully colored scarf in front of a striking, raven-haired woman. Shay's heart arrested, like it had been dropped from a twelve-story building. When it started again, it doubled its pace. She pulled the cart down a side aisle so she could watch but be out of his line of sight. The woman laughed, pulled the scarf from Wyatt's hands, and tossed it at his chest. Wyatt frowned and picked up another one, but the woman shook her head. When they moved deeper into the women's section, Shay abandoned her cart, grabbing her jacket and purse and holding them tightly as she watched. She couldn't hear them, but something Wyatt said must have been funny because the woman laughed again, this time throwing her head back. Shay's stomach somersaulted. 
Guess he knows what she likes. Did he just meet up with women he knew at different stores and flirt with them? When the woman picked up a sweater and held it, against her lean but curvy body, Wyatt shrugged, then nodded. Jealousy burned like she'd touched her hand to a fire. Stop it. What he does or who he's with does not concern you. Except, he'd said he didn't have a girlfriend. Why lie? He didn't seem like the type, he was too blunt. But what did she know? Shay's last serious relationship had been proof positive that she was not the best judge of whether or not a man was being truthful. When Wyatt turned and strolled away, the woman followed. Shay crossed the aisle while they weren't looking and managed to get herself behind a rack of markdown holiday dresses before they turned again. This time, Wyatt held up a gorgeous, thick, gray infinity scarf. The woman's face brightened, and she pulled it from his hands. Shay blinked, uncertain why a lump had formed in her throat. When the woman pressed herself against Wyatt, hugging him, Shay felt like sharp claws were digging into her heart. Shay ducked behind some t-shirts in time to see Wyatt's gal pal pick up a sexy black dress. Wyatt shook his head adamantly. The woman had the nerve to pat his cheek and then walk into the changing room, leaving Wyatt staring after her. Shay's phone chimed loudly, and she dropped, hunching down like there was a missile aimed straight at her head. Damn it. You are the worst spy ever. She switched the phone to silent while she remained in the squatted position. It was Brady asking if she wanted him to pick anything up. She ignored the text and was about to stand when two scuffed black boots stopped directly in front of her. Shay bit her lip and closed her eyes. I'm invisible. I'm invisible. But no amount of wishing or chanting would make it true. Craning her neck, she let her gaze wander up jean-clad thighs, a wide chest, a scruffy, sexy jaw, and found herself staring into hard-to-read, almost emerald eyes. Lose something? Besides your mind? Wyatt asked. Heat suffused Shay to the point that it was difficult to breathe. Or maybe that was because she was still squatting. Wyatt reached down, circled his hand around her arm, and tugged her to her feet. Shay smiled so wide her cheeks hurt. Oh, hi Wyatt. What are you doing here? I just, was, I thought I dropped my, uh, keys. My keys? But nope, they're in my purse. She knew her face was likely the shade of cherry tomatoes, but she tried to pretend everything was normal. That she hadn't been, stalking her moody neighbor and his hot knot girlfriend through the women's clothing section. You are probably the worst liar I've ever met, he said. He arched a brow and continued to stare at her. Shay laughed too loudly. Wyatt sighed. What the hell are you doing? I told you. He put his hand up and cut her off. Yeah, your keys. Got it. Never mind. They stood staring at each other, and Shay wondered if she backed away slowly, he'd let her go and pretend this never happened. 4. Future reference, when following someone, make sure they haven't spotted you already. Also, stay farther back and try to duck behind things that are actually taller than you. Shay swallowed down the golf ball lodged in her throat and nodded enthusiastically, like what he was saying made perfect sense. You saw me? His laugh was more of a grunt. I thought you were going to drool on that wallet. I really hope you don't ever plan to be a PI or anything. Straightening her shoulders, she lifted her chin. It just so happens I don't plan to, and while I thank you for your great advice on tailing someone, I don't need it. Perhaps you should get back to your raven-haired dream girl. Foot in mouth. Shay nearly swallowed her tongue when a wide smile spread over Wyatt's face. His eyes brightened, and it was like she was staring into glittering jewels. Before either of them could say anything, his sexy friend joined him. Shay wished, more than she ever had before, that she had an invisibility cloak. Hey. You were right about the dress, the woman said, her eyes locked on Shay. Too low cut. Wyatt crossed his arms over his chest, his gaze not leaving Shay's face. Shay's eyes bounced back and forth between the two of them. Wyatt's smile faded, and he glanced at the woman. Told you. She rolled her eyes. You ever get tired of your high horse? Shay choked on a quick intake of breath, making Wyatt look back in her direction as he answered. Nope. It's damn, comfortable up here. Like they shared secrets, the woman leaned in and smiled at Shay. 
one of these days, he's going to fall right off, and I can't wait to watch. Wyatt growled low in his throat, and while Shay's heartbeat raced again, this woman just laughed and smacked Wyatt in the stomach. He also has lousy manners. I'm Abigail. Wyatt's sister. Shay looked at Wyatt, her heartbeat slowing. Her voice was shrill. Sister, Abigail smirked and glanced at her brother. Her brother. Yes. Sister. He missed my birthday, and even though he tried to get out of today, he promised me a visit and a present of my choosing. I did not try to get out of today, Wyatt said. He unfolded his arms and ran a hand through his dark hair. It was a bit tousled, like it wasn't the first time he'd put his hands through it today. Out of frustration? Yes, he did. And because you just lied, I'm getting the dress and the scarf. Wyatt's. Glare would have given Shay shivers if it were directed at her. I'm not buying that damn dress. Where will you wear it? Parent-teacher conferences? Abigail's eyes flashed with a fire that matched her brother's. Maybe. Jonah does have a hot teacher. Wanting to defuse the family feud, and overwhelmed by the thoughts and emotions pummeling her, Shay interrupted inanely. Happy birthday. Both siblings looked at her, and she could see the resemblance now that jealousy wasn't clouding her. Vision. Thank you. I'm sorry. It seems my manners get worse in Wyatt's presence. You are? Shay Matthews, she said, reaching out to shake Abigail's hand. A friend of my brother's? No. Just a neighbor, Wyatt said. The lump returned to Shay's throat and blocked her airway, making breathing next to impossible. She met Wyatt's gaze and forced herself to speak. Right. Just a neighbor. I recently moved into the building. I should get going. I need to buy a drill. She mentally smacked, herself for droning on like a fool. Abigail released her hand, and she made herself ignore the look of pity in the woman's eyes. A drill? Wyatt's eyes showed regret, but seeing as his quick dismissal was still poking holes in her heart, she kept her tone curt. It's a multi-purpose tool. It can be used for a number of things, but I plan to use it to put my new bed together. Shay gathered her purse and jacket tighter to her chest and started backing away slowly. It was nice to meet you, Abigail. Wyatt, see you around. Before either of them could say anything, she turned and went back to where she left the cart. It was gone and for some reason, this made her even more upset. She refused to cry as she walked back to the entrance to grab another one. She came to Target for tools. She came to Boston for freedom. It was time to focus on those two things and nothing else. She sang along to the song playing on her iPhone as she mixed up the salad she'd finished putting together. The table was set nicely, candles were lit, and she was not, absolutely not thinking of any man other than Brady. When a knock came, she wiped her hands on a cloth, took a deep breath, and reminded herself she'd had dinner with a man before and this was no big deal. Unlike other neighbors, who were jerks, she knew Brady didn't mind the label of friends and told herself to focus on that, and not worry about more. At least for now. She needed to remember to ask if it was okay to put her flyer up in the lobby. That thought, and all others, fled when she opened the door to see Wyatt standing in the hallway, a piece of paper in his fingers. She stiffened unintentionally but made no effort to relax. What can I do for you? Wyatt's eyebrow arched. Did he practice that? His ability to say so much with just an eyebrow was enviable. I came to apologize for earlier. Her pulse. Scrambled. Oh. With a sound that was part laugh, part sigh, he passed the paper to her. Shea accepted without looking, choosing to hold his gaze. I was a jerk at the store and I'm sorry. My sister asked about you, and I was telling her how you plan events. She has a good friend who is having a baby. Abigail wants to hire you to plan the shower or party or whatever. Shay wanted to look down her nose at him and refuse the gesture. But common sense trumped pride. She took the number. Thank. You. I'll contact your sister tomorrow. Is that all? Wyatt ran a hand through his hair in a gesture Shay now knew was frustration. His jaw was covered in a few days' stubble, which only added to the whole sexy dark brooding vibe he had going on. Are you just going to stay mad? She tilted her head. 
The elevator dinged. Does it matter? It's not like we're friends. Wyatt opened his mouth to respond, but they were joined by Brady before he could. Looking freshly showered and shaved, wearing a funny shirt that said mechanics know how to make your engine purr, he held a bottle of wine. Wyatt. Shay. He glanced back and forth between them. Hi, Shay said, hoping her voice wasn't an octave too high. Nice shirt, Wyatt said, his tone suggesting otherwise. Like there hadn't been sarcasm in his neighbor's voice, Brady laughed and looked down. Thanks. Christmas present from Gabby. Gabby. Both men had mentioned her now. Maybe it was time to find a female friend in the building. It would certainly be easier. Wyatt glanced at Shay and said with a slight sneer, don't want to hold up your date. Just wanted to drop that off. See you. He walked away, heading for the stairs, before Brady or Shay could reply. What did he have to be mad about? They weren't friends. They were barely neighbors. They were two people who lived in the same building and happened to run into each other now and again. Far too frequently. So there was a little chemistry. So what? The best antidote for those unwanted feelings was standing in front of her right now, holding out a bottle of wine. Shay forced a smile and hoped it looked real. Thank you. You didn't have to bring anything. My pleasure. It's a good red. I'm starved. You can tell me why you refuse to listen to good advice on who to avoid in this building while you feed me. His tone was teasing, but Shay's defensive shields went up as she shut the door behind them. Brady was absolutely right. While nice enough, in certain moments, Wyatt was not a man to become chummy with. So why did it bug her so much and make her want to say otherwise when Brady pointed out the obvious? Because her brother was right. She was stubborn. And capable of making her own choices. Hope you like lasagna. Come on in. She led the way to the kitchen and tucked Abigail's number into her pocket dot. Chapter 6 Shay unplugged the fully charged drill, eager to get her bed together. Thankfully her run-in with Wyatt the other day hadn't kept her from picking up new, 600 thread count sheets. She'd nearly wept with joy when she'd seen them on sale. There were a lot of things. She could cut corners on, but having nice sheets was something she coveted. She'd unloaded the lengths of pine that would become her bed. It was a simple design and shouldn't be very difficult. With her mattress resting against the wall under her window, she started organizing the pieces. By the time she'd finished putting the frame together, she was sweating. But it was a good sweat. The kind that said she'd done it by herself. With her hands on her hips, she surveyed her room. Even with a queen-size bed, there was plenty of space. She opened the window to let in some air and welcomed the blast of cold that rushed her face. Time for a drink. In the kitchen, she grabbed a glass, filled it with ice and water, and toasted herself. Independence felt good. And a little tiring, she thought as she set the glass down and gathered up everything for the recycling. In the underground parking lot, two huge bins were housed in a gated area. From the tenant's side, they could use their key to unlock the gated door. From the other side, city workers could easily pick up the trash and recycling. With her arms full of cardboard and the padding that had encased her bed, it was difficult to get the lid open and get everything inside. Just as things were sliding out of her arms, into the bin, the lid went up higher, like it had an invisible string pulling it up. When she realized there was a hand on the lid, not a string, she jumped with a yelp that echoed in the underground lot. She managed to trip over her own foot and a piece of cardboard she dropped. Wyatt reached out a hand to steady her, wrapping his fingers around her wrist and pulling her forward. Further knocked off balance, she fell forward onto his chest. Both of her hands splayed over the hard ridges of defined muscle that were easily noticeable through the thin t-shirt under the leather jacket he wore unzipped. The heavy lid of the bin crashed down, vibrating like a tuning fork. Seconds. It takes you simple seconds to literally land yourself in Trouble's arms. She stayed still, giving herself a moment to catch her. Breath and swallow down the nerves rising to the surface. Wyatt's other hand encircled her biceps. You just going to stay plastered against me? God, he was infuriating. She jerked back and looked up at him, hoping her face wasn't the color of a stoplight. You should wear a bell. 
You scared me. His lips tilted up on one side as his gaze held hers. I didn't mean to. You're not really supposed to put that much stuff in at once. Shay ground her teeth together. Why did he always sound so, calm? And why didn't he ever get caught in ridiculous, target stalking, biting with cardboard moments? Though he had run his cart straight into her butt, and she'd enjoyed the shade of red he'd turned. Wyatt smiled, and it made both his face and her inside soften. He leaned down and picked up a long strip of cardboard that had fallen and easily bent it in half. Long arms and muscles could be a bonus. Especially when they were attached to a tall, somewhat moody, dark-haired neighbor. Who, you're staying away from? She straightened her spine, standing taller, which still only put her head level with his shoulders. Even though the chore was done, she told him, I can do it. He closed his eyes for one brief second, then opened them. Is there a reason you're so hell-bent on proving you can do everything alone? She glared at him, frustrated that her independence came across as mulish and stubborn. Something about him brought out all of her repressed bad manners. She was, gracious enough to admit that his assistance had not hindered, but only helped. Thank you, Wyatt, she said as she locked the door to the bins. You're welcome, Shay. They walked side by side to the door that led to the basement. She didn't like the silence. It made her edgy. Were you out? He unlocked the door and pushed it open in front of him, gesturing for her to go through. Work. Monosyllables. Perfect. Big case? The door shut behind them as they walked to the elevator. Let me guess, you watch cop dramas on TV. She pressed the call button on the elevator and grinned up at him, determined to make nice. In a purely neighbor-oriented way. You don't say, big case? The smile he gave was like a hard-won prize. No. I just say work. And I hardly ever say perp. Teasing her again. She wished that didn't make her stomach feel so dizzy. You're funny. When you want to be. He shrugged when they stepped. Into the elevator. Try not to spread it around. Shay nodded, looking at him and wondering what it would be like to have him pull her up against his chest when he wasn't trying to stop her from falling. It doesn't matter what that would be like. Reputation to protect? His mouth flatlined. She could spend far too much time watching the movement of his mouth. Something like that. He stepped off the elevator with another curt nod, and Shay tried to refocus her thoughts and settle the wings, of too many emotions fluttering in her chest. She could use another drink. Was it too early for something stronger? Back in her apartment, she tossed her keys on the counter beside the cake she'd baked for Brady the other night. Cake was in any time of the day food. She grabbed a fork, remembering how Brady had sighed in delight on his first bite. Thinking about that evening was far safer than going over the few minutes she'd just spent with Wyatt. Brady had been a perfect dinner companion, funny and charming. His eyes literally lit up when he laughed. And he had a great laugh. Shay stabbed her fork into an icing-covered piece and popped it in her mouth. Great eyes, great laugh. Great taste in cake, she said to herself pointing the fork in the air to punctuate her list. He hadn't kissed her good night, and the evening had stayed firmly in friendly territory, but that was where good things started. She scooped another bite. Not with stalking and arguing. Pushing the cake. Away before she devoured the whole thing, she put the fork in the sink and thought about showering. She grabbed her long overdue drink and realized there was no point in cleaning up until the bed was made and the last of her Rubbermaid bins were stored. Might as well do it now. What's one more trip downstairs? Her apartment was almost a home. Eager to be completely settled, she left her empty glass on the counter and piled the bins on top of each other. The flyers and business cards she'd made were on her desk, beside the bins. Might as well get everything done at once. Then she could shower, relax a bit, and look up some ideas online, return some emails, and maybe phone her mom. She grabbed one of the flyers and a couple of business cards as well. If Brady was in the lobby, she'd ask if she could put them up. When the elevator doors slid open, she stepped into the empty car and started to go over her list of what she still needed to get done. She had left a message for Wyatt's sister, Abigail, yesterday but hoped to actually speak with her today. 
Planning a baby shower sounded fun and would give Shay a chance to meet new people and make more contacts. Things were going better than she'd expected, but she needed to keep up the momentum. The author signing and book release at the library was this weekend and Shay hoped it would be the first of many events she could plan in the community. She still had a decent chunk in her savings account and, because she couldn't talk her father out of it, as an absolute last resort, an untouched credit card. Other than the bed and the couch, she'd kept her expenses low. Securing the job with Abigail would give her another boost. By the time Simon came to visit, she'd be able to assure him that she was doing perfectly fine. She might even be able to tell her family she didn't actually have a desk job. Telling them she had a job waiting at Boston University had been an accident, a lie that popped out just to ease their concerns. And it had. But Shay was done taking handouts. She could stand on her own two feet or she'd have to fall over. Stepping off the elevator, she smiled brightly, loving the high ceilings and how they were lined with aged wooden beams. Sunlight shone through the glass doors and bounced off the tiled foyer. Leaving the bins by the elevator, she took her card and flyer to the front desk. Through the glass front doors she could see the courtyard had been shoveled, but snow continued to fall softly, melting as it landed, perfect crystals that disappeared before they could feel real. It was a beautiful building. She might still need a desk job if she wanted to keep her place, but right now, she was holding on to her optimism that the event planning would pan out. Without warning, Rady popped up from behind the lobby counter, making Shay's heart slam into her throat. She managed to swallow her squeal, thankfully. What was with her neighbors appearing out of nowhere? Brady laughed. Sorry about that. Was just storing some stuff under the counter. How are you? Thanks again for dinner. You're an excellent cook, Brady said. He started digging through a stack of papers, sorting them into piles. Heart still a bit haywire, she gave a shuddery laugh and leaned on the counter, which came up to her chest. My pleasure. Thank you for all your help. I'm sorry about having to get the lock replaced. She nodded to the door. I hope it wasn't crazy expensive. Not that she could cover the cost if it was. She really didn't want to return her bed, but she couldn't shake the guilt over all the tenants needing new keys. I promise it wasn't a big deal. Mostly. His face scrunched cryptically. She decided not to question him about the mostly. She tapped the papers she was holding against her thigh and took a deep breath. I still appreciate it. Listen, I was wondering if I could put up a flyer or my business card on the bulletin board in the hallway by the mailboxes. He shrugged, his easy smile coming back. Don't see why not. Others do it. You secure any more events? Happiness bubbled up in her chest, but she just nodded. A couple. My first real event is this Saturday, but I have a few people to connect with still and am hoping by the end of the day I'll have at least one more job. She didn't need to tell him that Wyatt's sister was the possible client. But I'm still just getting started, so my rates are low if you know anyone looking for help planning something. She slid the business cards across the lobby desk. Brady's eyes crinkled at the corners when he read it. Shine. Customized event planning to meet all your needs. Shay's cheeks warmed. Was she completely ridiculous for believing she could do this? Stop it. You are already doing this. Yep. She watched his expression, her stomach tumbling like ice in a martini shaker, but couldn't help herself from asking, do you like it? He nodded. It's great. Have you run into Gabby yet? She and Owen, her fiancé, I told you about them, right? They want to have an engagement party. Both you and Wyatt have mentioned her, but I haven't met them yet. Maybe you could arrange for the four of us to get together, she said. Brady looked up, his mouth tightening into a frown. Was it the mention of Wyatt? Before she could wonder too much about it, Brady came around the counter. I'd love for you to meet them. They're great friends of mine, and they'll adore you. Shay smiled at the compliment, still holding the flyer in her hand. They both turned when Wyatt came into the lobby from the elevators. Where was he going now? None of your business. He stopped and stared at them. Shay realized she and Brady were standing quite close together and wondered how that looked to Wyatt before she reminded herself she didn't care. 
They weren't even friends, after all. Brady lifted his hand and waved. Wyatt. You heading to work? Wyatt's eyes stayed on hers. Nope. Jim. He lifted a black duffel bag. Brady laughed, shaking his head. We have a gym here. Wyatt shrugged, tilted his chin toward her in what she guessed was his version of acknowledgement, and then walked past them, pushing open the lobby doors and headed out the front. When she couldn't see him anymore, she turned back to Brady. Brady rolled his eyes. I know he's a cop and stuff, but that guy has some serious baggage. Shay felt the defenses rising in her throat. Everyone has baggage. Brady held her gaze and leaned an elbow on the lobby counter. That's true. Listen, why don't I talk to Owen and Gabby and see if maybe we can grab dinner with them or something one night this week? Shay's heart beat heavily in her chest. He was asking her to dinner. This is exactly what she wanted. So why did she hesitate? Because you're supposed to be focused on you and your life, not men. There was no point in avoiding a perfectly good one, was there? I'd love to. Just let me know what day. Or night I guess, since we wouldn't grab dinner in the daytime. Stop talking. Brady bit his lower lip, and Shay knew he was struggling not to laugh. Sounds good. Great. She groaned inwardly. Now she sounded like that tiger who loved cereal. Before she could become overly enthusiastic about anything else, she waved her flyer. It's okay if I put this up? For sure. The phone on the desk rang and he picked it up, and Shay worked on taming the whirlwind racing inside her stomach. Kendrick Place, Brady speaking. He winked at Shay as he put the card in his pocket. Then he grimaced. Hello, Mia. No. Everything is fine. Shay's nerves receded as Brady rolled his eyes. Who was Mia, and why did she make the man who always smiled frown? Ex-girlfriend? He covered the mouthpiece with his hand and whispered to Shay, I gotta go deal with this. See you later. Taking the piles of paper and the phone, he walked to the office behind the desk. Shay gave a small wave, but he'd already turned away. She wouldn't mind the lowdown on whoever Mia was. This building might not have many units, but it had plenty of stories. Shay pinned her flyer in the middle of the wall over the mailboxes. Walking back to the elevator, she felt proud of how fast things were coming together. Timing mattered. In the basement of the building, Shay shifted the bins, leaning against the doorframe in an effort to turn the knob, but lost her grip. The top bin tumbled, but fortunately the lid stayed closed. Shoot. She knelt down to res-tack the bins. Brady had told her that the room was originally the main storage area for items ready to be shipped, back when the building had been a warehouse. She loved the history of that and the idea that one man had started small and worked his way towards something greater. Shay turned the knob, but before she could push the door open, pain exploded in the back of her head. She turned but only saw darkness before she fell to the ground. Chapter 7 he was being ridiculous, yet he continued to pace back and forth in his living room. His eyes caught on the small target bag. What had possessed him to pick that up? It frustrated the hell out of him that jealousy wound his stomach into a vicious knot at the sight of Shay and Brady standing so close together. What did he care if they were together? Hadn't he made it abundantly clear he didn't want Shay? He didn't want anyone. The hurt that had filled her eyes when, he'd said they weren't friends haunted him. How could a look feel like a punch in the face? Hell, he'd been punched in the face, and it didn't bug him as much as wounding Shay's feelings did. It had been a while since he'd worried about anyone's feelings, including his own, which was probably why he was trying so hard to deny the attraction to Shay. If it was just attraction, maybe he could deal. But he picked up a goddamn wallet for her. He'd shopped for a woman. Why? Because she'd been standing next to a good guy who deserved her a hell of a lot more than Wyatt did. He found himself replaying the little moments they'd shared, like a kid daydreaming. He didn't want a relationship or a hookup right now, but he thought of her constantly. She put him in his place the other night when she'd reminded him they weren't friends. Wyatt didn't like being consumed with anything other than work. It was easier that way. Anything was easier than getting tangled up in a woman who couldn't possibly be what she seemed on the surface. When he'd gone undercover, he knew the downside, 
being cut off from life, from family and friends. He'd been fine with that because it meant bringing down drug dealers who'd started lacing their product with toxic chemicals. What Wyatt hadn't signed up for, and something he'd never seen coming, was falling for someone while undercover and having her run a game on him. He thought he was saving Maria. He actually thought he could get her out of the life and then they'd start one together. But instead, she'd taken him for a ride and sold him out to her brother. Not Wyatt Daniels, but Wyatt Rochester, the man he pretended to be. He'd nearly screwed up his job in the process, which thankfully his captain never got wind of. But Wyatt didn't let himself forget how he'd been fooled. He disappeared from Maria's shady circle the next day. Six months ago now, and it still tormented him. The drug deals he'd had to turn a blind eye to for the sake of the bigger picture. He'd known after the first few weeks that undercover wasn't for him. It was too much waiting and not enough action. Which was exactly how he felt right this second. All waiting, no action. He shook off his mood and the memories. Brady hadn't known her any longer than Wyatt had, and who the hell did that guy think he was, warning Shay off him. From what he'd seen of her, she could make her own choices. Not that he was an option for her. But he could damn well be her friend, couldn't he? Did he still remember how to be a friend to someone? He'd never been one to a gorgeous woman who got under his skin in quite this way. But it didn't mean he couldn't try. And the wallet was a piece, offering. Nothing more. That thought brought him to her door. He raised his hand to knock, not enjoying the nerves dive bombing his stomach. Peace offering. Maybe he should have brought back her Tupperware. Would that have been a better reason for stopping by? Shit. Stop it. You do not need excuses to see her. He was just coming to say hi, sorry for being a jerk. Here, have this wallet. He certainly wasn't coming by to stare at those gorgeous eyes or full lips. His life was finally peaceful, other than his sister and mother hounding him about spending more time together and about how he needed to see more of his nephew, Jonah. The door flew open, and for the second time, Brady managed to leave Wyatt speechless. His face was dark and angry. Like a switch had been flicked, Wyatt's instincts kicked in. What's wrong? He stepped forward, crowding Brady and looking over his shoulder for Shay. Hey. You can't just barge in, Brady complained, but there was no heat in it. He shut the door behind Wyatt. Why are you here? Wyatt stopped before the end of the hallway and turned, all of his senses on high alert. A thin, long table rested against the wall. Shay's key sat in a colored bowl. He put the target bag there and looked back at Brady. Brady's eyes registered surprise, but his tone was even when he responded. Why are you? None of your business, Wyatt replied. The hair on the back of his neck stood up and tension turned his stomach. Something is wrong. Shay? SHH, she's lying on the couch, Brady said. Wyatt's eyes nearly crossed. Had they been lying on the couch together? Why the hell did the thought of that twist him into knots? I was actually going to come see you in a little bit after I got her settled. Nerves and frustration made his tone curt. Settled from what? He pointed to the living room. Come on. She was curled on her side on a sleek, and obviously new, couch. Her hair was a mess, and Wyatt couldn't completely tell, but it looked like there was some bruising on her cheek. What the hell happened? His voice came out raw as he stalked toward her and kneeled beside the couch. Shea stirred, moaned, and opened her eyes. Wyatt? She's okay. Wyatt ignored Brady's assurance and the tone in his voice that said he was very aware of the possessiveness Wyatt was feeling. Instead of worrying about the intense pressure in his chest or feelings, he focused on Shay. He tried to slow the erratic pace of his heart by breathing slowly through his nose. He gently touched her cheek where blackish gray marks marred her pale skin. What happened? It took serious effort to keep the rage out of his voice. Someone attacked her, Brady said. His voice was as dark as Wyatt's mood. What? Wyatt surged to his feet and whirled on Brady. Who? She struggled to sit up, and Wyatt went back to her side. Just lie back down. Brady will tell me what happened. He ran his hand up and down her arm. His stomach clutched at the way her eyes filled with tears. Wyatt wanted to pick her up and hug her, which should have sent warning signals to his brain, telling him to get a handle on his ridiculous feelings. You're allowed to be mad on her behalf. She was attacked at her own home. 
and why it couldn't stomach the thought of anyone innocent being harmed. That it was someone in his own building was literally too close to home. She went down to store some boxes and someone hit her from behind. Hard. I don't know with what and she said she didn't either. The storage room is trashed. Brady shoved his hands in the pockets of his jeans and rocked back on his heels. Wyatt looked at Shay and kept his voice soft. You didn't see anyone? Shay shook her head gently. He sat on the edge of the couch, keeping one hand on her arm. Looking up at Brady, he asked, Did you call the police? Has she seen a doctor? Shay fidgeted and put her hand on top of Wyatt's free one. I don't want to go to the doctor. I just have a headache, and I feel stupid. It's not really your problem. His jaw tightened, and he squeezed her hand lightly. Anger, at himself and at the situation, made him feel too hot. She should be safe in her own goddamn building. All of them should. You have nothing to feel stupid about. At all. And I'm making it my problem. Did you see anything? Before she could answer, Brady stalked closer. Let her rest, man. She doesn't need you harassing her, too. Brady, Shay said, her voice small. Wyatt took no offense. He understood the desire to look out for her or anyone else that could have been put in the same position. Did you call the police? Brady's eyes lowered sheepishly. No. She asked me not to. Wyatt. Pulled out his phone, sending Brady a hard look. This is Detective Daniels. I need a couple of uniforms at my apartment building. 3574 Oliver Street. Unit 302. Thanks. Okay. He hung up. Making the call settled his heart rate. This time, when Shay tried to sit up, he helped her, grateful she let him assist. His heart twisted in his chest when her face went green. You going to throw up? Despite her pallor and the tangled hair, she managed to give him an evil glare. No. Offense colored her tone, but he figured it would be a bad idea to smile or laugh. She'd been hurt, but it hadn't ended the tough armor she wore. Wyatt looked up at Brady. Levi McVale in apartment 201. He's a doctor. Go see if he's home and can come check her out. Brady put his hands on his hips, his feet spread apart. I'm sorry. When did we put you in charge? Wyatt's jaw tightened, and when he spoke, he had to work at keeping the frustration out of his tone. He knew how to adapt and roll with the persona that was necessary. He'd made himself into an entirely different person for eight months, so he could paste a smile on his face now if it would help Shay. Sorry, man. We're both obviously worried about her. I just thought it would be better if I was here to meet the police. But I can go get Levi. Wyatt started to get up as Brady's posture changed, softened. No. You're right. Stupid. Thing to argue over. I'll go get him. Shay, you okay with that? She nodded then winced. Brady left and Wyatt gave all his attention to Shay, turning toward her and gently touching her face. The urge to cradle her against him surprised the hell out of him. Her weary eyes held a spark of amusement. Impressive, she said. What? Your Oscar-winning performance of The Nice Guy Neighbor. Well played. It's almost like you care, Shay muttered. She looked down at her lap, and Wyatt took a deep breath. Brady would be back in a minute, and there was only so much he could do in that time, but he could give her this. He used his fingers to gently nudge her chin up so her eyes met his. He could give her this much. She deserved this much. I care. Her smile was a small percentage of its usual shine but still warmed him from the inside out. You sure it's not just your alpha gene making you feel that way? He frowned. Of course she wouldn't let him keep it simple. I'm sorry? My, alpha gene? She nodded but stopped immediately and put a hand to her head. Yeah. Three brothers, remember? I'm the weak woman in need right now, and that's got your protective instincts hot and bothered. She was blasting right through the steel cage he'd put around his heart, and she'd made him laugh while doing it. Don't be cute while you're hurt. I have no doubt about your strength or ability. I shouldn't have said we weren't friends. We are. Or can be, if you still want to, he said. He heard the apartment door open and shut. I want to, she whispered. He congratulated himself on his restraint in not telling her that he was hot and bothered long before she showed any signs of weakness, as she put it. 
He might be rusty at friendship, but he knew friends didn't disclose information like that. Before either of them could say anything else, the door opened and Brady came in with two uniforms and Levi. Levi was in pajama bottoms and a dark gray hoodie. He looked too young to be a doctor, but the tired lines around his eyes and the stethoscope around his neck gave him an air of unquestionable authority. He clicked the pen light in his hand on and off once. Wyatt stood, greeted both of the officers, and introduced himself before turning to Levi. Thanks for coming up, document. No problem. Hi there, Shay. I'm Levi. This isn't usually how I like to get to know my neighbors. She shook his hand, and he sat beside her on the couch. I'm sorry. It's nice to meet you. It's probably just a bad headache. I just happen to have two overprotective neighbors, I think. Always better safe than sorry, Levi said. He turned Shay's cheek toward him, studying her bruise. When he asked her to turn away, he gently checked the back of her head, apologizing when she winced. Let's have a look in. Your eyes, he said. She turned back to him, her color a bit more green than it had been a moment before. The cops were asking Wyatt something, but he and Brady were listening to Levi intently. You took quite the knock to the head. Did you get hit in the face? No. I think I fell on it. Hmm. Levi shone the light in her eyes, moved it away, and shone it again. Did you see anyone? No. I didn't even hear anyone. I was just going to store some stuff and then come back and make my bed. The gloomy, dark tone of her voice didn't fit the happy persona Wyatt had already attached to Shay. Levi pressed the stethoscope to her chest and listened. I think you should probably skip that for tonight. After a moment, he took her wrist, pressed his fingers to it, and looked at his watch. You going to be much longer, Doc? We need to take a statement, one of the uniforms, O'Brien, said. Wyatt shot a hard look at the two cops he didn't recognize, but it was Levi who spoke. Won't be. Much of a statement if she passes out or throws up on you first. I'll be done when I'm done. Brady and Wyatt exchanged impressed mercs. Brady hadn't moved or said a word since he'd entered. Well, Levi said, a grim smile on his lips, you have a mild concussion. Do you live here alone? Yes. You shouldn't be by yourself tonight. Probably not for a couple of nights. You don't need to be woken every few hours, but it wouldn't hurt to have someone wake you periodically, just to be safe. You can take over the counter meds for your headache, and you'll need to ice your cheek and the back of your head. I wouldn't suggest you shower or bathe on your own until at least tomorrow night, just to be safe. I'll come check on you in the morning. But if you get any worse, if you start throwing up or slurring, I want you to go to the emergency room. Okay? Even from where he was standing, Wyatt could see the tears in Shay's eyes. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Sorry to be a bother. Levi patted her hand. No bother at all. You send one of these guys for me if you need anything, he said. He shook hands with Brady and Wyatt and let himself out. Wyatt sat down before Brady could think to do the same. Instead, his neighbor leaned against the wall, eyeing Wyatt like he was gauging his intentions. Shay. I'm Officer O'Brien and this is Officer Ricci. Do you feel up to telling us what happened? I honestly don't know what happened. I went downstairs to put something into. Storage. I was opening the door and everything went black. Officer O'Brien wrote down Shay's words, and Officer Ricci looked back and forth between Wyatt and Brady. Has anyone else been down there? Brady stepped closer. No. It's a mess. Someone has rifled through everything. Wyatt's hands twitched, and he tightened them into fists. Who had been down there? And why? How had they gotten in? Ricci nodded. Okay. We'll need to take a look when we're done here. O'Brien continued with his, questioning. How long had you been down there? Only a minute or two. Did you see anyone else? No. Do you have reason to believe anyone would want to hurt you? Shay's eyes teared up again. I've hardly met anyone in the city. I can't imagine I've upset anyone so much already that they would hurt me. Wyatt made himself relax his jaw. If it clamped together any tighter, he'd give himself a headache. She was right about one thing, his protective instincts had gone into overdrive. But he was a cop and believed in justice. Feeling protective was understandable, he assured himself. No. Probably not. 
Any other troubles around here lately? Officer O'Brien looked back and forth between the men once again. They had each other, but it was Wyatt who answered. There was some trouble with the storage room before. We had a rather shady apartment manager. I suspected him of dealing drugs, but he moved out close to three weeks ago. I've been running the place since Jake left. And there's been no trouble until today, Brady said. Nodding, like he'd already known, Ricci asked, this Jake. He's the apartment manager? Former. Yes. Ricci turned to Wyatt. Why did you suspect him of dealing? Wyatt frowned. Intuition. Instinct. Training. Too much time spent around low-life creeps just like Jake. He didn't have time to school two uniforms on how they should be speaking to a detective, even one that wasn't their direct superior. He was looking for something he said. He misplaced. The storage room was trashed once before. He'd broken into the tenant mailboxes. He had visitors at strange times. He was high more often than not, and he all but confessed when he moved out after I threw, warned him. Brady's jaw dropped. Holy shit. Are you taking notes on all of us? Wyatt's lips quirk. I'm an observant guy. I'll say. The cops asked several more questions before asking to see the storage room. Though Wyatt could see from the way Brady hesitated that he didn't want to leave, he agreed to show them around. Once they'd left, Wyatt locked her door and came back to the living room, finding Shay curled back up on her side. She looked so small, but she'd held up better than expected. I'm going to get you some ice. You have any Tylenol? Yes. Over the stove. But you don't have to do that. I can do it in a minute. I was just going to close my eyes first, her voice petered out. Mmm. Wyatt watched her for a moment, emotion twisting in his chest. Something shifted, like his heart was making room or waking up. Friends. This is your chance to show yourself, and her, that you can be human again. Shaking off the sentimental thought, he grabbed the ice, some water, and the pills. He helped her swallow them down, and then put the ice on the back of her head. Thanks Wyatt, she whispered. You're. Welcome, Shay. Her lips curved even though her eyes stayed closed. I'm going to have to make you another casserole. He smiled, his chest warming, tightening. She was so damn sweet. Hate to break it to you, sweetheart, but you'll probably need to make me more than one. Her eyes fluttered open. Why's that? He towed off his shoes and ran a hand down her hair with a gentleness he didn't know he could show. Or feel. He wouldn't think about that now. He was doing the right thing, what anyone, but especially a cop, would do. He also wouldn't question himself about the fact that he wanted to be the one to do this for her. Because until you're better, I'm not going anywhere. Chapter 8 Shay's stomach rolled. It matched the sensation in her head. Yet neither of those things were the most pressing issues in her mind. Opening one eye at a time, she noted the light in the living room had been dimmed. Wyatt was nowhere to be seen, but she could hear movement from down the hall. With gentle precision, she scooted herself into a sitting position. If he was busy and she didn't fall over, she could make it to the bathroom to check if her hair was as bad as she feared. And why do you care what he thinks? She didn't have the energy to argue with herself. They were going to be friends. Had he really said that? Friends was good. She could do that. Shay eased off the couch, giving herself a moment to ensure she was steady enough to move. The moon shone through the windows. She must have been sleeping for a while. And he'd stayed. Because they were friends, shuffling her feet along the carpet, despite a shock or two, was reasonably easy. She paused, leaned against the wall near her entryway hall, and gave herself a moment. Her eyes caught on the target bag sitting on the small table she'd placed there. Curious, she picked it up and opened it. Her heart lurched hard enough to make her forget her stomach. Tears stung her eyes. The purple wallet sat at the bottom of the bag. She clutched the plastic to her chest, breathing slowly so she didn't cry, but it didn't work. Tears slipped from her eyes. Wyatt came out of her bedroom. Thoughts collided. Wyatt. In her bedroom. In two long strides, he was gripping her shoulders his knees bent so he was eye-level with her. What's wrong? What happened? What are you doing up? Even in her hazy state, she felt the heat of his hands on her body, through her clothes. 
She knew she would be wiser not to feel these things, but it didn't seem like a choice. The bag crinkled between them. A close, his eyes were darker, more intense, if that was possible. Her skin tingled deliciously where his fingers dug in. She could smell his soap or cologne or maybe it was just him, but it could easily become her favorite scent. He wore casual clothes, jeans, and a hoodie that read BPD. Did he go home and change? Wyatt took her chin between his thumb and forefinger, tilting her head up to peer into her eyes. Shay? Are you all right? Do you feel sick? She sighed. You smell good. She closed her eyes. What the hell was wrong with her? Could she blame the statement on her concussion? When she opened her eyes, Wyatt's lips were tilted into a smug smirk. You got up off the couch to tell me that? She shook her head, immediately regretting the movement. No. I wanted to check my hair. Jesus. She should have stayed on the couch. Apparently she had no ability to stop words from flying out of her mouth. Wyatt's laugh was low and deep, like it was a little rusty. It sent shivers over her arms, and, as if he'd noticed, he rubbed his hands up and down, creating a friction she didn't want to focus on too closely. His movement froze when he noticed the bag. Stepping back, he pointed at it. I, uh, earlier, I came to give that to you. She wiped her tears with one hand, still clutching the bag with the other. You bought me the wallet. His mouth turned down. It's not a big deal. Shay's pulse scrambled, like her heart had blown a fuse. I really wanted it. I got that. Detective, remember? She smiled, but she wasn't feeling humor. She stepped closer to him, ignoring the dizzy sensation invading her brain. Thank you. It's a peace offering, he said. He shoved both his hands in the pocket of his sweater. It's really thoughtful. I love it. It's just to make up for being an ass. You know, an olive branch or whatever. Because we're going to be friends now. Shay leaned her shoulder against the wall. Right. Friends. She'd embarrassed herself enough. Don't move. Don't do anything stupid. It was he who moved. He came closer and smoothed one palm down the side of her head with a gentleness that stole her breath. Your hair is fine. She was going to comment on the word fine, which basically meant nothing was as it should be, but she remembered he'd been in her room. Why were you in my room? One of his large hands found hers, and he pulled her, gently into her room, saying, I'm not real good with idle time. Shay's heart squeezed so tight it stopped her breath. He put the mattress on and made the bed for her. The rich bedding made her room look incredibly cozy, and Shay wanted to curl up in it. With Wyatt. No. Friends do not crawl into bed with friends. Words were trapped in her mouth, and she didn't trust herself with them so she bit down on her lip. Hard. He turned, noticed what she was doing, and gently tugged her lip with his. Thumb. I'm sorry. Did I cross the line? I know you're Miss Independent, but I figured it was better than sleeping on the couch. Nice couch by the way, he said. He dropped his hands to his sides, stiffened, and added, almost defensively, I had nothing else to do, and you cleaned my house. The muscles around her heart squeezed impossibly tight, like they were being clutched in a giant's fist. Shay laughed even as her eyes watered and stepped into him, wrapping her arms around him, squeezing, and resting her head on his chest. She'd hug any of her friends, so this was okay. His arms stayed at his sides for a moment, then came around her, almost cautiously. She absorbed the sensation of being in his arms and it feeling so incredibly good. Thank you, she whispered. Oddly enough, she didn't feel resentful that he'd taken it upon himself to finish what she'd started. Because he'd recognized that she could do it but had wanted to do it for her. His chest rose and fell with a quick, intake of breath. You're welcome. Shay leaned back but kept her arms around him. I didn't clean your house by the way. I straightened your kitchen. I could have probably managed to do this later or tomorrow, but it was kind of you to think of it. I appreciate it. She couldn't track all the expressions that passed over his features. His breath warmed her skin, and she wondered if his lips were soft even though the rest of him was hard. She kept her eyes on his mouth. His grip around her, waist tightened. His gaze lowered to Shay's mouth, and his breathing slowed. She felt his hands flatten over her back, his fingers spread wide. His face came a little bit closer, and if she just went up on tiptoe, 
their mouths would meet. Her hair was probably everywhere, and she didn't have makeup on, yet none of that mattered as much as the thought of kissing him. She wanted to. Clearly she'd learned nothing about making choices that would prevent heartbreak. Ten fingertips dug into her. Hips. I haven't been that nice to you, he said. His voice was so low. She watched his lips form every word. You've had some moments. You're being pretty nice right now. He nudged her chin up with his fingers. You should lie down. You should kiss me. So much for her words being trapped. His eyes widened, and she realized she'd said it out loud. For once, she didn't want to take back something she'd said. We're friends. His voice was rough, like gravel through a grinder. But he didn't. Move back. One side of his mouth tipped up and his nose brushed against Chase. She arched in needy expectation, and then swallowed a gasp when she was suddenly scooped up in his arms. What are you doing? He walked a few steps to the side of her mattress. Putting you to bed. She made a low humming noise of agreement in the back of her throat. Yup. She had no common sense at all when it came to men she shouldn't want. But something told her that why it was different. Or he could be if. He'd let them explore the heat between them. He set her down on the bed, and she let her head settle into the pillow. When he leaned over her, his eyes were intense, captivating. I'm not great at this friendship thing, but I'm willing to try. Go to sleep. Please. You need rest. He started to pull back, and Shay gripped his shirt. I'm fine. Wyatt shook his head and pressed his lips to her forehead. Sleep, Shay. I'll wake you in a bit. Her head felt heavier than she wanted it to, and she had plenty of arguments left for why he was wrong. Now that she wasn't focused on the feel of him and his nearness, the dull ache behind her eyes was more noticeable. Stay, she whispered. He hesitated, then replied with a gruff tone, I'm not going anywhere. Sleep. When she woke again, there was a glass of water and two aspirin on her nightstand. She went up on her elbow and gave herself a moment to adjust. Some nausea, but the headache didn't feel like knives punching her anymore. She took the pills and noted the water was ice cold, which meant why it must have just put it there. Mixed signals were an understatement where he was concerned. The ringing of her phone cleared the rest of the cobwebs from her mind. She started to get out of bed quickly but realized that wasn't an option. Slowing her movements and hoping that if she didn't get to it, the caller would leave a message, she made her way to the living room. She found her phone on the coffee table and slid her thumb along the screen to answer. Hello? Her voice was croaky, but at least she'd made it. Hi. Shay? It's Abigail. Wyatt's sister. It was like she had her ear to a megaphone and Shay winced. Where was Wyatt anyway? She walked to the kitchen as she spoke. Hi. How are you? I'm great. Sorry I missed your call. It's been busy at work. I'm the manager at a Baywater hotel. We've had non-stop bookings. The words echoed in Shay's brain, bringing a little stab of pain with each one. Why it wasn't in the kitchen? She sat at one of the dining room chairs and noticed she was starting to sweat. Maybe she had gotten up too quickly. Abigail was still talking, and Shay missed part of what she said. So I have some good news and bad news, she said when Shay tuned in again. Oh. Hopefully the woman wouldn't notice her minimal response. My friend who I want to have the shower for was scheduled to be. Induced. She has gestational diabetes, and they feel like it's safer to deliver sooner rather than later. She grabbed a scrap of paper out of a book she'd been jotting down her bills in and tried to follow Abigail's stream of words. The good news is, I want to hire you. The bad news is, I need to have the party this weekend. But, I've secured one of the banquet rooms at our hotel for Sunday from 1 to 4 so we have a nice open space. What I'll need for you to take care of is the menu, decorations, and party games. I'll take care of the guest list because most of our friends are mutual. Shay wrote down some of the things Wyatt's sister said, but her brain was scrambling. She heard a noise from the hallway, and it registered that the door was opening and closing. I can transfer or email you the money to take care of the costs. I looked at your website, it's gorgeous by the way. Your flat fee is in addition to the other costs, is that correct? Yes, she mumbled, her eyes. Locking with Wyatt's as he came into the kitchen carrying a brown paper bag in one hand and a gym bag slung over his arm. He frowned when he saw her. 
okay. Does this sound okay to you? Abigail finally took a breath but she couldn't find her own. Yes. Would you mind emailing me what we just discussed though to be sure that I don't miss anything? And you can find my payment link on my site. Her head throbbed. Wyatt put his bags down and came over to the table. He glanced at her page and, then dragged a chair over to sit directly in front of her. Shay gave a weak smile. If you pay the flat fee, I'll use that for costs and then square up with you at the end. Oh you're so great. I'm so glad you don't mind helping. I should have been on this before, but between my son and my job, I don't seem to have time to even breathe. It's no trouble, and I'm really grateful for the opportunity. Wyatt said you were new to town and just starting up, so this is great for both of us. There are a few events coming up at the hotel, and if this goes well, I could recommend you to my boss. Wyatt gestured for her to put down the phone. Wrap it up, he whispered. She scowled and stuck her tongue out at him, making him smirk. Into the phone she said, that would be amazing. Thank you, Abigail. I really appreciate it. Wyatt's eyes widened at his sister's name, and he made an effort to take the phone from Shay, mouthing let me talk to her. She pushed his hand away. Apparently too many movements at once made her stomach flip over backward. My pleasure. I'll email you and touch base on Friday. Sound okay? Closing her eyes to block out Wyatt's irritated gaze and to settle the storm in her stomach, she took a deep breath. Sounds perfect. She had to open her eyes to disconnect the call and Wyatt's heated. Gaze hadn't left her face. Why are you out of bed? She tilted her head. Because my phone was ringing and I run my own business so I needed to answer it. Oh and also because I'm nearly 25 and haven't been sent to bed since I was 6. Perks of adulting, right? An almost grin twitched on his lips, high praise from Wyatt. The man didn't give away his smiles or smirks for nothing. Cute. You understand that a concussion can be serious, right? He looked so worried that she curbed. The sarcasm. I do. And I appreciate you looking out for me. It's kind of you. Very neighborly, she said, meaning to tease him. His eyes darkened. This isn't because we're neighbors. She waited but it appeared he was going to make her work for every piece of information. Then why? He turned his back on her and walked to the window. She stood, gave herself a moment to make sure she was steady, and went to stand just behind him. She wanted to touch him. It's the right thing to do. You shouldn't have to be worried about walking around in your own building. I'll find out who did this. It's not on you, Wyatt. He turned and looked down at her, and his hand started to move, but he stopped the motion. I hate that you were hurt. I know. But would you be staying with Brady if he was hurt? She was pushing when she shouldn't, but she couldn't seem to stop herself. Wyatt shook his head and treated her to a half-laugh. His wide shoulders shook only slightly. Brady's probably a winner when he's hurt. So it's just because we're neighbors and it's the right thing to do. The laugh lines around his eyes moved, and his expression turned serious. Even without touching her, he was able to make her feel like she was being embraced. Her heart thundered hard, competing with the riot in her head. He spoke so quietly she wasn't sure if he'd meant to say anything out loud. When I'm around you, I feel like the world isn't as bad as it seems, he said. She didn't know what to say, so she did what she'd been wanting to do, what she'd been fighting the urge to do, since she'd met him. Stepping into his space, she leaned forward and let her lips touch his, like a feather brushing along skin. It was a barely their hint of a kiss, but the air between them ignited. As her mouth found the courage to move, he pulled back, eyes wide. The touch and taste of his lips were imprinted on her own. He cleared his throat and tried to back up, realizing the patio door was behind him. He sidestepped her and walked toward the bag he'd left on her dining table. I brought some food. You should eat something, he said. Maybe the kiss hadn't affected him? She chose not to concentrate on that thought. You're bossy. He gave a half-laugh. You're stubborn. Maybe. I'm not hungry. He nodded. Okay. Maybe you should lie down again? At least he'd ask this time. That was fast progress. How? About a compromise. Have you eaten? No. Why don't you grab some food for yourself, and I'll lie on the couch while you eat it. 
in between, you can tell me all about why you decided to finally be my friend. He blinked and gave her a smile she'd only seen once so far. It was like that smile hooked her heart and reeled her all the way in. You're cute. How about this? I'll eat while I watch sports on low and you rest. You can save the friendly heart-to-hearts for Brady. Scrunching her, brass together hurt. I'm not sure if you're being insulting or charming. Though the idea of lying on the couch with Wyatt by her side, doing something so simple, so routine, and couple-like, spread warmth from her stomach all the way through her body. He picked up the bag and came back to her, nudging her so she turned and headed toward the couch. Charming. Some people miss that, but not you. Maybe you should be the detective. She settled on the couch, and he grabbed the blanket from the back of it and put it over her. And you should be a comedian, she said around a yawn. Her mind flashed back to the last time she'd sprawled out on a couch with a man, and the memory made her heart pinch. This wasn't the same thing. Why it was different. More importantly, Shay was different. And the fact that he hadn't even responded to a kiss that made her skin tingle, other than to back away, said there was no need to be concerned anyway. Just two pals, hanging out. Completely heartbreak-free, territory. His hand rested on her shoulder for a moment longer than necessary, and she felt the heat of his touch even through the fabric of her shirt. You ever been to Fenway? Maybe we could go this weekend. Not for a game, but you should see the stadium for sure. Lying down made her immediately sleepy. Not this weekend. I have to work. Events both days. He scoffed. Shay. You have a concussion. You can't work. Though her eyelids ached to close, she met his stare. Your sister hired me, to do the baby shower at her hotel on Sunday. There's not a chance I'm turning it down. And I have an author event on Saturday. I'm not being stubborn. I need to do this. If I rest now, I should be okay to shop for what I need tomorrow afternoon. Shay. There was a faint growl in his tone. It took too much energy to argue with him, but there was no room for compromise on this one. She went up on her elbow. Wyatt. I'm not screwing this up. I'm not letting a headache keep me from what could be a really great opportunity. He stood, and she was forced to look up at him, so she let her arm relax. He was giving her a stare he probably used on criminals, but she was too tired, and needed the work too badly, to be bothered. Where do you have to shop? I'll read your sister's email and double-check the information, but I'll probably hit target for a lot of the decorations and such. I'll have to talk with the caterer I'm using for the author party and see if she'd be able to fit this in. She yawned again, her eyes fluttering closed. He cursed and she opened her eyes again. What? I hate shopping, he said, his voice accusing. No one invited you. Yeah, well, you don't have a car and I do. So you need me. She smiled, letting her eyes close again. You must be hard, pressed for buddies if you're willing to shop with me. He laughed and in her mind she could see him shaking his head. Let's just say no one's beating down my door to make me their BFF. She wouldn't admit it, but shopping with Wyatt, eating with him, or just watching television with him sounded delightful. Despite the way his touch and his gaze stirred everything inside her, she didn't have many friends of her own. The one she'd been close to had looked the other way when they'd known the truth she'd taken too long to discover. She'd take Wyatt's up front, bold attitude over half-truths and empty gestures any day. She heard the slur in her own voice as she rolled to her side. Eat your food, Wyatt. As she drifted back into a cloudy sleep, she felt him sit beside her and pull her legs up over his lap and heard him switch on the TV, keeping the volume low. He wouldn't admit it or believe her if she told him, but he was actually quite good at the friend thing. It would be up to her not to mess that up. Chapter 9 The television was on low, but Wyatt wasn't seeing anything. The weight of Shay's feet on his thighs, the little sighs she made as she drifted deeper into sleep, and the homey scent of vanilla that hung in the air were distracting him. Not even 24 hours ago, he'd been telling himself not to take this road, but he didn't know how to stay away. She pulled at him in a way no one ever had. Could he actually be friends with her? He had a feeling doing so would save him money, there would be a lot of cold showers in his future. She was special. He didn't know why yet, but he couldn't walk away without figuring it out. He managed to face down dealers and thieves, but the thought of opening himself up to this woman scared the hell out of him. 
Keeping her at arm's length scared him more. Shay shifted and Wyatt used her movement to ease himself out from under her legs. Picking up the plate he'd used for the sushi he'd brought, he stared down at her for a moment. He didn't even know her that well yet, but Abigail had been right when they'd seen Shay in the store the other day. He was sunk. If he could keep things platonic, he wouldn't sink her with him. Abigail had teased him relentlessly during the rest of her shopping spree, he had not bought her that godforsaken dress. But before he'd dropped her off, she'd gone all serious on him. We miss you, Wyatt. Not just physically, but emotionally. I know undercover was hard, but you're not there. Anymore. That girl made your eyes dance. I miss that too. Wyatt shook his head and took his plate to the kitchen. Shay made more than his eyes dance. After putting the plate in the dishwasher and tidying up the counter, which seemed easier to do in someone else's place than his own, he pulled his phone out and checked his messages. He wanted very badly to pull strings and get to the bottom of who hurt Shay. He hated the thought that someone was able to. But who? Someone who had access to the building. One of their own tenants? And why? She was brand new. All he'd seen her do so far was spread smiles and happiness. Well, except for when he pissed her off. He needed to see the storage room for himself. Checking on her one more time, he leaned down and brushed her baby soft hair off her cheek. Jesus. Even when she was sleeping, she had white picket fence engraved on her forehead. He was no one's dream come true and was man enough to admit it. That didn't stop him from wishing. Things were different. With her key in his pocket, he headed down to the common storage area. He rarely took days off, but there was no way he was going in tomorrow. Apparently, he thought in disgust, I'm going shopping. Again. He must have a thing for her to have insisted on that plan. There was no way she was going alone. He'd already booked the next day off, because he felt oddly compelled to take care of her, though he knew she'd balk at the idea of it. If he framed his desire to help in the right way, she was. Receptive, but if he insisted, she was like a cat in water. He liked that about her, he realized as he waited for the elevator. She had a backbone and wanted to fend for herself. He admired both qualities. The elevator doors slid apart, and Wyatt nearly charged into the only other woman who had gotten under his skin in the last year, albeit in an entirely different way. Hey! Gabriella said, with far more cheer than he should inspire in anyone. In her arms, she held two cardboard packing boxes. Stepping into the elevator, he gave a small smile. She had more energy than a junkie looking to score, only hers was genuine. And charming. What was it with sweet women? They remind you the world isn't complete shit. Hey. What's in the boxes? He knew if he didn't make conversation, she'd just fill in the silence with chatter. It shouldn't amuse him, but it did. Maybe his time undercover was wearing off after all. Everything Christmassy at the mall was 75% off. I could have stocked up for next year. If you need anything, now's the time to go. He raised an eyebrow. I'm good, thanks. You putting those things in storage? The elevator doors slid open on the basement floor. Yes. Owen and I have combined our apartments completely, and I'm still trying to sell a few things. Until I do, we need the space. They walked down the hallway, and he wondered if anyone else knew about Shay. Surely Gabby's fiancé would have accompanied her downstairs had he known. He put a hand on her arm to stop her. You've heard about the new tenant? Shay. Gabby glanced at his hand on her arm, amusement etched in the lines around her eyes. I heard someone took over Jake's apartment, and Brady says she's really nice. What's wrong? Wyatt didn't want to alarm her or anyone else, but whoever hurt Shay could hurt someone else. He explained what happened, leaving out the details of how his stomach clenched like a vice at the retelling. Gabby's mouth hung open slightly, her eyes wide. Why he expected her to head back upstairs, maybe pass him the boxes to store for her, and retreat, he didn't know. Because he wasn't one bit surprised when she shook her head, straightened her shoulders, and said, let me put these away, and I'll come back up with you to introduce myself and see if she needs anything. With a long sigh, Wyatt started walking and Gabby kept his pace. She doesn't need to be checked on right now, but she'd like to meet you. And though there was actually no pressure being put on him, he gave another sigh and elaborated. She's an event planner, and I mentioned your engagement party thing. She's just starting up so her prices are good. Surprisingly, Gabby was quiet when they approached the door. 
He looked over his shoulder at her and noted she had an odd look on her face. He ignored it for now. Unease ran up his spine. How had someone gotten down here? Had Brady said how he found her? He'd have to ask about that. Wyatt pushed the door open, hit the light switch, but didn't enter. It was a massive, open room filled with shelves labeled with apartment numbers. He wouldn't keep his stuff down here, not that he had much. But doing so invited people into each other's lives. No thanks. Gabriella leaned on the door jam, shifting the boxes in her arms. You scared to go, in? Towering over her, Wyatt tried to scowl. There were only two women who made that difficult. At least this one didn't tempt him. He wouldn't wreck Gabby's kind heart because she didn't appeal to him that way. Not to mention she had a fiancé. No. Gabby was like a little sister. An annoying, but somehow cute, little sister. Her easy acceptance of his personality, and the fact that she was no more intimidated by him than she would be a puppy, reminded him too much of Abigail. Wyatt Archton, eyebrow. What if I do have mafia ties? Gabby's face paled and she opened her mouth, only to shut it again. Then, as though he wasn't almost a foot taller than her and intimidating to most convicts, she nudged him with her hip. Nah, I never thought you did. Brady told us you're a cop. That suits you more. Owen and Brady really thought you were though. Connected, I mean. Wyatt shook his head, exasperated and thrown off track. You talk too much. Gabby beamed and then laughed. Wyatt walked. Into the room, taking his time as he tried to spot something that the officers could have missed. What were the chances that this would happen again and be a different person? But Jake had moved out. Wyatt had made sure the idiot knew he wasn't welcome. He hadn't followed up on where Jake had gone, but maybe it was time to do that, but later. He wanted to get back to Shay. Gripping the back of his neck with one hand, Wyatt sighed. There's nothing. Whoever came down here was looking for. Something specific. Shay got in the way somehow. Do you think it was someone in the building? We know almost everyone else, Gabby said, her heart in her eyes. He didn't want her to worry and realizing that, he knew he was starting to care. He hadn't meant to, but apparently his rusty heart had a mind of its own. Pretty soon, he'd be back to showing up for family dinners and feeling human again. Maybe that wasn't such a bad thing. It might just be someone messing around. Don't spend time worrying about it. I'm going to look into a few things. She put her boxes away and then joined him in the hall. They needed a security camera down here. Even something inexpensive would be better than nothing. They also needed a setup outside of the building to monitor who came in and out. We should call a tenants meeting. We need everyone on the same page. What page is that? She pressed the button for the elevator. The one. That says we all keep an eye out, have each other's backs, and don't come down to the storage unit alone. He gave her a menacing stare. She patted his arm and stepped into the car. Message received. There was one more thing he needed to do. Shay was so hellbent on success, he wondered if part of the reason was because if she didn't succeed at this, she'd have to go back to where she'd come from. And until he figured out what all of these feelings rioting inside of him were, he didn't want that. Swallowing down his hesitation, he waited until the doors slid closed and they were heading up to her floor. So maybe when you come meet Shay, not tonight because she's resting, but when you do, you could give her a chance on the whole party thing. My sister hired her as well. There. It didn't mean anything, but it made the back of his neck too warm. One pal helping out another. He rubbed at it, avoiding Gabriella's gaze. The elevator lurched to a stop and Wyatt's head snapped up. Gabby's hand hovered over the emergency stop button. What the hell? Wyatt's body tensed. You like her, Gabby said, a Cheshire cat grin spreading from ear to ear. Wyatt nearly growled. Are you kidding me? Hands on hips, he gaped at her, but she just continued to smile. This was why he didn't get involved. Friends. Neighbors. Even his family. Once he opened up in any way, everyone wanted into his business. People were crazy. Even when they seemed normal and cute. She pointed at him. You, do. When you say her name your eyes soften, and your voice gets a little breathy, Gabby said, leaning near the wall so he couldn't press the button again without nudging her aside. You know I own a gun, right? 
Gabby laughed, and despite the fact that irritation was pumping through every cell of his body, his lips quirked. You don't scare me, Wyatt. In fact, I think you're more scared of me than I am of you. Oh yeah? It must be your half-pint size. You're real scary. Press the damn button, Gabriella. Forget I said anything about Shay. He kept his eyes purposefully wide so she didn't make up some more romantic crap about the way he said her name. Gabby pursed her lips. I really think I could use some professional guidance for the party. Especially if it won't break the bank. It sounds like Shay could stand to meet some of the women in the building. Like me. Someone she could confide in and lean on. She was goading him. But he wouldn't fall for it. Fine. So hire her. Press the button or I'm going to pick you up and move you. Okay. I'll talk to her. He tried not to show any happiness about Shay possibly getting another job. Why the hell did his heart pinch when he thought about her? He scowled at Gabby. Not so hard to do after all. Great. Do that. He stepped closer. I have kind of favor to ask, she said. If not for the sudden flash of nerves in her eyes, Wyatt would have moved. Her aside. The confident, pain in the ass Gabby was gone. She looked down and Wyatt sighed. Maybe he should go back undercover. He was getting soft. What do you need? Gabby's head popped up, and she smiled. My show is next weekend. Owen's parents are going to come with his sister. And his aunt, actually. I, well, Brady's coming. But, you know, I spend so much time wrapped up in my art or Owen, so I'm not really great at making friends. Not that I don't have friends. I do. I can make them. Wyatt scrubbed his hands over his face, then met her gaze. You're asking me to come to some fancy art show? Do I look like I go to art shows? Even though she squared her shoulders, he saw the hurt in her frown and the way her eyes dimmed. No. Of course not. I never mind. It was a stupid idea. I just thought that maybe you might want to. It was a dumb suggestion. She pressed the small red button and the elevator gave a jolt, resuming its ascent. When the elevator doors slid open on her, Floor, Wyatt grabbed her arm just before she stepped off. When is it? Gabby's tone was clipped. A week from this Saturday. But you don't have to. I don't know why I asked. I'm sorry. I'll introduce myself to Shay. They stared at each other and Wyatt knew even before he said anything that he was going to give in. For whatever reason, Gabby wanted him there and for an even stranger reason, what she wanted mattered to him. People like Shay and Gabby were beacons of hope, and apparently, Wyatt was a worn-out ship at sea, drawn in by the need to know the world wasn't as horrible as he'd led himself to believe. A door opened and shut during their staring contest. Owen came to stand by Gabby, his gaze focused on Wyatt's hand on Gabriella's arm. You want to take your hand off my fiancé? His tone was amiable, laid back, but his eyes glinted behind his black-rimmed frames. Wyatt could take him down in less than 45 seconds, but admired the man's protective stance. He dropped his hand and pressed it to the opening so the door didn't close. Gabby stepped toward Owen. She rubbed her hand over his chest and burrowed into him even as Owen's arm came around her. Easy, babe. Everything is good. Wyatt was just telling me about our new neighbor. Shay. Owen's posture stiffened. Brady just updated me on what happened. Wyatt had only chatted with him a couple of times. Add instinct to that and Wyatt would say he was a decent guy. Gabby was over the moon for him. I'm going to ask Brady to talk to the tenants. Everyone needs to be more aware and maybe keep their stuff out of that room. Owen nodded, hesitating for a moment like he was making a decision, and then replied. Brady was talking to the owner's daughter, Mia. She'll be here soon. She's settling up some things and then we'll be having a tenants meeting and discussing new security measures. I'm not sure if he told her about this, but I would think he'll have to, Owen said. Then surprisingly, Owen laughed and looked down at Gabby. Though, I don't think he wants to call her again. Every time he says her name it's like a swear word. Hum interesting, Gabby said with a smile. It didn't sound that interesting to Wyatt. The elevator door pressed against Wyatt's hand. I'll know something before then. I'm not waiting to look into who hurt Shay, he said. Owen's eyebrows arched upward. Oh. Interesting. Before Wyatt could snap at him that it wasn't interesting, it was his job. Owen held up a hand in retreat. I mean, 
just that you're going to look into it. That's good. Is she okay? She'll be fine. I need to go. Gabby didn't say anything, but she was staring at him, and it made the back of his neck too hot. Sighing he added, I'll bring her next week. To your thing. Her eyes went big, and he knew, he just knew, she was holding back a girlish squeal. Jesus. This was worse than being at home with his mother, and his actual sister hounding him. Okay. That sounds. Great, Gabby said, nearly vibrating with the effort to maintain her composure. Owen looked down at Gabby with so much affection Wyatt's breath caught. Did he want that? With anyone? Could he even have that? Unlikely. Owen kissed the crown of her head. She's an event planner, Gabby said, looking up at Owen. Wyatt needed to go. He needed to be anywhere else. Anyway, I'll see you then. Keep an eye out, and stay safe, Wyatt said, shoving his hand in his pocket. He couldn't watch them stare. Into each other's eyes any longer. He caught Owen's frown and Gabby's wave as the doors slid shut. Leaning his head against the wall, Wyatt cursed himself. He was getting pulled in. By Shay. By Gabby. He even kind of liked Brady and Owen. Shit. The need to see Shay, to make sure she was okay clawed at his gut, and he'd only been away from her for twenty minutes. Wyatt had seen guys try to rebuild their lives after being UC. They'd drown themselves in alcohol, or drugs or even working out too, the point of obsession. There were others though, who managed to escape unscathed. What was the difference between the two paths? This one felt like a different kind of drowning, and what if he couldn't stop himself from bringing people he cared about with him? When he let himself back into Shay's apartment, he felt a restlessness consume him. He didn't like it. He stared down at the water fountain in the courtyard while Shay slept. In the glass, he saw his faint reflection, like it was a silhouette of a real person. Maybe it was Shay or maybe it was time, but he had an overwhelming urge to be solid again. The time undercover had been hard. He'd been cut off from everyone except drug dealers, pimps, and other criminals. He'd managed to get into the inner circle of Benny DeMarco, who had a fondness for beating on women and providing drugs to the underage crowd. Wyatt had to restrain himself every time he was in the man's presence. There were times that he'd been physically ill after watching Benny slap a woman around or close a drug deal that Wyatt just knew would end up with the user dead. Bigger picture. That's what his superior had said every time Wyatt called in. The bigger picture was getting charges laid on Benny that couldn't, and, wouldn't, be dropped. Maybe if Wyatt hadn't gone stupid with lust over Benny's sister, he would have saved more people. He would have done his goddamn job. He wouldn't have failed. When he turned away from the window, once again disgusted with himself, Shay was watching him. Everything else fell away. She pulled him in with her eyes, like an invisible hand guiding him closer. He sat down at the end of the couch. Are you okay? Wyatt huffed out a small laugh. I'm fine. How are you? He, clasped his hands together and let them hang between his knees. Anything to avoid touching her. Touching her was magic. Just having his fingertips graze the gentle skin on the nape of her neck earlier had made all the darkness inside him vanish. He wasn't sure he'd ever wanted anything quite as badly as he'd wanted to kiss her in that moment. Thank God for restraint. She would definitely test it. She sighed, like she was still pulling herself out of a dream. MMM. I'm fine. Are you still, tired? Opening her eyes, she nodded. It's silly, really. I've done nothing but sleep for hours. Standing, Wyatt helped her into a sitting position. You should lay low. Not do anything strenuous. One side of her mouth tipped up. Yes, Doc. I need to borrow your computer. Is that okay? Sure. I'm going to shower, she said, standing up. She waved off his hand when he attempted to steady her. You shouldn't shower alone. The air froze between them, which was strange since why it was. Suddenly so hot he couldn't breathe right. Her smile started on one side and then took over her face. Her hair was sticking up at odd angles, and her clothes were rumpled from lying in them. Still, she was the sexiest thing he'd ever seen. Are you offering? He nearly swallowed his tongue. That had to be what was lodged in his throat, blocking coherent words from escaping. In a garbled tone, he began muttering. I, uh, work. I need your computer. You shower. Leave the door unlocked. 
I you. Just be careful and call out if you need me. Her laughter was like fire. Mesmerizing as it danced over his skin, heating every inch of him. Another time then. She walked away with measured steps and all Wyatt could think was, hell yes. Fortunately, he managed to keep the words tucked inside, but that didn't stop the thoughts from bouncing around in his head as he logged onto the department database and began to look around. Dot. Chapter 10 A week ago, she couldn't have seen herself sitting in the passenger seat of Wyatt Daniels's car as he drove them to Baby Emporium. She hadn't actually told him the name of the store because it did not seem like a place he'd willingly drive to. Her stomach still spun like a ballerina when she thought about him telling her he wanted to be by her side all day. He'd taken off work, and she doubted it was. Something he did often. He could say it was because they were giving the friend thing a try, but that didn't stop her brain from feeling like it was an overloaded circuit board of emotions. When her phone chimed, she reached into her purse and pulled it out. Pressing her lips together, she made a split-second decision and tapped to Klein. Wyatt gave her a quick glance as he switched lanes. Avoiding phone calls? She leaned her head back against the seat. His car smelled like his cologne. She hoped the scent stayed on her clothes later. Don't feel like talking on the phone. Annoying ex? He glanced at her again. Shay turned her head, which didn't hurt nearly as much as it had yesterday, and grinned. Is that your way of asking me about my exes? Wyatt turned down Pointer Street, Shay was trying to remember areas and places so she could navigate Boston on her own. That's how this works, right? We tell each other all our juicy secrets. Shay's mouth dropped open. I don't know what I'm more intrigued by, your strange view of friendship or your juicy secrets. Wyatt glanced at her, giving a quick, heart-stopping grin. You try painting my nails and I'm out. A giddiness swelled in Shay's chest. If not for the heightened sense of awareness she felt in his presence, he actually would make a great friend. How about your hair? Can I do that? His response was not very pleasant, but it made Shay laugh nonetheless. Which made her head hurt. She pressed her hand to it, which, of course, he noticed. When Wyatt pulled into the parking lot of the store, he found a spot immediately. Shay started to gather her things, but he put a hand on hers. Look at me. When she did, she tried hard to press down the want that surged through her when he looked at her in just that way, like she was all that he could see. You sure you're up for this? Shay narrowed her eyes. No want for him, just checking on her because he was protective by nature. I'm fine. She got out of the car and started walking, but his long stride made it easy for him to catch up. He grabbed her arm when she didn't slow down. Facing him, she kept her face neutral. The hint of a smile played on his lips, and she wanted, in equal measure, to quash it and bring it out. Are you mad because I was concerned about you? No. She sounded like a pouty child. You are. I don't need your overprotective hovering, she told him. It was hard to focus when she could feel every one of his fingertips digging into her flesh. Not in a rough way, just in a way that made her imagine them elsewhere, without the restriction of clothing. No. 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 Those aren't friend thoughts. I don't hover, he said, finally letting go of her arm. They walked side by side. It seemed unfair that she was rattled, and he was at ease. So, juicy secrets. Tell me one. His quick smile surprised her. Uh. You get to tell me first. But it doesn't have to be this minute. There's no rush to talk. There is, however, a need to hurry up this shopping trip. I think the number of stuffed animals and onesies in that store are going to give me a concussion. He bumped her with his hip as they walked through the double sliding doors of the Emporium. She grabbed a cart when they got into the store. Wyatt groaned. Really? You need a cart? Not really. Just have it, I guess. I'm only looking for party favors and decorations. I promise it'll be painless. Hey, how do you know what a onesie is? They walked down the center aisle of the massive store. He'd been right, there were stuffed animals everywhere. Hanging from the ceiling, in mesh tubs, and along shelves. Wyatt sidestepped a toddler racing around with a tiny broom. I have a nephew. This is actually where I bought him his Star Wars Lego set last year for Christmas. Jonah? Wyatt looked at her and arched a perfect eyebrow. How'd you know that? Because your sister said his teacher was hot. He scowled and followed her.
when she turned down the aisle for baby bottles. She was going to fill them with different colored candies and put them on the food table. Abigail should not be saying his teacher is hot. Because she's married? Wyatt stood by the cart while she looked for the most bottles at the best price. Abigail had emailed and said there would be about 50 people at the event. She's divorced. Guy was a creep. Cheated on her more than once and threatened to sue me when I helped him move out of her. House. Shay looked up from the price tags and stared. Helped how? He shrugged. I carried him out and told him his stuff would be on the lawn shortly. Abigail wasn't too impressed, but what was I supposed to do? Let him stomp all over her heart? More than he already had? Laughter bubbled up in her chest. It wasn't funny, it was actually quite sad that Abigail had endured that, but she could see that Wyatt didn't feel like he was in the wrong. His protective gene ran wide and deep. She didn't want to think about that right now, because the similarity to her own brothers was troublesome. It was interesting to see it from a different brother's perspective. The truth was, if someone hurt her siblings, she'd be irate as well. Was she too hard on them for wanting the best for her? Unlike her brothers though, Wyatt actually thought she was capable of taking care of herself. It's strange he didn't appreciate that, she said, putting the bottles in the cart. I know. It's not my fault he tripped over my foot and fell into the mud in his thousand-dollar suit. Who buys a thousand-dollar suit anyway? Now she did laugh. Maybe he was more like her brothers than she wanted to believe, but his heart had been in the right place. So maybe there's are too. No one, I know. Though one of my brothers paid 400 once. He's in real estate and said he had to look like he could buy any house he sold. Wyatt pushed the cart out of the aisle while Shay read the signs. I'm sorry about your sister. Being cheated on is hard on the self-esteem, even when you know the other person was wrong. Two kids argued over who was a better superhero as Wyatt and Shay walked by. You know this from personal experience? Her stomach cramped. She wanted to do this, but she didn't know if she was ready to talk about it. Would Wyatt see her as clueless for not realizing what had been right in front of her? When she told her mother, her first words were, Oh, honey. How could you not know? But she hadn't had any idea her professor was married. It was a line she'd never willingly cross. Shay. Wyatt stopped the cart on the side of the wide passageway. Yes. Though, technically, no. He tilted his head as he gazed down at her and put a hand on her arm. Well, that makes perfect sense. Like ripping off a band aid. He was one of my professors. I don't even have to tell you the story because it's so cliche, everyone already knows it. She looked down at her feet. Wyatt tipped her chin up with his hand. Tell me anyway. Looking around, she wished there were kids nearby, it was a toy store for goodness sake, but they'd stopped near the baby toiletry shelves, and apparently, no one needed anything there just now. I just did. He was an instructor in a course I took. I never finished it. He said he was divorced and predictably, I believed him. Even now, the fact that she had sickened her. She started to walk, and Wyatt must have known she needed to because he did the same. When they reached the decorations, Shay put a hand on the cart to turn it in that direction. Of course, no little ears in that section either. Shay sighed and then met Wyatt's patient stare. His eyes held hers and she realized there was no judgment in them. The worst part is that after I found out, he said we could still see each other. That since I knew, there was no reason to stop. We just have to be careful. Wyatt's tone was calm, but Shay didn't miss the way his knuckles lost color as he gripped the bar of the cart. How old were you? 22. Old enough to know better. Because she didn't feel like talking about it. Anymore, she started looking at some of the napkins and colorful paper plates. Wyatt's hands came to her shoulders and squeezed. It was an innocent gesture, one meant to offer support. It did that, but it also sent sparks flying from the point of contact all the way through her body. Trusting someone doesn't make you the guilty party. She shrugged, which dislodged his hands. Bet you wouldn't have been taken for a fool. You'd be surprised, he said in a low, intimate voice that whispered, over her body like a gentle touch. She shivered and turned to face him. They stood almost toe to toe, and the memory of his lips touching hers made her mouth tingle. Like he knew what she was thinking, his eyes focused on her lips as she asked, oh yeah? Two people walked into the aisle, one of them a staff member. Here we go. Just so you know, anything with a blue sticker is on sale, the teenaged employee said. 
Wyatt went back to the cart. Perfect. Now there was an audience. Shay grabbed. Cutlery, paper plates and napkins, wondering if she should have gone to a dollar store instead, but the prices at the Emporium were pretty comparable. How much longer do we have to be here? Shay smiled. I just need to find tiny plastic babies. The cart stopped. I'm sorry. What? Her smile turned into a full-on grin. Plastic babies. It's for one of the games. You freeze them in ice and then when the ice melts, it's like the water has broken. Whoever has their water break first wins. Wyatt's face scrunched up, making Shay laugh. That's just weird. That's what you do with those things. Submerge tiny toys in ice for kicks? She pulled at the cart, still laughing. I found the idea on Pinterest. It looked fun. On what? Looking over her shoulder, she saw he was serious. You don't know what Pinterest is? Do you live in the Dark Ages? It's an online bulletin board. People have these wicked ideas and you just pin them, well, save them now, but you can create all these boards. And then you have ideas for everything. Like, every single thing. Dinner parties, recipes, home improvement. It's awesome. I'll take your word for it. I guess I prefer the medieval cork board. Shea poked his shoulder, enjoying her tasks all the more with him there. You are older, so maybe that makes sense. Wyatt shook his head, his expression once again unreadable. Low blow. They found the plastic babies, which Wyatt claimed were frightening. Shea thought they were cute. As Shea checked her list, Wyatt put a hand to Shea's back. Please say we're almost done here? She nodded, and they headed for the checkout. As they waited in line, Wyatt glanced at his phone and texted. Shea tried not to be nosy, but she wondered who he was texting. None of your business. He looked up to find her watching him. Sorry. Work. Do you mind if I swing by the station? I need to pick. Something up. Of course not. He smiled distractedly, and even though the logical part of her understood, she couldn't help but feel like the tone of day had just shifted. She waited in the car for Wyatt while he ran into the station. She checked her own messages and emails. With the job she'd booked, she'd been able to upgrade her data plan. Without listening to her mom's message, she dialed the number she knew by heart. Her mom answered on the first ring. It's been forever, Shay, mom said. Or barely two weeks. It hasn't, mom. I've been busy. I'm sorry. I miss you. How are things in Boston? Is the apartment nice, or did it end up being a dive? They can put any picture they want on the internet, but that doesn't mean it's what you're going to get. It's beautiful, mom. Shay's head was starting to hurt, and she hoped she wasn't overdoing it. She really wanted to spend the rest of the day and evening with Wyatt. If it had to be his two neighbors getting to know each other, she'd take it. There was something about him, maybe his reluctance to see his own good, that made Shay want to know him better. Is it safe? Is there a doorman? Simon said he's coming for a visit. It'll make me feel better to know he's checked it out. Of course. Because Shay couldn't possibly judge for herself whether or not the building was safe. She bit her lip, realizing the irony. She was nursing a headache from being attacked. She almost mentioned Brady because she knew it would put her mother's mind at ease. They'd love to know she'd met a sweet guy who also made sure locks got changed in a timely manner. For reasons she didn't want to examine too closely right now, she didn't say anything about him. He's coming for his reading break. I'll FaceTime you and show you around, but I'm not home right now. Your father is getting an award next week for excellence in teaching. As an esteemed professor, it wasn't the first award her father had gotten. That's wonderful. There's a dinner being held by the Chancellor. He'd like you to attend. Gil tugged, but Shay was determined to stay strong. There'd be more awards. She could take this time to get herself organized and solidly planted before she saw her parents. If she went home now, they'd find a way to make her stay. Between the hit on the head, the costs of moving, and a too sexy for his own good neighbor, home seemed almost easier. But she didn't want easy. I can't. I'm sorry. She hated that her parents and her brothers always kept things from her, and it was hypocritical to do the same. I'm planning events, Mom. I've organized an author's book release at the library this Saturday, and I have a baby shower I'm organizing at a posh hotel for Sunday. 
I have meetings with two new clients next week for other events. Papers rustled as her mom let out a sigh. I don't understand. Why are you planning all of those things? You're a secretary at the university. You're not letting people take advantage of you, are you, honey? You just have one of those faces. People think they can get you to do anything. I do not have one of those faces. I have a perfectly normal, you can't take advantage of me face, she said. I don't have the office job, mom. I really love what I'm doing. I didn't want to tell you because you guys would have gone crazy over my coming to Boston without secure employment. But I think I'm going to succeed at this. It turns out, people are willing to pay good money for someone else to arrange the details they don't want to deal with. That's hardly a surprise. The willingness to pay for help, that is. Not everyone has party planning in their genes. You can thank me for that, mom said, her laughter floating through the phone. Shay's heart pinched. She missed them. But she couldn't figure out who she was really meant to be with her family hovering, picking up her pieces as she went. It was time to put herself back together. On her own. At least if she did something gullible or naive, she wouldn't have an audience this time. Her parents never made her feel bad for jumping from one thing to another, but they never expected her to stick to anything either. You have a background in marketing and a great eye for making a space come together, honey. You know, I have a friend at the Boston Museum. I could call her, ask her to contact you. Her heart pounded with the desire to jump on the offer. How about I take her name and I contact her myself? Compromise. Life was about compromising. And not falling flat on your face too many times in front of the same people. Even if they loved you. Oh. Are you sure? I'd be happy to do it. I can do it myself. The more she said it, the more Shay believed she actually could. Shay saw Wyatt coming out of the slate gray concrete building, a file in his hand, and a dar look on his handsome face. Mom, I've got to go. Love you. She disconnected, with her mom as he slid into the car. He put the file in the back seat then looked her over. How are you feeling? Good. A bit tired, but that's it. Maybe we should call it a day? I actually have something that I need to look into a little deeper. There was nothing wrong with him having to do his job. But still, her stomach tightened. What is it? Work. But I don't discuss my work. There it was again, that lukewarm shoulder. It was like he had a protective outer shell and she'd poked a few holes in it, but he was still tucked inside where she couldn't fully reach him. All the more reason for keeping things platonic between them. She needed to be with someone open, trusting, giving. Like Brady? She didn't want to think about her other neighbor right now. She straightened in the passenger seat. Right. None of my business. He sighed and that just irritated her more. Shay. I'm sorry. I can't discuss the details of cases with anyone. Even a woman I'd rather spend the day with than chasing down leads. She crossed her arms over her chest and looked out the window. A boy on a skateboard whipped around an older couple walking hand in hand. Wyatt's admission was his way of giving. She might not know him well yet, but she knew he didn't share his feelings without struggling not to. She couldn't look at him as she poked her toe across their line in the friendship sand. Are there a lot of these women? Wyatt's chuckle was low, and she felt him lean closer. There's only one. Trust me on that. I promise you can trust me on that. She turned to face him and swallowed the lump in her throat. What does that mean? Does he feel something more between us? I can do the rest of the errands myself. I'll catch the bus home. His eyes widened. I'll drive you. It's only Wednesday. You can finish getting what you need tomorrow. You should rest. I feel fine, and I don't want to leave everything to the last minute. I didn't ask you to come with me. You insisted. Just because your plans have changed doesn't mean mine have to. He closed his eyes like he was counting to ten. Opening them, he reached out and took her hand. I'm sorry I have to do this. I don't want you to be out on your own right now. I don't know who hurt you, and I have a lead I want to check out. It was really hard to keep him firmly in the friend box when he touched her. She thought about what he said. You don't think it was someone from the building? He shook his head. I don't think so. Which means that whoever did it got in somehow. I don't know if they were looking for you or if it was random. 
and I really do want to spend the day with you, but this happens sometimes. I'll get called in on a case or need to be somewhere in the middle of something. It's my job. I need you to understand that. She nodded and gripped her purse strap. I do. And I appreciate you looking out for me. Go do what you have to do, and I'll see you later. His eyes widened. What do you mean you'll see me later? I'll drive you home. She leaned in and spoke with a tone far breezier than she felt. If I need to be understanding about your job, you need to do the same for me. The worry in his eyes made her stomach somersault. A look like that suggested he really cared. She wanted that to be true, so she gave in. Compromise. How about I promise you that if I don't feel well, I'll save the rest for tomorrow. I don't have much, but the baker I need to talk to isn't far from here, and I wanted to see her in person. Deal? Not that it's his choice. His lips pursed in an adorable almost pout. You won't push it if you don't feel well, and you'll call me if you don't think. You're okay to take the bus home. How about that? Fine. He smiled, slow and warm, like a good hug. Fine. How about you text me when you get home? So you'll know I managed to get there on my own? Her frustration must have come through in her tone because Wyatt merely smiled and ran a hand over her hair. But also because friends text each other, and it will make me smile. Shay laughed. Low blow. He winked at her and the air went still between them. It was a kiss goodbye type of moment and Shay wanted to more than she should. Which was why she all but sprang from the car. On the sidewalk, she took a deep breath of unwiet scented air. It didn't smell nearly as good, but it fogged her brain less and made her remember she'd come to Boston to make it on her own. Shay arrived home safely, made a few phone calls, and remembered to text Wyatt. She also returned Brady's text saying that, yes, she was okay. Tiny fragments of guilt settled in her stomach. She wasn't. Leading Brady on, at least not intentionally. Nothing had happened between them. They hadn't even shared a kiss. Shay couldn't help wondering, if they did, if the memory of it would stay on her lips the way Wyatt's did. By later that day, she'd accomplished quite a bit, but she was exhausted. Intending only to lie on the couch for a few minutes, she woke several hours later feeling disoriented and out of sorts. She checked her phone, which showed three new emails. One from the woman she'd spoken to at Boston Southside College. Cynthia Chambers had sent a message telling her she'd spoken to her boss, and they'd like to set up a meeting with Shay to discuss coordinating recruitment galas. She celebrated by pouring an extra large helping of cereal and ate at the kitchen counter. She was doing this. She was actually making this work. She should check in on her social media sites, but her eyes were gritty. Despite having slept through the evening, she was tired. Loading her dish into the washer, she shut off the lights and was headed for her bedroom when a knock made her switch directions. She looked down at her hot pink pajama bottoms that she'd paired with a tank top when she'd gotten home. I Love Naps was written across her breasts in a light pink font. Hardly sophisticated, but currently very true. She tried to pretend that when she opened the door, her heart didn't do a tap dance in her chest. He'd been home, obviously, as his hair was damp and he'd changed into a Boston PD sweater and a pair of loose track pants. The five o'clock shadow he'd been sporting was gone, leaving his strong jaw smooth. Her fingers itched to reach out and feel his skin. The scent of his aftershave drifted into her home, curling around her and spiking her heart rate. Maybe she couldn't be friends with him. Self-preservation made her brusque. It's kind of late, she said. Wyatt braced his hands against the door jamb, one on each side. The sweater stretched. Across his chest. Not surprisingly, he looked every bit as appealing as he did every other time she saw him. I wondered if you were going to answer. She ignored the heat that spread through her body as Wyatt's gaze traveled all the way down to her toes and back up to her eyes. Were you in bed? She shook her head. Their gazes stayed on each other, but neither moved. His eyes looked tired, and she wanted to ask him how chasing his lead had gone. Instead, he straightened to his full height, and stepped into her space, stealing her air. Reaching out a hand, he ran it along her hair, and her eyes instinctively closed. She managed to bite back the sigh though, so she figured she deserved bonus points for that. I'm sorry I had to bail today. I'd like to stay with you tonight. His voice was just above a whisper. Her heart broke into a full-on jig. Yeah. Unless he was going for friends with benefits, this was turning into a not very good idea. 
His heated gaze said he could guess her. Train of thought. That's not a great idea, she said. Probably not. What were they doing here? It was some weird version of chicken, and at the moment, neither of them were blinking. I don't need you to take care of me. Best to remind them both of that. I know, he said, his tone both serious and solemn. His hand stretched out, and his fingers caressed her cheek. Shay let her eyes drift closed while she breathed slowly through her nose. Taking a deep breath, she opened her eyes and stepped back. She didn't mean it as an invitation, but that's how he took it. He closed the door behind him and leaned against it. I told you I was going to be shit at this friend thing. Shay clasped her hands together to keep them from reaching out and stroking his body. They very much wanted to do that because they didn't understand, the way her brain did, that it would be a worse idea than him being here. You're actually very good at it. You're funny and kind. A bit overprotective, but I think that's got as much to do with your job as your nature, she said. Wyatt's lips pursed together like he was holding back a sarcastic retort. Thanks. I guess I meant I'm not very good at it with you. Her heart skittered to a stop. Oh. Had he come to tell her he didn't even want friendship? He clearly didn't want more, since he'd all but turned away from her when she kissed him. I can actually see. Your brain turning over a bunch of wrong ideas. Crossing her arms in front of her, as if that gesture could protect her heart, she continued to stare at him. He stepped closer. I don't want to be friends. Like a knife through a tire, his words slashed her heart. Fine. Another step. Shay took one backward as he warned, I'm no good for you. Her hands dropped to her sides. So you've said. Friends don't generally think about each other nonstop. How did he know she did that? Or did he mean him? I don't think about you that often. You've got a big ego. Another step forward for him and another back for her. His lips tipped up in amusement. I mean me. I'm not thinking of you like a friend. Shea paused mid-step. Oh? Just like an annoying neighbor? He smiled now. No. Not that either. They were standing in the hallway center. If she moved to the right, they'd end up in her living room. The left would lead them to her bedroom. She stood still. Then what? I'm not. Sure yet, but you should probably tell me to get lost. Shay's lips twitched. I don't want to, she admitted. This time, when he stepped forward, she didn't move. I don't want you to. The air between them was a heavy blanket of lust she wanted to crawl underneath. What are we doing, Wyatt? His eyes held her in place. Are you dating Brady? Surprise hit her fast. What? No. We're friends. Wyatt's nostrils flared slightly, and he gave a gruff sound of disbelief. Gesturing between them, he asked, friends like this? She was tired, and he was making her dizzy with his mood swings. She wanted him, but knew she shouldn't. There was nothing safe about him. And at the moment, he was slowly dialing up her frustration. Friends like what, Wyatt? The kind of friends who aren't really friends at all because one of them flips back and forth like an overcooked pancake. Wyatt's laughter didn't dampen her irritation. An overcooked pancake? Jesus. You're like a Disney cartoon. Shay gave a growl of frustration, threw up her hands, and walked away. Then you're the Disney villain. Still laughing, he grabbed her arm and pulled her around. She refused to be swayed by his sexy smile. That seems suitable. Stop fidgeting. Then let me go. Even as she said it, her body was relaxing into his. Being tucked snug against his body brought out too many sensations, and they were all slamming into her at once. I don't want to. I want to kiss you. Really kiss you. Not like the gyrated kiss you gave me yesterday. Warmth pooled in her stomach, and Shay stopped fidgeting. Her eyes fastened on his, and her breathing quickened. Are you complaining about my kiss? It's not like you put in much effort. Wyatt's eyes darkened so she could barely see the green in them. I was too busy putting my effort into not doing exactly what I wanted to. Shay let her hands rest on his chest. What did you want to do? This. Even as his grasp on her arms tightened, his head was lowering, and then his mouth was gently seducing her own, guiding her straight out of gyrated territory. Her hands slid up and around his neck, and is wrapped around her body, pulling her tight against him. She could feel their heartbeats bouncing off of one another. 
A low growl of pleasure hummed from the back of her throat, and Shay tried to get closer. Wyatt walked her backward to the left. Shay's heart scrambled as his tongue traced her lips. She moved her hands up and gave in to the desire to run her fingers through the dark brown strands. They were silk and he was fire, and Shay couldn't get enough. When they reached her room, he lifted his head and stared into her eyes. There was no denying the heat in them. It likely mirrored her own, which would also be impossible to deny. We need to slow down, he whispered, kissing the tip of her nose. Why? She didn't want to think with her brain. She wanted to feel. Why it made her feel, everything. She pulled her hands from his hair and ran them down his chest, over his stomach and up, under his shirt. The feel of his skin, smooth and hard, made her sigh. Wyatt shivered and she used the moment to go up on her tiptoes to kiss the underside of his jaw. She rubbed her nose along the column of his neck and wondered if she could just absorb herself into his skin. He smelled so good and tasted even better. When her tongue touched the spot where his neck and his shoulder met, his body twitched. He pulled her hands from under his shirt and arched away. Shay frowned at him. If you tell me you just want to be friends or neighbors right now, I might hurt you. The smile he gave her was different than the others. It was endearing. Sweet. Who knew her tough-talking neighbor had been hiding a sweet smile? He smoothed back her hair with both hands. I don't want you to hurt me. More than that, I don't want to hurt you. Panic that he'd leave, that he'd deny. There was something between them made her voice hoarse. What does that mean? It means there's no rush. Can I stay with you tonight? He was leaving it up to her. They wouldn't be crossing a line because all of the lines between them were blurred. Shay couldn't adequately describe what they were to each other, but with her whole heart, she believed whatever happened, wherever this led, it was worth the chance. She nodded. She crawled into the bed and watched as he tugged his sweater over his head. The sight of his chest was almost better than the feel of it. When his hands went to the waistband of his pants, they stilled and Shay's heart stopped with them. Shay, he said. His voice was amusement tinged with barely their restraint. She didn't look up. She didn't want to miss anything. Hum. He whipped the pants off and crawled in beside her, settling them so his arm was under her and her head rested on his chest. Her free hand wandered without permission until he used his to trap it against the heavy thudding of his heart. We're going to sleep, he said. Shay tilted her neck so she could look up at him. I'm not tired. His lips sought hers in a gentle kiss that had her sighing into his mouth and pressing into his body. When he pulled back, she started to complain. Wyatt put a finger to her lips, his eyes twinkling, which was nothing short of swoon-inducing. Sleep, baby. Just sleep. I want to lie beside you and have you fall asleep in my arms. His tone was different. Like he was uncertain of her response, like this tough guy cop could be vulnerable. Shay snuggled into him, content to take what he was offering, she had a feeling it wasn't something he gave freely, this little piece of himself. She'd been foolish to think she could simply stop the feelings that had been blossoming almost from the second she'd seen him. They didn't need to work out every little detail right this second. He was here because he wanted to be, and that was enough for now. In the morning, after he found out how badly she hogged the bed, they could talk and figure out where to go from here. Chapter 11 how could one tiny woman take up so much space? She didn't sleep on a bed. She conquered it like her goal was to touch every single inch of it at some point in the night. Even if he was on that inch. He looked down at her as she snuggled into him, her head in the crook of his arm. Never in his life had he asked a woman to let him spend the night so he could be close to her. When he'd shown up last night, he just wanted, needed to be with her in any way he could. She, rolled away from him and even in his somewhat blurry not quite awake state, he laughed that she was still moving. Reaching out, he wrapped his arm around her and pulled her back against his front. You're a tornado when you sleep, he said into her ear. She gave a sleepy giggle. Yeah. I didn't want to tell you. I should probably wear protective gear if I'm going to sleep here. Her fingers twined with his over her stomach. That's actually not a bad idea. Did I keep you awake? No, even with her moving, he'd slept better than he had in a long time. Though falling asleep with her lithe, sweet body squirming around hadn't been the easiest thing. Even now, her bottom snuggled farther into his groin, and his breath caught in his lungs. 
He was torturing himself, he knew, but fighting whatever it was that compelled him to be with her, be near her, was harder than facing it. I'm glad you stayed, she whispered. Me too. I wish I could stay longer, but I need to go into work. She rolled to face him, and he pressed a soft kiss to her forehead. I wish you didn't have to. It surprised him that he wished the same thing. Work had been his focus for so long, it felt strange to want something more. He didn't know what, at least to the point that he could verbalize it. But he knew Shay was unique and special. When he was with her, it was as though some of her innate goodness, the shine she couldn't hide, seeped into him. Are we done pretending we don't like each other? Her voice was whispered and playful, but the fact that she didn't meet his gaze told him she was unsure. He rolled so she was on her back and he was over her. When her fingers grazed his cheek, he turned his face to kiss them. Looking down at her, he memorized the gentle slope of her nose, the full shape of her lips, and those wide, gorgeous blue eyes that had opened his own. You're even worse at pretending than you are at lying, he teased. Maybe that's because I'm not a fan of. Either. Wyatt sucked in a breath. No more teasing. He didn't know where they were heading, but he wouldn't mess around with her heart. He kissed the tip of her nose. Me neither. I wasn't pretending. I was trying to keep my distance. She arched her neck, and he pressed small kisses along her skin which smelled like flowers. For my own good. And my own, he admitted, his tongue touching the pulse point in the hollow of her neck. Ha. Huh. Yeah, right. Like you have to keep up any defenses around me, she said. He met her gaze again and framed her face with his hands. Are you kidding? I've been tasered, stabbed, and punched in multiple places and not one of those things hurt the way knowing I'd hurt your feelings did. You make me want things I told myself I couldn't and shouldn't have. It scares the hell out of me. He saw the dampness in her eyes and wished he'd kept his mouth shut. Too much, too soon. He didn't know what to do with everything he felt inside because he'd never felt it before. He told himself it was just one person looking out for another, than just friendship, but it was more. He'd probably known it was right from the start. I don't understand why you don't feel like you deserve more. You're a good man, Wyatt. Why don't you believe that? If anyone could make him ponder the question, it would be her. But not right now. He pressed a quick kiss to her mouth. I have to go. I want to look into our previous building manager. You still think it's him? He was grateful she let the other topic go for now. No reason not to and until I know for sure, I want you to text me if you go out. Her body tensed. I'm a grown woman. Lowering his face to hers, he let his lips linger until the tension left her body and she sighed into him. You definitely are. But it'll make my day easier knowing that you're safe. She groaned. Well played. He chuckled and lifted himself off her, enjoying the way her eyes tracked his movement as he pulled on his pants and sweater. She went up on one elbow and continued to stare. Okay. I'll text you later. Just looking at her, her hair falling over her shoulders and her eyes barely awake, made him want to stay. He was feeling too much, too fast, but he'd already tried not to feel anything. And that hadn't worked out. Maybe this would. Good. Also, you might want to let Brady know there won't be any more cozy dinners for two. Or leftovers. She sat up and huffed out a breath. You stayed the night. You don't get to take charge of my life, bossy pants. Wyatt leaned over and cupped his hand around her neck. She tilted her chin to look at him. Irritation flickered in her gaze. I don't want to take charge of your life. Tell me you wouldn't mind if I grabbed a romantic dinner with a female friend tonight. If you can tell me that wouldn't bother you in the least, forget I said anything. Her lips went into a small pout and he wanted to kiss her. Instead, he waited. I need to go, he reminded her. There was nothing romantic, she said stubbornly. He pulled back, straightened, but maintained eye contact. 
The times he'd seen them together sure as hell seemed romantic to him. It didn't make him feel good to know he needed her assurance and the longer she made him wait for it, the more uncertain he felt. He kept his tone flat. Your choice. She reached out and took his hand, kissed the center of his palm. Do you actually need me to say I choose you? She waited and his heart beat like a marching drum. Yes. Going up on her knees, she pulled him to her and locked her arms around his neck. Her skin was warm from the covers and their body heat. Kissing his lips, she whispered against them, I choose you. Invisible weight lifted off his chest, but his throat was too tight to speak. Giving her one more hard kiss, he left and went, back to his place to get ready. As he drove to work, he thought about the storage room. A random attack was one thing, but combined with the location in the building, it wasn't random. He knew it, was certain of it. When Jake hadn't found what he was looking for and continued to trash the tenant's belongings, Wyatt hadn't thought beyond wanting the creep out of his living space. The front locks of the building had been changed, thanks to Shay, but the underground parking door still had the same lock. It'd be easy for someone with a key to get in and head to the storage room for another look. It rubbed Wyatt raw that he'd let Jake walk away and hadn't followed up on anything. If he had, maybe Shay wouldn't have been hurt. The fact that she had was another slip of guilt added to an already tall stack of it. He barely sat down at his desk when his partner joined him. Figured out where he's staying, Jimmy Barlow said, smacking a yellow sticky note against his fingers. His toothy smile made him look younger than he was. Wyatt liked working with him, even though the kid often waxed poetic about conspiracy theories. Wyatt picked up the coffee he'd poured himself and took a gulp. When he'd stopped by yesterday, he'd used the database to look Jake up. He'd found a couple of old addresses and asked Jimmy to check them out. Let's go. I'll drive. Wyatt stood and grabbed his jacket. As he pulled it on, adrenaline churned in his gut. Should we tell O'Brien and, Richie? Jimmy asked as they pushed open the double doors. Sunlight glinted off the icy patches of the pavement, making Wyatt squint. The other officers had been thorough in their account of Shay's attack. Wyatt had checked the files and gone through both of their statements. If the situation wasn't linked to his home and a woman he was tangled up with, Wyatt would have considered it a case of disgruntled neighbors or a prank gone wrong. No. We'll tell M when we get back. If I'm wrong, he said, getting into his car and grabbing his sunglasses, we'll file it and move on. But if I'm right, I want this guy. Even before Shay, he'd wanted to nail the guy. Now that urge had tripled. Jimmy nodded, did up his seat belt, and turned on the radio. Wyatt gave him a warning glance when he tried to change the station to something other than classic rock. Jimmy just laughed. He was used to Wyatt. Jimmy had started right before Wyatt went under. When Wyatt had returned to his regular duties, with the intention of finishing what he started only not undercover, Jimmy had been eager to jump on board. The enthusiasm was amusing and reminded Wyatt of the energy he used to feel about his ability to make a difference. Jimmy thought Wyatt was helping him, showing him the ropes, but really, Jimmy reminded Wyatt of why he got into police work and what kind of officer of the law he'd intended to be. Plus, the kid looked up to him, and Wyatt had needed the bomb for his wounded ego after not closing the case like he'd intended to. Benny had been charged in the end, but Wyatt hadn't been the one to do it. He'd had to step away due to poor judgment and the chance he'd blown his cover. So tell me about him again. Wyatt stopped at the light and gestured to the folders in the back seat. Grab the top one. Jake Parson. He was the manager at my apartment, building for a while. The light turned and Wyatt hit the gas while Jimmy thumbed through the information Wyatt had been collecting. You live in a pretty nice place. This guy was running it. Jimmy held up a grainy shot of Jake that Wyatt had taken weeks back when he'd been watching him. At the time, he told himself it was better therapy than seeing the department shrink. At least his instincts weren't worn out. For a few years. The last couple of managers had left and Jake was already 
living there. The owners have other properties and don't pay much attention to this one. I think their daughter is in charge of it. You'd think they'd be more careful about who they hire to run it, but since Jake was already a tenant and his background was clean, it seems they went with it. Which he'd be discussing when he had the opportunity to meet the owner's daughter. Aside from wanting to talk to the woman about security and proper measures for hiring a manager, he was intrigued to meet the woman who Brady called the demanding diva. From what Wyatt had seen, Brady was as laid back as they came, but the couple times he'd mentioned the woman since taking on the acting manager position, Wyatt saw the tension in his face and shoulders. He remembered Owen and Gabby sharing an amused glance over the thought of someone shaking up Brady's personality, too. It probably wasn't nice that he'd taken some pleasure in the other man's obvious irritation. But Wyatt had never claimed to be nice. Besides that, he might be headed for some torment of his own given how sunk he was over Shay, and he hadn't even taken her out yet. Or to bed. But God he wanted to do both. Jimmy interrupted his thoughts. You said once you told him to get out, and he did. Even if you're right, I mean, I'm sure you're right about what was in the box, but why would he chance it? Why would he come back? Why not just write it off? It sounded to me like you scared the shit out of him. He had to stop letting his mind wander. The last thing he needed was to be distracted. Shay Matthews was an adorable and sweet distraction wrapped in a gorgeous package. The sooner you figure this out, the sooner you can get back to her. The thought stole his breath. He'd never been a man who wanted a woman to come home to, not like this. If you haven't seen it yet, you will, people will do almost anything when they need to score. Or when someone bigger and meaner than me threatens their life. Wyatt gripped the steering wheel, thinking about the first month of being undercover. He'd seen two girls beaten, drugs stuffed inside a kid's toy that was sent to school with her for safekeeping, and a dozen other unthinkable acts that he tried, every night, to forget. Last night was the first night he could remember in far too long that the dreams hadn't plagued him. Turn right up there, Jimmy said, pointing. Wyatt glanced at him and Jimmy shrugged, his cheeks turning pink. For someone with a serious love of technology, you seem to forget I have all the basics, Wyatt said, tapping the screen of the GPS on the dash. Yeah. Sorry. Who does the house belong to? Wyatt took the turn and glanced out at the Charles River. He loved Boston. Loved the people, the neighborhoods. He loved the culture, even if he didn't want to be part of it, and he loved keeping the city safe. Sonia Mateo. I think she's his mom. She's been married twice. Parson was the last name of husband. Number one. She went back to her maiden name after husband two left. Wyatt glanced over. Thanks, Jimmy. Jimmy looked up. For what? For getting the information. For following through on my hunch, but also for covering both of our asses on the Muller case. I appreciate it. Jimmy's pale skin turned pink again, making Wyatt laugh. You need to work on that blush, kid. The guys will eat you alive if they see that. Jimmy looked back down. Too late. About twenty minutes later, Wyatt turned. Onto another rundown street in a rundown neighborhood. Several of the houses had boards in the windows, which didn't necessarily mean no one lived in them. Cars sat, tireless and up on blocks, in several driveways. Frost-covered trees stood boldly on overgrown lawns. The street was empty, like a ghetto ghost town. Not exactly where Wyatt would have pictured an entitled punk like Jake growing up. It's a couple driveways up. Jimmy pointed to a neglected house two driveways down from where Wyatt had pulled over. Yup. Let's go. Jimmy scrambled out of the car after Wyatt and caught up with him on the sidewalk. Should we call it in? Wyatt looked over. No. We have no reason to. We've got each other's backs. If we're right, he's hiding out here with his mom. We should be able to handle that. Jimmy nodded and placed a hand on the butt of his gun. Wyatt rapped on the paint chip door. 
When no one answered, he knocked harder. He heard shuffling, chains moving, then a lock, turning. The woman who opened the door was definitely not what Wyatt expected. She was leaning on a silver walker, her curly gray hair falling over her face. Big brown eyes looked up at Wyatt and Jimmy through thick, red-framed glasses. What? Her voice was gravelly and hard. The theme song to a popular game show blared behind her. The living room was a throwback to 1970 with the bright orange upholstered couches and patterned wallpaper. I'm Detective Daniels and this is my partner, Officer O'Mara. Are you Sonia Mateo? Her laugh was more of a cackle and ended in a cough. No. Are you trying to get on my good side? Sonia is my daughter. You won't find her here. Jimmy glanced at Wyatt, who asked, but this is her house. Yes. Why? I haven't seen her in years. She let me stay here, so I'm not doing anything wrong. Wyatt smiled. No, ma'am. You haven't done anything, but we have reason to believe Jake Parson might be staying here. The woman's eyes widened and then she looked down. Who? Wyatt stood firm until the woman's eyes came back to his. Neither of them said a word, but she broke first. What do you want with my Jakey? Wyatt put a hand up when Jimmy started to speak. Is he your grandson? When she nodded, Wyatt continued. Is he here? The elderly woman turned to look behind her, which took some maneuvering, then looked back at Wyatt and Jimmy. He is. He's been sleeping a lot. He's awful sick, and he was in a bad accident. What do you want with him? As if. They'd summoned him, a bleary-eyed, bruised, and gaunt Jake hobbled into the room, yawning and rubbing the eye that wasn't black. When he saw them, he froze. His eyes went cartoon-wide and darted side to side. Taking a step back, he turned his body to run. You're not going to run off and leave us here to tell your grandmother why we want to speak to you, now are you, Jakey? Jake whipped back around. His grandmother was looking at him, rubbing her hands together. Jakey? Why do these men want to talk to you? Like a balloon that had been popped, he deflated. His shoulders sagged, and his face crumpled with defeat. Wyatt's belief that this was the jerk who had hurt Shay kept him from feeling any sympathy for the guy. He reminded himself to keep his feelings about Shay and his job separate. He didn't want that overlap. He was here as a cop. Not as her boyf, whatever he was. Jake walked toward them, taking his grandmother's arm. Nona. Why are you answering the door? He led her, over to the well-worn couch. Wyatt and Jimmy let themselves in, shutting the door behind them. That's what you do when someone knocks, Jakey. Are you in trouble? You're such a good boy. You're not in trouble, are you? Jake locked eyes with Wyatt as he settled his grandmother on the couch. I'll fix it, Nona. Wyatt didn't want to be moved by the way Jake tucked a blanket around her legs and kissed the woman's wrinkled cheek, but it loosened some of the anger in his chest. It was such a soft gesture that Wyatt doubted himself for a moment. Was he wrong about Jake hurting Shay? It was the only thing that made sense. Can we do this in the other room? Jake pointed to the kitchen. They followed him into an equally retro room. The counters were cluttered and busy, but the house was clean. Jake sat in one of the vinyl padded chairs and scrubbed his hands across his face. Before Wyatt could say anything, Jake straightened his shoulders and pasted on a familiar sneer. What do you want? Jimmy let Wyatt take the lead, leaning against the arch between the kitchen and living room. Wyatt pulled a chair away from the table and turned it around, sitting on it so he was basically eye level. We want you to tell us when you stopped by the building last. Jake looked down at the table. Why would I do that? That place is a hole. You told me to leave so I did. What's the matter, you miss me? So much for burying his anger. Yes, this punk would hurt a woman to get what he needed. The fact that it was Shay who'd been hurt made Wyatt want to smash Jake's face into the table to speed this along. 
Instead, he worked not to respond to the guy's phony bravado. Sweat was pulling along his hairline, and his right leg was tapping up and down in a frantic rhythm. You might want to lose the attitude. I played nice last time, but we could have had you on breaking and entering, tampering with mailboxes, that one has a hefty fine and some jail time, and possession of narcotics. Jake's nostrils flared. You can't prove anything. Wyatt sighed. Wonder who's going to take care of Nona when we charge you for assault and battery. A strange sound came from Jake, something like a strangled cry, but Wyatt didn't relent. Who took care of her while you lived at the building? I did. I, just didn't live here. You're full of shit. You don't have anything on me or you'd be arresting me. Wyatt wanted to slam his hand on the table, but he curled it into a fist instead. Jimmy spoke up. You assaulted someone at your former address. We have a witness who can ID you. Wyatt held still, not wanting to call attention to his partner's bluff. Jake's eyes locked on Jimmy's. They couldn't be that far apart in age, but it was a stark example of the two paths a man could take in his life. Jimmy straightened away from the wall and stepped closer. Jake had to crane his neck back. His lower lip trembled. I didn't mean to hurt her. Is she okay? Wyatt hadn't expected the question, or the regret in Jake's tone. It momentarily silenced him. Jimmy spoke in an affable tone. She's recovering. We have you on trespassing and assault. Anything you want to tell us to help yourself out? Wyatt smirked at Jimmy. Well done. He nodded his approval as Jake gripped his hair and let out a frustrated growl. I have to find it, or I'm dead. I didn't mean to hurt her. I'm sorry. I panicked. I was on my way out and all of a sudden she was there. I freaked. She was turning around and I thought she'd see me. Shit. Shit. If I don't have something for ice by Saturday, I'm dead. If they find me before that, my grandmother is dead, too. Start talking. Who the hell is ice? And what was in? The box you were willing to break several laws for. Jimmy pulled out a pen and paper from his shirt pocket and started writing as Jake spilled his guts and his tears right there in the retro kitchen. Chapter 12 She took a deep breath and raised her hand to knock, then lowered it. In her other hand, she held a covered plate of double chocolate chunk cookies. Was it weird to just show up with food? She'd baked them to distract herself from obsessing over the sexy detective, who had spent the night in her bed and tried absolutely nothing. Deciding that it was up to her to keep building on her momentum, she'd called Brady and asked what he thought of her dropping by Gabby and Owen's place to meet them. He'd offered to do a quick introduction after he was home from work, but Shay said she could handle it. She wasn't ready to see him just yet. Before she had a chance to knock, the door swung open. She screeched and nearly dropped the cookies. The woman in front of her also let out a small cry and backed up. In the next second, a tall, dark-haired man, with black-framed glasses came forward. Gabby? What is it? I'm so sorry, She blurted, her voice almost shrill. Gabby laughed and dropped her head to the man's chest, then looked up and pointed at Shay. All of his attention had been on Gabby. Pretty sure this is our new neighbor, Gabby said, still chuckling. She put a hand to her heart and took a deep breath. I am so sorry. I was just about to, knock. I'm Shay. Owen wrapped one arm around Gabby's shoulder and reached out a hand. No worries. Nice to meet you, Shay. I'm Owen. Gabriella was just going down to your place to say hi. Great minds, right? Gabby said, stepping back and gesturing for Shay to come in. She walked in, slipped off her shoes at the entrance, and tried to breathe around her erratic pulse. She passed the plate of cookies to Gabby, who was beautiful in a unique way, almost gypsy-like with her dark, dancing eyes, and long, wavy brown hair. Owen towered over her and was equally attractive, though in a more severe way. With enviable cheekbones and a defined jaw, his eyes were warm and inviting. 
Thank you. We should be bringing you something. I was going to pop in to say hello, Gabby said, accepting the cookies. She peeled the plastic back and both she and Owen took one. Gabby took a huge bite and Owen laughed, smiling at her with affection. You found her weakness, Owen said. Cookies? With a teasing smile, he poked Gabby in the arm playfully. Food. The tension unwound in Shay's chest like a knot coming loose. Now she saw why Brady, and even Wyatt, talked with fondness about these two. Come in, please, Gabby said, finishing off her cookie. She followed them down a short hallway to an open concept living room and kitchen. The wall of windows in the far corner showed a breathtaking view. Without thinking, she walked to the window. Well? This is stunning. It's pretty. Great, Gabby agreed. It was then she noticed the easel and long, narrow side table littered with paints and brushes and rags. There was nothing on the canvas, but when she turned, she saw a gorgeous print hanging over the fireplace. A man and a woman dancing in the starlight. Everything around them was dark except for the glow of the stars above them and a faint shimmering edge of gold in the places their bodies touched. Like they literally lit each other up. She pointed. Did you paint? That? Gabby glanced down and Owen put a hand on her back. Yes. Baby, you're going to have to keep your head up when you do the show, Owen said. He turned to Shay. She's still in the humble stage, but yes, she painted that and has a collection of others that are equally as beautiful. He's my biggest fan, Gabby said. Shay's heart pinched, making her chest feel tight, like it was too crowded in there. I can see why. Honestly, it's incredible. I love it. Thank you. Come sit down. Shay followed them into the living room. The decor was a blend of modern and eclectic. A wide-seated, gray couch and matching chair took up most of the space, and funky accent pieces adorned the side tables and mantel. She admired the oddly shaped, deep burgundy vase that took up the center of the wood-planked coffee table. Gabby munched on another cookie as she curled into Owen's side on the couch. She sat on the chair and tried to relax. But this was a unique situation since she was looking for a friend and a job. Owen leaned forward and snagged a cookie. Brady and Wyatt said you're an event planner. I am. Or, I'm trying to be. I've organized a book signing event at the Chambers Library this Saturday, and I'm working on a last-minute baby shower for Sunday. I've got a few other things booked, and I'm meeting with a woman from Southside College to talk about planning some recruitment activities. How about you? I'm a systems support technician. I work from home, which is pretty fantastic. I still have a day job, though one day I hope to be able to just focus on my art, Gabby said. She watched Owen squeeze Gabby's leg. It'll happen, Gabs. God. The sweetness almost pulsed between them, and she realized she wanted that, badly. But she'd started falling for a man who stopped himself from giving too much of it. Though he was trying. For her. Neither of them could say where it would lead, but it had hardly started yet and already felt more real than anything she'd experienced before. Perhaps because she knew why it wouldn't try with just anyone. She smiled, remembering the feel of his arms around her. She was special to him. And if it didn't work out, she wouldn't fall apart. She'd survive. She had so far. One broken heart hadn't stopped her from moving forward. Though she had a feeling that having Wyatt break her heart would leave a more permanent mark. I work at a college not too far from here as an administrative secretary. Do you know the area well? Gabby asked. I'm learning. I love the city so far, though I haven't been out much. She pushed farther back onto the chair, and because it was easier to do than she expected, she relaxed into the cozy cushions. We heard you were hurt, Owen said. What a terrible thing to happen. Honestly, this building has been nothing but good the whole time I've lived here, but since just before Christmas, things have gone sideways. I thought we were done with all of that, Gabby said. 
She pulled her feet up and crossed her legs on the couch, comfortable in her space, in Owen's arms and in her own skin. It was a surprise, for sure. I'm feeling okay, but I've been trying not to look at my computer screen for too long so I don't get a headache. It's only been a couple of days. Brady was fantastic, and Wyatt has been so supportive and sweet. Owen began to cough and put a hand flat on his chest. Gabby smirked at him, but Shay leaned forward. Are you okay? He's fine. Aren't you, babe? Owen nodded, coughing less and more just clearing his throat. Gabby turned to Shay with a full-face smile. Even her eyes were laughing. He choked on you saying Wyatt. Was sweet. He doesn't show that side a whole lot. I'm going to get a drink, Owen said. She watched him go and Gabby moved to the end of the couch so they were closer. She leaned in like they were long-time friends. Wyatt's a tough guy. We actually thought he was mob-connected. She laughed and tried to picture that. Sure, he was aloof, but he had his reasons. She'd like to know more of them sometime soon, but he was a protector through and through. He had a conviction for justice and a dedication to his job that was admirable. Gabby broke into Shay's thoughts. I see some of what you see, though obviously only a fraction of it. Be honest, is he a wickedly good kisser? Those tough guy silent types always are. I choked Gabby. I didn't go deaf, Owen called from the kitchen. Shay's skin heated, and she looked back and forth between Gabby on the couch and Owen in the far corner of the room, drinking a glass of water. He raised it, like a salute. I'm going to do some work. Nice to meet you, Shay. See you soon. Oh, bye. Gabby pushed to the edge of her seat. You don't have to tell me. Sorry. I'm just really excited that he's met someone who makes him smile. He doesn't do a lot of that. It's like he resists it, you know? She did know. But how did Gabby? If Wyatt was as closed off as everyone said, how had Gabby gotten through? Had they dated? He'd said no. Actually, he'd said Gabby wasn't his girlfriend. Did you two date? Now Gabby choked, but she covered it quickly with a laugh. God, no. I've been in love with Owen forever. Recently, he clued into that fact, but Wyatt has never been on my radar. But I don't really have a family, and something about him makes me think he'd be a good big brother. He is. I met his sister. It's actually her friend. I'm organizing the baby shower for, Shay said. Gabby's eyes widened. You've met his family. She wasn't feeling as cozy anymore and sat forward on the chair. She didn't want to misrepresent what she and Wyatt had, because they hadn't even been on a date yet. No. Not really. I mean, we were in the same place at the same time, and I ran into him while he was with Abigail. His sister. No need to mention she'd been doing a lousy job of following him through the store. Gabby leaned back like. She was absorbing this information. Then she leaned forward and grabbed another cookie, offering the plate to Shay, who declined. Has he invited you to my show yet? It's next Saturday. I'm debuting with a few other artists in a small showing at the Klein Gallery. Shay's stomach cramped. No. He hadn't. But that didn't mean he wouldn't. She couldn't spend the rest of her life assuming people were keeping information from her just because most of the people who mattered to her had a habit of doing just that. Uh, no. That sounds fun. Well, I'd love for you to come, so I hope you can. And it would be a great way to network. Speaking of which, now that Owen's out of the room, I want to talk about planning an engagement party. I want to make it special, but affordable. Are you up for talking about some ideas? Chatting with Gabby was making Shay's head spin more than when she'd been hit. It was an amusing, entertaining kind of spin, but overwhelming nonetheless. Taking a deep breath, grateful they were moving into safer conversation territory, she nodded and pulled a pad of paper out of her purse, which she'd set on the floor beside her. Yes. Definitely. 
Why don't you give me some ideas about what you'd like, and I'll look into a few things. When she crawled into bed that night, she told herself that she didn't need Wyatt to text her back or call. She'd sent him a text when she got home saying she was having a good day and hoped he was. He'd read it. But hadn't responded. She understood that he had a job and was dedicated to it. But surely, in the days of Siri and hands-free phone calls, he could follow through when he said he'd do something. If he thought of her, like she thought of him, he would have. Perhaps that was what worried her most of all about the idea of falling for Wyatt Daniels, that once again, she was seeing something that wasn't there and wanting more than she could have. She didn't mind taking a chance, but she didn't want to just toss her heart on the floor to be mangled. She hadn't come to Boston for a relationship, but she wanted one. One that mattered and was real. It was part of her makeup, wanting that significant other who had her back and cared in equal measure. She wanted to build. Something with someone, much like she was with her business, something that would last and have a solid foundation. Had that been what she was searching for this whole time? Neither she nor Wyatt needed the weight of all of that pressing in on them before they even knew each other. Maybe, for once, she could just live in the moment. Be okay with not knowing. She checked her phone once again, made a few notes in her calendar, and then pulled the cord for her lamp. In the darkness, she rolled on, her side and caught a hint of Wyatt's scent on her pillow. She hugged it close and hoped that even though he hadn't texted, he was somewhere feeling the same. Like maybe they had a shot at something good. If they could both trust each other, and themselves, enough to let it happen. Chapter 13 Wyatt texted Shay again. He read through the files on his desk and tried to see what was in front of him, but he was just rereading the same sentence. He should have texted her back yesterday. Why hadn't he? He thought to a dozen times, but held back. Self-preservation. The amount of time she crowded his thoughts made his stomach churn, and he tried to tell himself, show himself, that he wasn't getting attached. Hell, he hadn't even slept with her yet. He hadn't taken her out or given her any reason to put up with his garbage, either. He'd almost stopped by this morning on his way into work, but again, told himself not to. He was an idiot, and he was going to lose her before he even had a chance to really know her. Or let her know him and find out if she wanted him anyway. He tried calling her and got no answer. Jimmy walked by his desk, a cup of coffee in his hand. You okay, boss? Yeah. I'm fine. I need to head out for a bit. I'll check in. Later. He picked up his jacket and shrugged it on, grabbed his car keys out of the pocket, and said goodbye. In his car, he debated. Call her again? Text her? Obsess over her in his car like a teenager with a huge crush. Dialing Abigail's number, he hit the speaker button on his steering wheel as he pulled into traffic. Hey. You're calling me. What's wrong? Nothing. I call you, he said. Her laughter came through in surround sound. Not too often. But I'm glad to hear from you. Shay. Emailed me this morning and her plans for the shower are fantastic. Thanks for recommending her. My boss is attending so I'm hoping to introduce them. Maybe she'll score some more work from it. Shay. Why the hell had he avoided her yesterday? Because he thought too much about her and wanted to maintain some measure of control. Though he had a feeling, where she was concerned, control was an illusion. Admitting to himself, and to her, that he wanted to explore things had opened a floodgate, of other desires and why it didn't know how to channel them all. His brain was overflowing with thoughts of Shay. He stopped at the red light, his fingers tapping on the wheel. I'm going to ask you something. I want an answer, not a lecture, and no commentary, either. Okay. That doesn't sound ominous at all. But go ahead. If I was making up for being a little distant and sort of closed off for no reason, what would you suggest? What? You? Distant? His fingers tightened on the leather. Of the steering wheel. 
What did I just say? Abigail laughed. All right, fine. Do something nice for her. Something she wouldn't expect. And talk to her, like really talk. Stop keeping yourself crammed up in an untouchable box and open up to her. You like her. I could tell when I saw the way you looked at her. You won't talk to anyone else, so choose her. Let her be the person you open up to. Let her see you and trust her to care anyway. When you're not being a jerk, you're quite lovable. Wyatt pressed the gas and was glad his sister couldn't see his smile. Was that a compliment? You wouldn't take it if it was. I get that you had a hard time undercover, Wyatt. But you're not there anymore. We're all here, and we miss you. Stop hiding. Come back now. His gut clenched hard. Had he made his family feel that way? He'd shut them out so his bad moods that felt impossible to shake off didn't affect them. But maybe it had anyway, just by keeping them at a distance. He turned left, and headed for the store. I'm sorry. I know. Come for dinner next Sunday. He started to say no. He was in the middle of finding a way to nail Jake's supplier, plus he had all of his other cases. And Shay. Okay. Really? Yes. Bring Shay. One step at a time, Abby. I love you. His heart pinched. Love you too. He got everything he needed from the store and headed for home. He felt more connected to Shay after spending one night next to her than he had with any woman he'd taken the time to pursue. He hadn't had a lot of relationships because he poured himself into his work, but he knew that attention to details mattered. If he wanted her to take the risk, he had to be just as willing. Why it might be rusty, but it wasn't like he'd never romanced a woman. Maybe not one who mattered the way she seemed to, but he wasn't incapable. While he chopped veggies and sautéed chicken, he thought about Maria. He thought he'd fallen hard, but looking back, with perspective. And time on his side, he realized that a lot of what he felt was adrenaline, the rush of the situation, the forced intimacy of feeling like she needed him. Like he was saving her. All the while, he'd been getting played. What he'd felt when it was over wasn't heartbreak, it was humiliation. He'd stayed away from Shay because he didn't want to make a fool of himself again. But Shay was nothing like Maria. For one thing, she definitely did not want to be saved. And clearly, if today was any indication, she didn't need him. She was independent and strong. And beautiful and sweet. One step at a time, he told himself while he let the food cook and set the table. He'd expected to have to chase her down, maybe wait by her door. He had dinner warming in the oven, and he'd changed his shirt twice. He hadn't texted again because he figured why bother if she was avoiding him. When someone knocked, he was so sure she didn't want to talk to him, he was stunned to see her. Hey, neighbor, she said. She was dressed in black slacks and a light blue sweater. Her socks matched her sweater but had little checker marks on them. Her blonde hair was parted a bit to the side and flowed over one shoulder more than the other. Her eyes were happy. She looked adorable and sexy at the same time. Hey. I thought you were giving me the silent treatment, he said. Might as well be honest. She tilted her head to the side. Is that what you were doing yesterday? He didn't want to hurt her feelings, but he wasn't lying. Maybe a little. I kind of panicked every time I realized how badly I wanted to talk to you and kept making myself wait. Then the day was over and, I didn't. I'm sorry. She nodded. Okay. Okay? Taking a deep breath, she clasped her hands together. I won't chase you. Because if you don't want me, there's no point. I'm not looking for that. But I'm not looking for games, either. I didn't text you back today because I was in a couple of meetings, shopping and having a pretty kick-ass day. I was trying to compartmentalize, sort of like you did yesterday, I guess. But I came here as soon as I got home because I missed you. I missed seeing your face and talking to you yesterday. 
Wyatt's heart was beating like a sledgehammer. All he heard was I missed you. He took her hand and pulled her close. I missed you too. And I want you. So much it worries me. But he'd rather worry than deny the truth anymore. He took her hand and pulled her into the apartment, shutting the door with his other hand. Before he could say or do anything to screw this up, he did something he never let himself do, he followed his heart. Wyatt closed the distance between their mouths and poured everything he felt into the kiss. His hands couldn't touch enough of her at once as they slid to her shoulders, down her arms, and around her waist without breaking the kiss. She tasted like the sweetest dessert he'd ever known. She tasted like Shay. It was a delicious combination. Her sharp gasp when his hands gripped her ass and pulled her up against him made his heart pound uncomfortably. Boosting her up, he growled into her ear as her legs wrapped around him. Hell. There was no way they were getting out of this unscathed, but as she ran her mouth down his neck, kissing and nipping, he no longer cared. She was like air, refreshing and necessary. Like sunlight, so bright it nearly blinded him. She was absolute perfection, and he probably didn't deserve to wrap himself up in her but that was exactly what he planned to do. She was small enough he could hold her against him with one hand. He used the other to move her hair back from her face so he could trail kisses up her neck, to her jaw. When he touched his tongue to the delicate skin where her neck met her collarbone, she squeezed him tighter. She was so soft it made him ache everywhere. Somehow he got them to the bedroom without banging into anything. He didn't bother with the light. The moon shone through the thin window coverings, illuminating them both. When he lowered her onto the bed, she didn't loosen her grip around his waist or his neck. It scared him how much he didn't want her to let him go. All he could do was feel. Her. Him. Them. And he couldn't get enough. His laugh was strained when he tried to pull back a little, and she clung tighter. Let go for a second, baby. This works better without all the clothes in the way, he said. He pulled her arms from around his neck, held her wrists with one hand, and leaned back. With her legs still around his hips and him kneeling on the bed, her back was arched, and he could see the outline of her breast pushing against her shirt. His breathing faltered as he stared down at her. He spread the fingers of his other hand wide on her flat stomach and slowly inched upward. His eyes went to hers. When she sighed, Shay's cheeks were flushed, and she watched him with so much trust and affection it nearly choked him. He'd never wanted to deserve either of those things more than at this moment. His hand moved up, over her breast. She pulled her bottom lip between her teeth and continued to stare. With his fingertips, he traced her collarbone, marveling at the silkiness of her skin. He loved that spot on a woman, and hers was so delicate. Releasing her wrists, he leaned over her again, pressing his body against her as he cradled her face in his hands. The flowery scent of her hair consumed him. You are so damn beautiful. Her eyes closed and she shook her head. Look at me, he said, his voice hoarse. She opened her eyes, her lips still between her teeth. His heart tumbled, actually knocked against his chest repeatedly. With his thumb, he tucked her lip free then ran the rough pad across. He kissed her jaw, right under her ear. You. He kissed her chin. R. He sucked, lightly on the skin under her other ear. Then her mouth. Perfect. Her eyes shone, and the wetness in them should have scared him. Tears made him feel helpless. But with her, it made him want to pull her tighter and tell her everything would be okay. He didn't even know what the everything was but he wanted to make the promise. He kissed both eyelids with a tenderness that came from some deeply buried place inside of him. This time when he pulled away to remove his shirt, she didn't stop. Him. Instead, she watched every movement, smirked when he tossed it to the floor, and then took her time studying his chest, his abs, and lower. His hands shook as he released the button on his jeans. Need to be with her clawed at him from the inside. She sat up and went to her knees when he stepped back to the bed. 
her hands were cool and his skin was on fire. Imitating him, with amusement crinkling the corners of her eyes, she kissed his neck. I. His chin. Have. His nose, which made him. Laugh. Never. One shoulder. Wanted. The other. Anyone. The corner of his lips. The. The other corner. Way. She traced his lips with her tongue, and he gripped her hips, clenching his fingers. I. She nibbled on his bottom lip. Want. Her lips touched his, opened, and took their time kissing him. You. The last word came out as a whisper. They stood there, kissing, hands running over each other, his over her shirt, for so long that Wyatt felt like he couldn't breathe. He'd never wanted someone the way he wanted her and yet, he didn't want to rush it. Rush her. As he pushed up her sweater, tugged it over her head, he saw the color move from her cheeks to her neck. Her eyes darted down and he used his hand to tilt her chin back up so she had to meet his gaze. Knots tightened in his stomach, and his fingers trembled with the thought. Of touching her. Shay. I want you. More than you could possibly imagine. Her eyes widened and her cheeks flushed a deeper shade of red, but the words seemed to settle her nerves. Her smile made him feel like he'd won the lottery, made his heart beat like a drum. You're mine. The thought stunned him and slowed his movements. His hesitation must have showed because she covered her chest with her hands. Tell me you're not pulling away again, she whispered, her tone laced with pain. Wyatt shook his head, taking another look before he yanked her against him. You make it hard to breathe. Neither of them had the best track record when it came to trust, but he needed to see this through. He couldn't hold back, waiting for her to break the piece of his heart she'd captured. If he was going to get his life back and pull himself all the way out from under the weight of his failure, he wanted Shay by his side. If he wanted that, he had to stop closing himself off. She yanked him, down so he fell on top of her. He grunted, but she merely smiled. Stop thinking. You can think after. Then stunned him again, by setting out to make sure he could think of nothing but the two of them together. So much for staying in charge. When her lips traveled over his chest and worked their way down, for once he didn't care who was in control, as long as they didn't stop. Wyatt's brain had shut down. All he could do was feel. The sensation of Shay's warm body pressed against his. Still tingling skin and the sigh of satisfied pleasure from her lips were possibly the two best things in the world. I thought I'd imagined it, she whispered. What? His fingers were tangled in her hair. It was redeeming to know she sounded breathless as well. The chemistry between us. He gave a rough laugh and looked at her, saw she was watching him. I tried to deny it completely. We make a great pair, don't we? Her smile was shy, almost timid. I think so. Wyatt hated the look of doubt hiding in her eyes. He kissed her gently, refusing to let either of them put up barriers. He deepened the kiss, hoping to erase any doubt she had. When she pulled back, she put her hands on his chest, levering herself up a bit. She smelled like vanilla and sugar. It made him hungry and reminded him he'd made them dinner. What are you thinking, baby? A small smile hovered on her lips when he used the endearment. It felt natural and right, like she did against him. With her index finger, she drew circles in the smattering of hair that covered his chest. Her eyes tracked the movement. The thing is, I don't want to go back and forth. If you have to work, I get it. And I try not to be needy because I don't want to be. But I don't want to feel like every time I don't hear from you, it's a strategic retreat. He nudged her chin up and cupped her cheek with his hand. Her skin was like rose petals, perfect and soft. It won't be. I don't want to play games, either. I just want you. If you'll have me. Her lips tipped up as her arms slid around his neck. I'd be very happy to have you. Again. 
The tone of her voice sent fire through his veins, and it took effort not to pull her close and make love to her again. Instead, he arched up and kissed her soft and slow until she was moving against him, weakening. His resolve. He pulled back and nudged her away from him. She moved aside with a frown on her face. Wyatt laughed at her expression, then got up and grabbed his boxers. He pulled on the shirt he'd been wearing and grabbed a t-shirt from his drawer. Tossing it onto the bed, he winked at her. I made you dinner. Unless you're okay with eating naked, which is perfectly fine with me, put that on. She froze, blankets clutched to her chest. You what? Heat that wasn't lust-induced crept up his. Neck. I can cook, you know. Her smile made his heart beat faster. I didn't know, actually. Give me a minute to clean up. He nodded. Meet you at the table. Before she rose from the bed, he forced himself to leave the room. If he didn't and she stood in front of him to dress, he'd never get her fed. Walking into the kitchen, tension unfurled in his gut. This felt better than good. It felt right. He wasn't used to the sensations swirling inside of him. They felt a lot like genuine. Happiness. She wiped her mouth with a napkin and set it on her plate. That was delicious. You really can cook. Wyatt scooped up his last bite and shot her an amused glance. You don't need to sound so surprised. I've lived on my own since I was twenty. Pushing her plate forward, she picked up her wine and sipped it. He didn't want to make a big deal of it, but it made him happy she'd enjoyed the meal. It made him happy to share it with her. She had filled him in on her day in her meeting at Southside College. He was impressed with how many contacts she was making. He told her that his suspicions about Jake were correct but didn't fill in the details. The less anyone knew, the better. Things had a way of flying apart when too many people were in on the specifics. Plus, she was hot and he wanted her, but she was still a civilian. He needed to treat her like any other one in terms of the case. Who hurt you? Wyatt stopped mid-chew and stared at her. Shit. He had not seen that coming. Not that directly, anyway. He swallowed his mouthful and bought more time by taking a long drink of his wine. She waited patiently, her eyes never leaving him. He stood and held out his hand. She took it, and he led them to the living room. The gas fireplace had warmed the room nicely, and he'd turned the lights on dim. The moon glittered through the open patio blinds. Sitting on his couch, he pulled her down next to him. She didn't hurt me so much as she conned me. She winced. Probably not an ego boost for a man like you. He ran his fingers over her hand but looked up to meet her gaze. A man like me. Take charge, in control, likes to know exactly what he's dealing with. For someone to deceive you, I can imagine you took that as a personal affront to your own abilities. Wyatt tapped her on the nose with his index finger. Aren't you perceptive? Maybe I should just talk to you instead of the department shrink they keep hounding me to see. She didn't smile. You can. You can talk to me. I won't deceive you, ever. Because I know how it feels. But there's nothing wrong with talking to a professional, either. It doesn't make you less in any way. He nodded, torn between embarrassment and relief at the idea of telling someone. I'm working on it. Start with me. He pulled her close, and she lay her head on his chest. With the scent of her shampoo wafting around him, he was able to relax his shoulders a bit and just hold her. I was undercover pretty deep. There's a lot of stuff that happens when you're on an assignment, and you have no control to stop it. Not if you don't want to blow your cover. You have to let some things go to get to the end zone. I made it into the inner associate circle of a known dealer. A big-time dealer. I met this woman. We, well, we connected. The room felt too warm now, and he shifted. She leaned up, her hands pressing against her chest. It's okay if you've had sex before. He laughed and the tension eased again. All right. 
We had sex. But I thought it was more. She led me to believe she wanted out of the life. That she was tired of being surrounded by criminals and needed a way to break free. She asked me to help her. As a cop, it was ideal because she started feeding me intel and some of it led to some important arrest. But I stayed in character because I wanted the head guy. When I mentioned him, she said she knew him. Well. Did she know you were a cop? Wyatt ran his hand down Shay's back and pulled her close again. It was easier when she wasn't looking at him. No. Most of the time she was trying to talk me into running away with her, and it seemed like she was telling me all this stuff to give me a reason to go. I was already torn because I cared about her and felt like I was betraying her, but that's what I was there to do. I just figured that when I got out, I'd find a way to take her with me. Like when she'd slept next to him, she wouldn't stay still. She leaned up again, this time pulling her knees between them and resting her head on them. She waited. Wyatt sighed and leaned forward, resting his forearms on his thighs. When I talked to my commanding officer, he said to keep my eye on the end goal. I decided I'd tell her the truth. That I actually could save her from the life she was living. I showed up at her place. Usually we hung out in the dive I was renting or at this huge house everyone kind of congregated in. One of many the dealer owned. Anyway, I showed up, she let me in. I sensed she didn't want to. We were standing in the hallway, and her smoke alarm went off. She kind of squealed and said she had something on the stove, and to wait right there. I wandered down the hall a bit, wired because I wanted to tell her everything was going to be okay. Wyatt stood up and went to switch off the fireplace. He put a hand on the mantel and just stared at the fake logs. What happened? Turning, he met Shay's stare. She had family pictures up in the hallway. Turns out the head dealer was her brother. She'd been playing me. She didn't want out. She wanted to rise up. I have no idea if she knew I was a cop, but she knew I was out to get her brother. She figured serving me up to him would earn her a higher place in his enterprise. What did you do? I got out. I left, packed my shit. Hid out for a while and listened to the chatter. Contacted my CO and he pulled me off the assignment. Wyatt. He looked down at the rug. Old resentment still burned in his gut. He heard her move and then he was staring down at her feet, her toes touching his. She put her hand on his face and tilted it up, like he did to her. Eventually, you'll do enough good to make up for what you feel like was failure. You'll forgive yourself. He scoffed. You aren't going to tell me it wasn't my fault. Nothing I could do? We had no intel on family members. Turned out we had no intel on a number of things. She put her hands on his waist. I agree with it not being your fault, but it won't matter if I say that. Wyatt wanted to argue. He felt like it could matter. No matter how many times I, or someone else, tell you, you're going to beat yourself up about it until you're done. All you can do is move forward. In time, hopefully, you'll see that you did the best you could. It's not wrong to have trusted someone. That's the funny thing. I thought, how? Could I be so pissed at her for lying when I was doing the same thing? She stepped closer, and Wyatt found himself wishing there was nothing between them at all. No bad memories. No clothes. Intentions matter. You were lying for your job. To make the world a better place. We want to think everything is black and white, but that's not how things work. She lied for personal gain, and you did it for the good of others. There's a big difference between selfish and selfless. His chest was tight. Winding his arms around her, he held on. You might be too good for me. You're only saying that because you aren't seeing what I see. Wyatt touched his forehead to hers and breathed her in. What's that? A man who cares too much and wishes he didn't. Someone who wants to make the world better but carries that weight alone. A man who shuts people out because he's scared of letting anyone in. You're in. 
somehow you found a way in, he whispered. It scared him, but, he didn't lie unless he had to. I plan to stay there, just so you know. A strange lump filled his throat, and the need to be closer to her made his skin feel too small. Like he might burst out of it at any second. He tunneled his hands into her hair and did his best to distract them both from the heaviness of the conversation. Of his own feelings. She met him halfway, going up on tiptoes, even as his hand molded against her body, tugging her up against him. When he kissed her, he felt like everything else disappeared. When she touched him, he wasn't shrouded in darkness, but part of her light. It was a gift unlike any he'd known. Wyatt. Her nose brushed along his chest and he shivered, still high on sensation. He kissed her forehead, still trying to regain his breath. He tilted her chin up so he could see her face. Hum? She pursed her lips and watched her finger as she traced circles on his chest. He stopped the motion so she'd focus and tell him what was on her mind. I'm obviously not completely innocent, but I wouldn't say I'm overly, experienced, either. But for me, that was, Shay blushed, and he turned on his side so they were facing each other. It fascinated him that she'd just rocked his world like an earthquake and now blushed when she talked about it. She bit her lip again but stopped and huffed out a breath. That was really amazing and wonderful, and I'm falling for you and you'll probably break my heart and I just want you to know I can handle it. Whatever this is, for however long it lasts, I need you to be honest with me. Don't back away without warning. Don't shut me out. Just tell me. That's all I'll ask for. With his heart still tapping out an unsteady rhythm, he reached out and stroked her skin. She could ask for almost anything and he'd give it to her. It bothered him that she'd asked for so little. I want this, Shay. I'm going to do my best not to mess it up. Okay. She nodded, like his word was good enough for her. She humbled him. He stopped stroking and took both of her hands in one of his. Shay's gaze settled on his and that fast, he wanted her again. He felt like he might never get enough of her. I won't lie to you. Ever. I'm nowhere near innocent but what I feel for you is nothing like anything I've ever felt before, so it was amazing and incredible and really freaking hot for me too. I intended to stay away from you, but I can't. It's been less than two weeks and I'm more wrapped up in you than I thought I could be with any woman. So both of our hearts are on the line here. Wyatt paused, used the time to kiss her slowly, letting his mouth linger until he heard her breath catch. Tears shone in her eyes again, and he pulled her face closer, needing to breathe the same air as she was. Her voice shook when she spoke. I really like you, Wyatt Daniels. He smiled against her lips. So simple. So real. I'm going to try really hard not to change your mind on that. Don't do that. What? You don't see how good you are. His forehead rested against hers. I spent eight months pretending to be buddies with a drug-dealing pimp. It's hard not to feel tainted by that, too. Carry it around. Though, now that he'd told her the story, it didn't feel like knives were piercing his sternum when he spoke about it. You know what you call a person who does something for the safety and benefit of others, even if it means putting themselves at risk? Wyatt gave a tired laugh. An idiot? She kissed him and against his lips, she whispered, a hero. He pulled back like she'd punched him right in the heart. Shay, I'm not. Please don't make me something I'm not. He adored her sweet, somewhat naive, outlook, but he needed her to see who he really was. If they were in this, she had to know who he was and who he'd been. She smiled and when one tear rolled down her cheek, he caught it with his thumb. Taking his hand, she kissed his palm. Her eyes locked on his. You're everything I think you are and more. Then she kissed him so long and hard he forgot what they were talking about. As he laid her back on the tangled sheets, she said, you're perfect. And, Wyatt wanted her badly enough to believe that maybe, to her, for her, he could be. Chapter 14 
Shea poured a cup of coffee, unable to keep the smile off her face. She'd snuck out of bed, leaving Wyatt asleep on his stomach and tangled in her sheets. Admittedly, she'd stared at him for a few moments, feeling a rush just from the memories of the night before. Because she'd wanted to sleep in pajamas, which Wyatt strongly protested, they'd come back to her place. Before she could put them on, however, he'd made love to her again. They'd compromised, and she slept in a tank top and underwear so he could have his hands on her skin. Which she hadn't minded one bit. As soon as she checked her email, she planned to make him breakfast. Two new emails asking for quotes for her services added to her already excited mood. Wyatt stomped into the kitchen, his hair sticking up, wearing only his boxers. He was scowling, and Shay thought she must have it bad if the sight made her sigh with pleasure. Good morning, she said. Her heart hammered against her. Ribs. Why is he frowning? Does he regret last night? He walked closer to where she sat at the computer, and she had to crane her neck to look up at him. Are you sharing that coffee? His voice was rough from sleep, a bit scratchy, and it sent shivers through her body. He emanated from his skin, like it had the night before when she'd fallen asleep wrapped in his arms. I can, but there's some in the kitchen. She shouldn't find his morning grumpiness so charming. She had a lot to do today, so when he walked away, she began making a list of what she needed to bring to the library. Wyatt came back in, scowling less with a cup of coffee in his hands. You have the library thing today? It was hard to focus with his abs on display. The thin trail of hair that led into his boxers pulled at her attention. Uh-huh. It'll be about three hours start to finish. I'd like to see you later. She let her eyes move up, over his body, slowly, appreciating the defined muscles of his chest, lightly covered in hair just a shade lighter than on his head. She bit her lip when she watched the strong curve of his biceps curl as he sipped coffee. He had a tattoo on the inside of his right bicep, the date he'd joined the force in Roman numerals. Shay had let her lips linger on that spot as she'd taken a slow tour of his body the night before. She'd also kissed the scar on the underside of his chin, which she now knew he'd gotten playing basketball as a teenager. By the time her eyes made it to his, he was watching her with an almost exasperated amusement. Oh. She wanted that, too, but she needed to get favors made for the party. Wyatt set his cup next to hers and leaned over the chair. Oh. That's it? Do you have plans? Not really. Are you being evasive on purpose? She couldn't stop the grin from spreading over her face. I'm trying to see if you'll kiss it out of me. He chuckled and pressed his mouth to hers. I could be persuaded. I have to make party favors for the baby shower. Gabby said she'd come up and help me. Wyatt stood straight and picked up his coffee again, pointing a finger at her. That reminds me, Gabby has an art show on Saturday. Do you want to go? Shay bit her lip to keep from smiling. Her worries over him not asking her faded into nothingness. She needed to have more faith. Not everyone did things according to her schedule. He stared at her, waiting for a response. Are you asking me out on a date? Swallowing down a drink of his coffee, he lowered it to the desk. I guess I am. Are you accepting? Gladly. He nodded and she wondered if he felt even a hint of the level of satisfaction she did. She was all but vibrating with it. If he wasn't standing in front of her, she might have broken into an embarrassing happy dance. So tonight? How long will that take? Shea shrugged and picked up her own mug. Couple of hours? After? Butterflies twirled around in her stomach in a lazy dance. That sounds good. All right. We should get dressed. Weird. I was thinking the opposite, she said leaving her cup on the desk and tracing her fingers over the defined ridges of his ABS. He shivered and set his coffee down. Trapping her hands, he pulled her in for another kiss. We have a tenants' meeting, he told her. We do? Yes. Aren't you on the email list yet? 
There's an email list. He laughed and pulled her down the hallway toward her bedroom. There is. We get to meet Brady's nemesis today. She still needed to talk to Brady. She didn't want anything weird between them. Why do you sound so happy about that? He detoured into the bathroom and released her hands to start the shower. Because I like seeing Brady flustered. Call it a pastime. Something to amuse me. She smiled, liking this side of him. She was so sunk, she liked every side of him. He turned and before she knew it, he'd yanked her tank top over her head. You just said we needed to get dressed, she said. We've got a few minutes, he answered. He kissed her collarbone, her shoulders, then dropped to his knees and traced his tongue over her belly as he removed her underwear. Her heart was trying to escape her chest. She really should breathe, but it was pretty hard to do that with his breath tickling her navel. Just what every girl wants to hear. He laughed and kissed his way up her body. Stepping back, he stripped off his boxers. Smart ass. Get in there. I promise you, won't be disappointed. Shay laughed and did as he said. Now that's something every girl really does want to hear. Following her in, he surrounded her as much as the steam from the spray did. Let me prove I'm a man of my word. Since she was 99% sure she was falling heart first into something a lot deeper than like, she was counting on him being just that, in every way that mattered. Shay slapped a hand on Wyatt's hard stomach, making him wince. What? He looked down at her with a knowing smirk. His arm was wrapped around her shoulder, and he had her tucked against his side as they walked into the multipurpose room for the meeting. You sure you don't want to pee on me? Mark your territory. He laughed and pulled her tighter. The room was crowded, and she spotted Brady at the same time Wyatt did. Just helping out since I know you didn't get a chance to talk to Brady, yet. She glared at him. Brady and I are just friends. Like actual friends. Nothing happened between us so you have no reason to, she gestured with her hand while she tried to find the words, circle around me making your claim. He was not deterred by her tone. How about something a little more pleasant with a similar outcome? His lips touched hers and she gripped his cotton t-shirt as he made it clear they were together by kissing her senseless. Her nerves and irritation fizzled with his touch. When he pulled back, she sighed, making him laugh roughly. See? Much nicer. And, as I've told you, completely unnecessary. But she wasn't complaining. It felt good he wanted others to know they were together. When her eyes locked on Brady's, it was hard to read him. He looked frustrated, resigned, but Shay didn't think that was because she'd ignored his advice about Wyatt. The woman standing beside him was talking to him, or at him. She had a clipboard in her hand and her auburn. Hair was pulled back into a severe bun. Elegant, she wore a gray blazer with dark pants and a very serious expression. Brady ran his hand over his short, cropped hair and nodded. He does not look like he's enjoying that conversation, Shay said. Wyatt dropped his arm from her shoulder to take her hand and pull her to the outer edge of the crowd of people. Shay recognized some of them. Levi, who she waved to. The elderly couple she'd met from her floor were sitting on the love seat, their hands clasped. Shay gave a wistful sigh as she looked down at her hand in Wyatt's. You okay? She looked up. Yes. Wyatt gave her a funny look then glanced past her and gave a small smile. Shay turned to see Gabby and Owen walking hand in hand toward them. Gabby embraced her as soon as she was close enough, surprising Shay with her enthusiasm and affection. Hey. Ah, look at you guys holding hands. That's so sweet. Shay laughed, but she was pretty sure Wyatt snarled. Hello, Wyatt, Gabby, said in what Shay thought was a terrible attempt at being demure. Gabriella. Owen. Where was the smiling, teasing man she'd walked down here with? Owen smiled warmly at Shay. Wyatt. How are you, Shay? I'm good, thank you. So you two are officially a thing. 
Gabby gestured back and forth between Shay and Wyatt. Owen groaned and pulled Gabby closer. Wyatt let go of Shay's hand and when she glanced up at him, he was looking away. Little stitches of pain spread from the center of her heart. Owen looked at Wyatt then Shay before addressing Gabby in a stage whisper. Gabs, maybe it's better not to put people on the spot. Not everyone is as exuberant about sharing their feelings. Gabby laughed and swung her long, dark hair over her shoulder. Right. Sorry. Shay tried to smile, but it was tight. Wyatt leaned against the wall now, his arms folded over his chest, watching the room like he was gauging each person. Shay shrugged when she caught Gabby watching her. I put a deposit on, the space for your party. Gabby beamed and looked up at Owen, then back at Shay. Did you get the date we talked about? Owen's eyebrows scrunched together. What date, honey? Excitement fluttered in Shay's chest. This was exactly what she wanted to be doing, taking part in pulling together special moments for special people. I did. Do you want to tell him? Gabby threw her arms around Owen's neck, making him laugh. She kissed him noisily and said against his lips, How does March 12th? Sound for our engagement party? Owen's brows drew together right before his eyes softened, and even though he was the more reserved of the two of them, everything he felt for Gabriella showed in his expression. That sounds perfect, since it's the day we met. Shay looked away, caught Wyatt's eye. He winked at her, and she felt some of her unease about his retreat settle. But he didn't reach out or pull her close. Which was fine. Absolutely fine. If everyone could move in a little closer, take a seat if there's one available, we want to get started, Brady said above the din of people chatting. People did as he asked. Owen leaned against the wall near Wyatt and pulled Gabby in front of him, locking his arms around her waist. Shay stood still, trying not to read into Wyatt's behavior. As the crowd quieted, Brady gestured toward the woman on his left. This is Mia Kendrick. Her family owns our building, and she'll be taking over all responsibilities. Including the ones I've graciously assumed in Jake's departure. Mia frowned at Brady and Owen laughed. Oh. What? Shay asked, looking at Gabby and Owen. Owen thinks Brady wants to strangle Mia just a little bit. Gabby grinned. Owen nodded, looking over at Shay and it looks like the feeling might be mutual. Wyatt shook his head and as if belatedly realizing Shay stood alone, he reached out, ran a hand down her arm until his fingers linked with hers. He mouthed, come here. She hesitated a moment, and he tugged until she was standing closer. It was easier to go than protest, at least for the moment. Hello, everyone. As Mr. Larson has said, my family owns Kendrick Place. Mia put the clipboard down on a side table and turned back to face the group. My great-great-grandfather bought this building a long time ago and turned it into a beautiful place for people to live. I'm very proud of our heritage and our history, but I owe all of you an apology. Brady watched Mia speak, and Shay didn't think it was only frustration in his gaze. Mia clasped her hands together and looked out at all of them. She had a strong voice, steady and sure. Kendrick Place hasn't been getting the attention it deserves and because of that, several situations have arisen that none of you should have to deal with. It's been difficult to address everything that's been happening from overseas, which is where I've been. My brother was originally in charge of this property, but recent events have made it difficult for him to attend to it. But I'm here now, and I plan to stay. Shay saw Brady's eyes widen as Mia continued. I thank Mr. Larson very much for his time and hard work. He's done a great job keeping things going. I apologize to all of you that I didn't leave you in better hands with Jake. I'm prepared to take several measures to make you feel safe and content like you have in the past. She went on to discuss security plans, her commitment to making Kendrick place the community it once was, and shared a few stories of the first people who inhabited the building in the early 1900s. Shay laughed and enjoyed listening to the stories. 
A few people grumbled about getting on with things, but their complaints were quickly quelled when Mia informed them that, as a thank you for their patience and what they'd all dealt with, she'd hired painters and anyone who wanted their apartment done would be able to choose colors and incur no costs. Several people clapped and a few excited voices rose, peppering her with questions, others lowering as people turned to talk to the person beside them. Wyatt pulled his hand from hers and Shay started to protest but he held up a finger and pointed toward Mia. His voice stopped all the chatter when he addressed the owner. I spoke to Brady about several security measures that need to be implemented, and I hope you'll take those into account. But I have a request for all of the tenants. All. Eyes turned to Wyatt and Mia stepped closer. And you are? Wyatt Daniels. Right. The police officer, Mia said after picking up her clipboard and consulting it. Detective. Mia looked up again. Detective. What is your request? Wyatt looked around the room, standing straighter, as if it was necessary to establish his presence. She knew he did that just by walking into a room. I'd like everyone to go through anything they took out from the storage room between December 1st and now. Any box, bag, or whatever. Even if you put it back, though it'd be better if no one was using the storage room right now. But I need you all to dig through your stuff, even if you don't think there's reason to. There's an ongoing investigation into Jake, and I believe what he misplaced may have accidentally been mixed up in someone's belongings. People murmured in the crowd but Wyatt held their attention. Gabby nudged Shay's shoulder and whispered, Honey, you're looking at him like he's water, and you're dying of thirst. Rain it in a little. Make him work for it. Shay started to bristle but then realized Gabby was teasing her. Like you did with me, Gabs. Owen whispered, squeezing his fiancé's hand. Gabby grinned and her cheeks turned pink, making Shay smile. Wyatt shot them all a quieting glance. I will say that if you have found this box and haven't returned it for your own reasons, you don't want it. If any of you think that maybe what you found could be used to turn a profit or benefit you somehow, I promise you, it will not turn out the way you hope. For one thing, I plan to find it. Two, for your own safety and that of your families, you do not want to be caught up in anything Jake Parson was tied to. The veiled insinuation didn't sit well with the tenants and several of them started to talk. Wyatt let them, stepping back to lean against the wall while Mia worked to quiet everyone. Wyatt looked at Shay, then Gabby and Owen. You three are like high schoolers. Gabby laughed too loudly. Sorry, Wyatt. Owen's eyes twinkled, and he arched an eyebrow at Wyatt. Yeah. Sorry, Detective Daniels. Wyatt's lips curved but not all the way into a smile. He stared at Shay. She shrugged. I'm not sorry. This made him smile. Brady whistled and got everyone's attention again. Let Mia finish, please. Mia stared at Brady a moment, then addressed the group. Thank you, Brady. Okay, as Detective Daniels requested, please take the time to go through your things. If you find something, she said, then looked at Wyatt. With his hand on Shay's waist, warming it, he answered the unasked question. A square cardboard box. Unmarked. About half the size of a shoebox. If it hasn't been opened, it should have clear packing tape along the seams. Mia nodded. Okay. If you find such a box, please take it. Immediately to Mr. Daniels. We want to get things back to normal here as soon as possible. I'll be popping by to say hello to each of you and asking whether or not you'd like your space painted. I know we all have our own lives but by sharing this space, as neighbors, they do intersect. The decisions we make have a ripple effect, and I'm sorry that the decisions my family have made recently have had a negative impact on all of you. Brady gave a brisk nod when Mia finished speaking. People, milled about, several of them going up to say hello to Mia. Brady wove his way through the crowd. He clapped Owen on the back, gave Gabby a hug, and started to lean toward Shay but stopped when he looked at Wyatt. Hey, new girl. Detective Daniels. 
Wyatt rolled his eyes, which made Shay laugh. You kind of asked for that, she said. Anyone want to grab some food? Brady looked at them hopefully. I'm starving. We're in, Gabby said after looking at Owen. Shay looked at Wyatt, who shook his head. I'm going to go into work for a few hours. You have time before your event to join, though. He looked at them, specifically Brady and Owen. Keep an eye on her. Actually, maybe one of you could give her a ride to the library? He looked back at Shay. If not, I'll come back and drive you. Shay's mouth opened and then closed. She put her hands on her hips and glared up at him. Do you want to offer them babysitting money? Wyatt's lips firmed and she could see him fighting back the laughter that Owen, Gabby, and Brady didn't even try to hide. No, honey. Your company is quite pleasant enough. I'm sure they're happy to hang out with you for free. I can drive you, Brady offered. Wyatt scowled at this and then gave a mumbled, thanks. He kissed her quickly on the lips, then cupped a hand around her neck, kissing her a little bit longer. In her ear he whispered, I'll see you later. She watched him go, torn between being pissed at him and wanting to go after him and kiss him again. So, let's hit Millie's diner, and Shay can tell us about how much she loves the former crime boss turned detective, Brady said, slinging an arm around her shoulder. Torn between amusement and guilt, she shrugged off his arm. He was acting fine with everything, but Shay felt unsettled with how they'd left things. She spoke quietly so, hopefully, only he could hear. Are we okay? He gave her a one-sided smile. We're fine. Except that one, of us is really hungry. She frowned at him. I'm serious. I feel like maybe I led. He put a hand up, stopping her from saying anything else. Don't worry about it. Seriously. We're fine. I really like you, Shay, but I have a thing about dating women who live in the building. Too close to home, you know? That was great. No guilt. Except, what had they been doing? Oh. Well, excellent. He must have read her confusion because he bent his knees a bit to be eye level. It didn't seem necessary to have that conversation. I wanted, want, to be friends with you. And after the dinner at your place, I thought maybe I'd have to tell you about my rule, but it became pretty clear after you got hurt that you only wanted friendship. With me. What he said was true. Shay still thought she could have handled it better. I'm sorry. Don't be. Just be careful. Too late for that. At least where her heart was concerned. We going, you too. Gabby called from where she stood snuggled into Owen's arms. Shay wasn't all that hungry. You guys go ahead. I'm going to head home. I have a few more things to organize. No. Come. Please. Brady's just teasing and nursing a wounded ego because Mia hates him. Hey. Brady stopped and whirled on Gabby. Owen laughed and tugged on the back of Gabby's shirt. Let's grab some jackets. Come on, Shay. It's our treat. We won't let Brady bug you. She hesitated for only a second more and decided that she could use the time to talk about ideas for the party with them as well. Okay. I'll grab my jacket. Mia was at the front desk when she came back down. The others were waiting outside the glass doors and Gabby waved to her. Mia smiled and Shay went to introduce herself. I'm Shay. I live in 302. I guess it's weird to say welcome to the building, Shay started, then broke off with a laugh. Mia's laugh relaxed her features, made her look more approachable. No. It's not, I guess. I am new here. Thank you. It's nice to meet you. They shook hands and Mia tipped her head to the side. Shay? You have the flyer up about Shine, right? Event planner? Shay pulled her coat tighter and nodded. Yes. Is it okay that I put the information on the board? Mia shuffled some papers, looked down at them, and then back up. 
Yes. It's completely fine. She grabbed a paper from her pile and pushed it toward Shay. It's coming up on the 100th anniversary of when my family bought Kendrick Place and I was thinking of putting together a party. I haven't worked out any details yet, but I've spoken to my grandmother, and we thought perhaps a costume or theme party depicting the era it was purchased in could be quite fun. The courtyard is such a lovely feature and would be great for hosting. What do you think? Shay's brain spun. You'd have to wait for better weather. Mentally smacking herself for pointing out something so obvious, she continued, but I think it could be beautiful. Very elegant and certainly, it would be easy to work with that theme with the building and courtyard as the backdrop. She had to remind herself that she couldn't jump up and down at the prospect of another job offer, even if this one sounded more high-end than the others she'd been working on. Stay cool. She smiled then stood straighter, as though her height was directly relevant to her professionalism. That's exactly what I was, thinking. Would you be interested? Perhaps we could meet and talk. I was thinking closer to spring. Maybe the end of April? Hopefully things will have calmed down here and everyone will feel settled. Shea smiled so wide her cheeks ached. I am absolutely interested and would love to sit down with you. I know you're busy, so I'll just play with some ideas for now, based on what you've told me, and you can tell me when your schedule is free. You know where to find me, she said. She laughed a bit too loudly and figured retreat was her best strategy. Before she wrecked it for herself with her unchecked excitement. Mia shook her hand again, smiling warmly. Perfect. Thanks, Shay. It was nice to meet you. You too. Shay waved once more and joined the group outside. Brady was scowling, which didn't seem to suit him. What did Diva want? They walked on the salted sidewalk, side by side, with Owen and Gabby holding hands on her left. She wanted to hire me to put on this huge gala to celebrate her family's 100th anniversary in the community. That's fantastic, Gabby said, with a somewhat ear-piercing shriek. Everything happens for a reason. Congratulations, Shay. That's big, Owen said. Shay nodded, completely overwhelmed and thrilled all at the same time. It is. Thank you. Brady was quiet. She nudged him with her shoulder. She's nice. Yeah. If vipers can be nice. Just watch out. She's first and foremost a spoiled princess. Then a businesswoman. I'm not sure which is worse, but I'm pretty sure her bark and her bite are equally lethal. Ah, come on, Brady. Cut her some slack. She's dealing with a lot, too, Gabby said. Shay glanced at Gabby, waiting for her to say more. Gabby cheerily obliged. You see stuff about their family online sometimes. I heard her dad is retiring, and the brother is supposed to take over but won't for some reason. Owen looked down at her with a mixture of amusement and affection. I see you're keeping up on the important news, he teased. Gabby laughed, and Shay enjoyed seeing the easy back and forth between them. They stopped in front of a small diner about four blocks from their building. A pink sign over the door read Millie's. It was packed inside. Owen held the door, gesturing for the ladies to go first. Besides, aren't you a businessman? What's wrong with that? They huddled at the door while they waited for someone to seat them. Brady huffed, his hands in his pockets. I'm not so stuffy about it. Or completely unappreciative of my staff. You didn't endure endless conversations about every dime I've spent in the last three weeks or argue with her about the list of shit that needs to be done around the place. No. And I'm glad it was you, not me, Owen said as a woman with very high hair approached them. Hi there. Four. Give me a few minutes and I'll clear that back table for you. They nodded and Shay felt her pocket buzz. Taking out her phone, she saw a text from Wyatt that read looking forward to tonight. Good luck with your event. It'll be great. Shay smiled and Brady poked her in the shoulder. 
What happened to staying away from him, new girl? Shay stuck her tongue out at him, making Owen and Gabby laugh. That was your suggestion. Besides, she said, thinking she needed to call her brothers, Brady made her miss them more and glanced at Gabby. Everything happens for a reason. Both the men groaned and Gabby high-fived her. They were still laughing when the waitress showed them to their booth. Chapter 15 Yes, Mom, Wyatt said, trying not to sigh. One hand gripped the phone, holding it to his ear while he used the other to rub the tension from his neck. No. Abigail was the one who asked to reschedule this time. Yes, I'll be there next week. While he listened to his mom talk about how great that would be and how long it had been since he'd come for a proper visit, Shay's arms slid around him from behind. Her skin was still warm from her shower. A shower he'd missed out on because she told him to answer his mother's call. He glanced over his shoulder and smiled at her. His heart clenched, just from the sight of her, but at least he was getting used to the fact that he was crazy about her. There was no way around it. Everything about her got to him, made him want things he'd given up even thinking about. She was still in a towel, and it rubbed against his bare back. Her fingers danced over his abs, and he had to flatten his hand across them so he could focus on what his mom was saying. When he felt her towel slip away and her naked body press up against him, he inhaled sharply. Yeah. Mom? I gotta go. Sorry. Listen, I'm bringing someone with me, what? Yes, a girl. Jesus, Ma, okay. Sorry. Yes. Love you too. Bye. He turned to see Shay snickering. Did you get in trouble? His eyes roamed over every inch of her. I don't know. And right now, I don't care. She smiled, backing away from him with a teasing smirk on her lips. He was addicted to her lips. The way they curved upward when she was happy, or formed a straight line when she was lost in thought. The way they parted a little when he touched her. You're bringing a girl home to meet your parents? Wyatt advanced a step for every one she retreated. Uh-huh. My mom is just like Abigail. She'll talk your ear off. My dad, well, he doesn't say much, but he's a good guy. Shay backed into the wall leading to the hallway. Wyatt flattened his hands on either side of her, head. He leaned down so their noses were touching. Shay placed her hand on his chest, and he knew she could feel his heart trying to beat its way out. Sounds serious, she said, her voice low and breathy. Feels serious. It was getting easier to admit it. Her hands wandered, smoothing down his sides until her fingers dipped into the waistband of his track shorts. Does it? He pressed against her, closing his eyes to just breathe in the sweet, citrusy scent of her hair, still damp from the shower. To me. She went up on tiptoe, which brought them closer and whispered, to me, too. That's a good thing, he said, kissing her neck. She arched her head, encouraging him to continue. A bit scary, she said. He pulled back and looked down at her, locking his gaze on hers so she knew how very serious he was. It is. But worth it. I didn't think that before you. Her eyes widened, and she was so easy to read. Everything she felt shone in her eyes. He felt it, too, all of it. God, he felt it more and more every second he spent with her. He was looking forward to seeing her all dressed up tonight for Gabby's show. It had been a long time since he'd wanted to take a woman out and just be with her. Shay made the restlessness that churned inside him settle. The way she was looking at him now, it was a look he could get used to if he let himself. If he didn't, mess it up. I have a few errands to run and a couple more things to set up for the meeting next week, he said, glancing above her head to the wall clock. I still can't believe you were in the same room with him and managed not to hit him, Shay said. Sharing anything about his work hadn't come easy, but last night he'd told her about meeting with Jake and setting up a meet with his supplier. It wasn't exactly pillow talk, but it had been spinning in his mind. She'd known something was distracting him. 
Because she was getting to know him. Because you're letting her and she isn't running scared. Bigger picture. Trust me, I wanted to. I hate that you were hurt, he said, placing a kiss on her collarbone. I know. But I'm okay and you're finally going to have closure on this. Besides, it's not your fault. Pulling back, he looked down at her. We disagree there. Why don't you start getting ready? I won't be long. I'll meet you downstairs, or do you want me to pick you up at your door like a proper date? She reached out and stroked her hands up and down his arms. Lobby is fine. I'm excited about tonight. Not just about going out out with you, but the whole group. Being part of Gabby's night, going out with friends. It feels like I'm making the life I plan to. And sticking to it. Wyatt stepped back from her because if he didn't, he wouldn't make his calls. Out out? Yeah, like out of the apartment for more than the grocery store or baby emporium. Don't. Forget Target, he said. Her cheeks flushed red, and he couldn't resist kissing her. You do not have permission to tell that story, she said. Wyatt laughed. That's a shame. It's a good one. This time she pushed away from him as she pretended it wasn't funny. The twitching lips proved she was trying not to laugh. Go run your errands. When he realized he was watching her walk away, he told himself to focus. Life wasn't all about Shay, though at the moment, that sort of life sounded pretty damn good. But there were still bad guys to catch, and he was very close to getting a two-for-one with Jake and his dealer. Jake had not been easy to convince but threatened with several charges, he'd been flexible. He'd arranged a meeting with Ice, who was eager to get his money, at an all-night diner downtown. Wyatt let himself into his apartment and dropped his keys on the counter. His captain hadn't been at the station, so he'd have to connect with him tomorrow or the next day. Jimmy had made arrangements at the diner. Everything was ready to go. For once, Wyatt's plate was free and clear, and he was looking forward to a night of focusing solely on Shay. It was Gabby's night, but Shay was right when she'd said it felt special for all of them. The start of something new. He fingered the small, jeweler's box in his pocket, part nervous, part embarrassed that he'd picked it up. He'd already given Shay more gifts in a two-week period than he could remember giving any woman, ever other than Abigail or his mom. But they didn't count. In his room, he pulled out the small, square gray box and opened it again. Inside was a thin silver multi-strand bracelet. Delicate, like Shay, it had a star on one strand, a moon on the next, and a sun on the third. It suited her perfectly, and he couldn't wait to give it to her. He closed the lid and tossed the box on his unmade bed. As he pulled his suit from the closet and tripped over a pair of sneakers, he realized he should probably clean up again. He was hardly ever here so he didn't see how it got so messy. He'd tidied up a week ago to have her over. Why couldn't he have kept it that way? He shrugged. We'll just keep sleeping at her place. Easier and, surprisingly, the idea of spending each night with her didn't twist his stomach in. Knots. He was fumbling with his tie when his phone rang. Daniels. Wyatt. Captain Stram's voice boomed through the earpiece. Sir. Missed you at the station, but I went through the file. Looks like everything is in order. You trust your informant? Wyatt scoffed. Hell, no. But he doesn't want to do hard time so I think he'll show. He's met Ice there before so it'll be a natural setting. Okay. You're doing well taking the lead on this. Jimmy's learning from the best. Wyatt scoffed, again and when he spoke, his voice was gruff. If you say so. Thank you, Cap. Eventually, you're going to have to tell those demons you let follow you around to piss off. You know that, right? Giving up on his tie for now. Wyatt scooped up Shay's present and put it in his suit pocket. Working on it. And finding my way back to a real life. One that includes the kind of woman who makes it easier to fight back against the darkness. All right. 
You've earned your night off and then some. We'll touch base before Wednesday. You might want to meet with Jake once more before then and go over what he'll say. You and Jimmy both. I'll set it up. They'd already been over it more than once. Jake would meet with Ice, tell him he couldn't find the drugs and didn't have the money. Jake would beg for another chance and try to get him talking about the product. If Jake did what he was supposed to, he'd walk away without charges and they'd have a big-time dealer off the street. He said goodbye, still unsure how he felt over his boss's praise. Captain didn't say things to make friends, so if he said it, he meant it. Was Wyatt being too hard on himself? It was tricky to separate the incident with Maria from his now cynical view of his ability to do his job. It was one of the reasons he would never again go undercover. He wanted to make the world a better place, but he needed to be able to come home every night and shake off the day. He couldn't have a personal life if his career reached into every pocket of him. Best to keep the two well separated. Work. Home. Bad guys. Shay. It could be a good balance. Looking at his watch, Wyatt swore. He'd been doing so well on time. He grabbed a black wool coat from his hall closet and sat down at the table to pull on his shoes. Owen had rented a limo for the ride to the gallery. Shay had accepted for both of them. Wyatt still wasn't sure how he felt about being buddy-buddy with so many people. It was one thing to ease, back into socializing in the arms of a beautiful woman. Shay naturally gravitated toward others, even appreciated their open-armed acceptance. It was taking some getting used to on his part. Even before going undercover, he hadn't been an overly social person. Wyatt was just fastening his watch when a knock sounded. Maybe Shay came up instead. Swinging it open, he was faced with an attractive, somewhat familiar-looking woman who seemed to be about his age. Her strawberry blonde hair was long and cascaded down her sweater dress. Lips painted far too bright smiled at him. In her hands, she held a nondescript box. Wyatt's heart flipped and began to gallop. Hi. You're Wyatt, right? I'm Shauna. I live in 203. He opened the door, gesturing for her to come in. Shutting it, he tried to slow his pulse. He absolutely loved when everything came together. Every now and again, all the pins lined up perfectly, just ready to be knocked over. Where'd you find that box, Shauna? He stayed with his, back to the door, and Shauna looked down at it, then back up at Wyatt. She gave a nervous smile. In my box of yearbooks. My boyfriend brought up a bunch of our Christmas stuff from storage, and we were going to go through everything like you asked, okay, he was. I thought I'd take a trip down memory lane. Wyatt held his hand out and she set the box in his hand. You haven't opened it. She shook her head, eyes wide. No. Honestly. I don't know what happened. When I asked Kyle, that's my boyfriend and this is our first Christmas together, he said he just grabbed everything on my shelves, tucked some boxes inside others so he could bring it all up in one trip. He didn't really remember putting the box in with the yearbooks, but I found a couple of other small ornament boxes, too. If he hadn't accidentally brought the yearbooks, this would still be downstairs. Okay. Thank you, Shauna. This is really helpful. Truly. She shrugged, but smiled. Good. I just want to feel safe, you. No, I do know, and you have my promise that the Boston Police Department is working toward making that happen. Still holding the box, he opened the door and gestured for her to go. Thanks, Wyatt. It makes me feel safer having you live here. Wyatt's cheeks warmed. He was just doing his job. He nodded. Anytime. Thank you. She gave a small wave, turned, and walked toward the elevator. Wyatt didn't watch her go. He was running behind, but he had to be sure. In the kitchen, he used a steak, knife to slowly and carefully slit the tape on top. Peeling the sides open, Wyatt looked down at perfectly packed, tiny packets of white crystals. 
Jake said Ice was trying to make a name for himself and had created some hybrid drug that blended heroin, cocaine, and speed. Jimmy and Wyatt had just stared as Jake described the effects. How messed up did people really want to be? Wyatt picked up a small packet. It was the length of his pinky. According to Jake, each packet was worth a thousand dollars. From a glance, Wyatt would say that there was at least a hundred thousand dollars worth of product in front of him. A small capital I was engraved, almost like stitching, into each bag. It was the final piece of the puzzle. No wonder Jake was getting his life threatened. He was lucky Ice hadn't killed him already. Wyatt was practically vibrating with excitement. It pulsed through his veins, making him feel alive. The only thing that made him feel as amped up as doing his job was Shay. Shit. Shay. Putting the package into a drawer, he grabbed his keys and his jacket and hurried to the elevator. He was off duty tonight. Miraculously, he had the package and all of his loose ends were getting tied up. Now it could wait. He had a date to keep, and there was nowhere else he'd rather be tonight. When the evening was finished, they'd come home together, and when he crawled into bed beside her tonight, he knew that he'd sleep. It was another thing she'd brought into his life. Peace. It scared him how easily he could imagine coming home to Shay each night. One more reason to be glad he was done with undercover. For good. She was his shot at a normal life. Starting tonight. Chapter 16 Shay refused to cry. She pressed her back against the elevator as it descended to the lobby. The beautiful blonde coming out of Wyatt's apartment was explainable. He'd been pretty clear, just this morning in fact, how crazy he was about her. She may not have had the best judgment in the past, but she knew, knew she could trust him. He wouldn't deceive her. Not like that. But he would withhold information. Just like everyone else in her life because, why? He thought she couldn't handle something? He didn't trust her, thinking to meet him at his place, since he was taking a while, she'd gone up to see if he was ready. The blonde didn't look familiar to Shay, but she only knew a handful of neighbors in the building. It could be anyone. The doors slid open, and she breathed in through her nose and out through her mouth. Pressing a hand to her stomach, hoping the sudden queasiness would pass, she told herself everything was fine. She'd just ask Wyatt about her. The others were waiting in the lobby, including Wyatt. When he saw her, his eyes widened. He looked pretty sharp himself in a black suit tailor cut to highlight his sleek, muscular body. He was a couple of inches taller than Brady and Owen and definitely had a more broody presence. Owen looked like the quintessential GQ businessman, and Brady had cleaned up nicely in a gray suit and light blue tie that worked with his eyes. Wyatt walked toward her as she came closer. Baby, you look incredible. Stunning, he said, his voice so sincere that it made Shay's heart hammer painfully. Her dress was a shimmery black with a scoop neck. It narrowed at the waist and had a small flare to the skirt. It was the back, however, or lack thereof, she'd been drawn to. Thank you. You look pretty good yourself. Wyatt pulled her black wool coat from her arms and held it out for her. She turned, slowly, letting him drink her in while she slipped one arm in, then another. As he brought it together around her, his body crowded closer and then his breath was in her ear. Holy crap, Shay. How am I supposed to look at art when you're wearing that? Shay turned, her stomach dancing. She smiled up at him, grabbing the lapels of his long coat. I could just stand beside you. She tilted her head and his eyes narrowed. Like hell. Then someone else can look at your naked back all night? I don't think so. I think you'll just stand in front of me, nice and close. You look at the art. I'll look at you. Some of the hurt in her chest untangled. He wouldn't deceive her, but why wouldn't he totally open up to her? She couldn't be in another relationship where she was the only person all the way in. And a relationship where someone withheld information to protect her was no better. She held his gaze, 
wondering if she could look deep enough to see any of what she felt in his eyes. The fingers of his hand sifted over her wrist, butterfly kisses on her skin. Her pulse beat wildly as he brought her wrist up and placed a kiss there. I have something for you, he whispered. She glanced around, wondering why he was talking so low. Brady was telling Owen and Gabby a story. Wyatt and Shay were in their own little bubble, him looking at her like she was everything and her wondering if she could believe what she saw. She grinned, some of her worry pushing back. Are you going to give it to me? Let's go, you too. Limo is here. Owen waved them over. Wyatt sent the others a look, then leaned into Shay's ear. Later. When we're alone, he took her hand and Shay made herself stay in the moment. She'd ask him about it later, and he'd tell her. She squeezed Wyatt's hand tighter, and he smiled down at her with so much warmth she barely felt the cool evening air on her face. Are you nervous? Shay asked Gabby as the limo pulled to the curb in a surprisingly residential neighborhood. When she stepped out of the car, the heritage house that had clearly been transformed into a gallery charmed Shay. Gabby stood beside her, rubbing her gloved hands together. I am, but I think I'd be worse if it was just my stuff. There are five of us who were asked to show our work. If I have to talk to anyone about one of my pieces, I'll probably feel like I'm going to throw up, so maybe I can avoid that. Owen put his arm around Gabby's shoulder and kissed her cheek. Your art speaks for itself, sweetheart. It's beautiful and amazing. Just like you. Shay started to say how sweet that was when Brady cut in, laughing. Christ man, she, already said yes. You don't need to overdo that syrupy sweet shit. The five of them stood looking in front of the Klein Gallery, waiting for Gabby's signal that she was ready to walk up the few steps where other people were already entering. Shay was positive that Owen whispered something in Gabby's ear. She smiled, took a deep breath, and nodded. They stepped into an already busy parlor-like area with high ceilings and wainscoting on the paneled walls. Canvas prints hung in groups, sculptures decorated the floor, and a few abstract pieces hung from the ceiling. Shay craned her neck, beyond curious how someone could actually get up that high. Scaffolding, Wyatt said, following her gaze. His hand rested on the small of her back in that intimate way she loved. Loved. Don't think about love while he's standing so close to you. Low music pumped through speakers that hung in each corner. A glass staircase led to a second floor. Despite what she'd said, Gabby's eyes darted around nervously, and Shay was close enough to hear her take a few deep breaths. Shay gripped her fingers and leaned in. I can't wait to see. It's going to be wonderful. Gabby smiled with pure appreciation and gave Shay a quick hug. I need to go speak to the gallery owner. Why don't you guys check our jackets and just hang out, have some champagne? Have fun. Buy some art. Her words were rushed, and her movements were jerky as she pulled off her coat and passed it to Owen. He grabbed Gabby's arm before she could escape. Leaning his forehead against hers, he again whispered something only Gabby could hear and Shay saw her shoulders relax, saw her smile as she beamed at Owen. Looking over at Wyatt, Shay saw he was only watching her. Everything inside of her warmed and relaxed. I'll take the jackets, Owen said after he kissed Gabby and she strolled away. Shay passed hers over and so did Brady. Wyatt frowned at her as she started to remove the long coat she'd worn over the dress. How can you scowl when you're looking at a beautiful woman? Brady nudged Wyatt in the arm then removed his own jacket. Shay had a feeling she knew exactly why he was frowning. She shook her head and handed the coat to Brady. Stop it. You're looking at me like my brother Simon did when he picked me up at a party one night. I'd borrowed a dress from a friend, and he lost his mind. Did it look like what you're wearing now? Wyatt's voice was strained. He passed his jacket over to Brady who looked back and forth between them. Why don't I help you, oh? These two need a minute to discuss their wardrobe, Brady said. Owen laughed, and he and Brady left them alone. 
Wyatt closed the distance between them. He put his hands on her hips. Did it? Did what? Did the dress your brother didn't like look like the one you're wearing now? Amusement and frustration crowded each other and Shay sighed. You don't like my dress. Wyatt's eyes widened. What? Are you nuts? That dress is killer. I love it. I'd just love it more if you were only wearing it for me, he said, pulling her close. His fingers grazed the bare skin on her back and Shay shivered. She wound her arms around his neck and went up on tiptoes. Her heart was skipping just from the sound of his lips saying the word love. Twice. She kissed his cheek then whispered in his ear, I am wearing it only for you. Wyatt growled with pure male appreciation and tightened his hold on her. You sure you don't want to just go home? She smiled and pulled back, taking his hand. No way. I want to socialize and meet people. I want to look at art, hold your hand, and drink champagne. The affection in his gaze as they walked toward the curved staircase made her breath catch in her throat. He squeezed her hand in his own. Partway there. Let's get something to drink. At the top of the stairs, a blonde waitress offered them champagne. Wyatt took two glasses and even though he didn't flirt or talk more than he had to, the woman still gazed at him with obvious attraction. The calm she'd found in the last half hour dissipated. She could ask him now. He'd tell her it would be nothing and they'd have a wonderful night. Worry tugged at her heart. People milled around her, but she focused on Wyatt, walking toward her with two glasses. She knew his barely their smile was only for her. Pulse scrambling, she tried to find the words. Just ask. Not everyone is hiding something from you. Shay. Wyatt's brows creased with concern. You okay? Shay nodded, accepting the glass. She took a sip before she spoke. Why were you so late getting down to the lobby? Wyatt's head drew back slightly. He gave a rough laugh. I was there before you. What are you talking about? Yes, he had arrived before her. She'd stood in the hallway to catch her breath and bite the inside of her cheek to make sure she wouldn't cry. You took a while though. Wyatt pulled her close. I just wanted to look nice. Nerves overtaking a hot girl to a fancy place, I guess. Shay winced as her heart pinched hard and tight. Tears threatened, but she breathed through them. Stop it. You're wrecking a good night over nothing. He's here with you because he wants to be. Then why lie? His fingers came to her cheek and stroked softly. Are you sure you're all right? You don't have a headache, do you? She had his concern. Just not his. Trust. Her heart throbbed, like a giant, pulsing bruise. Breathing deep hurt so she kept her breath shallow. With a curt nod, she turned, tightening her grip on the stem of her glass. We came to look at art. Let's do that, she said. Wyatt was a perfect date. He stayed by her side, attentive and sweet. Every time she met his gaze, his eyes were equal parts concern and affection. When they came to Gabby's work, she couldn't hide her gasp of awe. Wyatt's front came to her back, and his hand wound its way around her body to rest on her stomach. I knew she had talent, but this is beyond what I expected, Wyatt said. The words, spoken softly, brushed over her ear. The music and noise of background chatter would have made it difficult to hear him if he hadn't been standing so close. For a moment, she forgot about everything else. With Wyatt's arm holding her close, she took in the first painting. It was breathtaking. Elegant and simple, yet the colors seemed to scream with emotion. There were five canvas prints. Each of them had a heart. In the first, colors swirled, nearly drowning the heart in thick brush strokes and swirls. Shay had to follow the lines of color to actually see the heart lost in the center of the chaos. The piece was titled Waiting. The next few were similar but completely different. Hearts, thick and thin brush strokes, swirling colors storming the page, but it was like each of them told a different story. 
In line, the heart grew bolder, stronger, and bigger with every canvas. When they got to the end, the sweetness of the final print twisted Shay's own heart, tangling all her thoughts and making her feel as if Gabby's emotions were jumping off the image. The heart was the focal point but it was blurred, like an abstract heart, and the lines brushing across it resembled an infinity symbol or linked fingers. The color in this one was bold and triumphant. It was then that Shay realized, looking back at the others, that the color increased with each print. In the end, when the heart stole the show, the color radiated from the canvas. It was called Found You. They are just exquisite. I saw some of her art at their apartment, and she has these little doodles and drawings everywhere, but seeing it together like this, in this one series, it's breathtaking, she said, her hands clasped together against her chest. When she looked up over her shoulder, Wyatt was looking down. Their mouths met and before she could remember that she was upset, she lost herself in the strength of his solid frame surrounding her, his mouth making her feel much like the paintings did. The sweetness of the moment healed the piece of her heart he'd stepped on. Maybe she needed to have more faith. He pulled back and kissed the tip of her nose. That really is one hell of a dress, baby. It's just missing one thing, he said. Still dazed from the kiss, she wobbled a little when he stepped back and turned her to face him. He set both of their now empty glasses on a nearby table and came back to stand in front of her. He was reaching into his right pocket when he stopped and frowned. She saw the buzzing of his phone against his chest. At least he'd put it on vibrate. Don't answer. But he did. He looked down at the screen and all of the warmth and hope she'd felt vanished. The hard look on Wyatt's face surprised her. She clasped her hands together. Everything okay? He glanced up. Yeah. Clearly it wasn't. He texted someone and stared at the screen. Before she could suggest they look at something else, he tucked his phone in his pocket and put a hand on her shoulder. I need to go outside and make a phone call. Stay here. He started to go, hesitated slightly, and then leaned forward to kiss her. Shay turned her cheek, and if he realized the significance of this, he didn't let it show. Instead, his mouth brushed her jaw and he turned, walking toward the staircase. Shay's jaw clenched so hard it hurt. Not nearly as bad as his abrupt departure or cold directive to stay put. No please. No explanation. Need a drink? Brady appeared at her side, two glasses in his hands. Yes, Shay said, taking one and swallowing down half the flute. Brady arched an eyebrow. Art makes you thirsty, he said, his easy grin reminding her that things could have been different. Despite Wyatt's lack of social, graces and abrupt attitude, it had been he who'd captured Shay's heart. She'd thought she'd grown up a bit, learned from her mistakes. Why couldn't she have learned from her mistakes? Earth to Shay. You okay? She nodded, not trusting herself to speak. Owen's going nuts with all these people around. Gabby told him we could head out in the next hour. Sound okay with you? He looked around. Where's Detective Moody? Even his casual humor couldn't slow the hurt overflowing inside of her. He had to step outside. I'm just going to see what's keeping him. She gave Brady the glass and turned, but he called her name. Do you want me to come with you? No. I'm fine. And she would be. Eventually, she thought as she made her way down the stairs, through the thinning crowd. Outside, the frigid air was a shock to her bare shoulders and back. She didn't see Wyatt on the sidewalk. The street was fairly quiet. Town cars, limos, and a variety of other vehicles lined the street on both sides. An usher, wrapped in a scarf, jacket, and toque, was texting. He wouldn't just leave, would he? Like he'd heard her question, Wyatt was in front of her. Before she could say a word, he gripped her shoulders. The heat of his hands was welcome, even if his tone was not. What the hell are you doing out here? Excuse me. He looked around then tugged her toward the stairs. I told you to stay inside. 
Shay pulled out of his grasp, her temper warming her body enough to block out the cold. You're not my keeper, and I think I've mentioned I don't like being told what to do. Looking around again, he came closer, took a visible breath, and spoke with more calm. Is it too much to ask that you just trust me for one goddamn minute and do what I've asked? Please. His, please sounded almost like a curse. Shay faced him, wishing she'd worn higher heels so they could be eye to eye. Yes, actually. It feels like way too much to trust you now, seeing as you just lied to me earlier tonight. Instead of listening in, the usher turned away, but Shay didn't care if they had an audience. Wyatt yanked off his suit jacket and wrapped it around her shoulders, using his hold on it to pull her close. What are you talking about? He wanted to do this now. Fine. I saw. The blonde leaving your apartment, Wyatt. Even then, I trusted there was a reason. But instead of giving me that reason, you lied. And the worst part is, I don't think you'd cheat on me. But I also don't think you'll ever trust me enough to truly let me in. I'm done with halfway relationships. His mouth tightened. When he spoke, the sound was almost guttural. Shay. Please. Don't do this right now. We'll talk later. At home. She sucked in a breath of freezing air and pulled away from him. There's no need. There's clearly nothing to say. She turned away from the gallery and walked away, her heels tapping on the sidewalk and her heart breaking in her chest. Chapter 17 Wyatt was shaking from the inside out. What the hell had just happened? His shock wore off about five seconds after she walked away from him. He started after her as Brady came down the steps. Dude, what's going on? Wyatt looked at him. Everything had been perfect. Instead of coming apart stitch by stitch, everything had been torn away without warning. Shay just took off. He ran in that direction, not caring if Brady followed. He'd already texted Jimmy his location and what was happening on his way outside just to be safe. Jake had texted saying he needed to talk to him, and when Wyatt had basically said take a hike until tomorrow, Jake had said he was outside. He'd just gotten rid of the overanxious idiot before Shay came out. Jesus, how was she moving so fast in heels and where the hell was she going? Slow down, Brady said. Wyatt didn't respond to him. Shay, he called. She didn't turn around. He and Brady were closing the gap as she rounded the corner of the dark, mostly deserted block. They both stopped short when Shay screeched and was yanked forward. Brady started to charge toward the tall, thin, dark-haired man with a greasy goatee who was holding Shay. But Wyatt saw the glint of the gun and grabbed his arm. Smart move, he said, nodding at Wyatt. Hands where I can see them. Wyatt could hear Shay murmuring or whimpering, and he could feel Brady vibrating beside him, but he blocked them both out. You going to take us all down on a quiet street full of residential houses, ice? Wyatt kept his tone conversational as he and Brady raised their arms. The guy smiled, adjusted his grip on Shay's arm, and pulled her closer. Wyatt kept his eyes on the target, knowing he would completely lose it if he looked at her right now. This wasn't supposed to happen. Nothing was supposed to hurt her again. You have me at a disadvantage, knowing my name. You're moving in on my boy, but what you don't know is whatever. Product he's trying to sell you, it's mine. Wyatt felt Brady's eyes on him and prayed he'd stay still. Wyatt shuffled forward a minute amount. I didn't know he was a cop. That might work in his favor. Or not. Where is Jake, anyway? Like they were talking about baseball, Ice leaned on the car he and Shay were standing closest to. It was dark and there was no emblem on the front, but it looked like an Impala. Ice tapped his gun on the hood of the car. He's having himself a little nap in. My trunk. Wyatt's brain was like a sandstorm. He couldn't see his way out. Focus. Do your goddamn job. Treat this like you would any other situation with the possibility of a civilian casualty. If he thought about the fact that it was Shay being held at gunpoint, he'd fall apart, and that wouldn't help anyone. He purposely kept his tone aloof, pretending Shay was no one to him. Who's the girl? Why don't you cut her loose and we'll talk? I snarled. What do you mean who is she? He waved the gun between them. She's with one of you. Was he guessing or had Shay said something to the dealer when he'd grabbed her? 
Don't show your cards. Wyatt shrugged and looked at Brady, who'd laced his hands behind his head. She with you? He hoped his eyes transmitted what he needed Brady to say. Brady shook his head. Nope. Wyatt forced himself to meet Shay's gaze. Fury burned as bright as fear, and his heart shot up to his throat, pounding like a racehorse on the final lap. She met his stare and gave an almost imperceptible nod. That's my girl. He'd always want to protect her, but she was completely right about being able to take care of herself and hold her own. They were maybe ten feet apart when Wyatt went with his gut. Widening his eyes and looking past Ice, he shouted, What the hell is that? As Ice turned, he yelled again at Shay. Now. She stomped on the dealer's foot with her heel, and Wyatt shoved Brady to the side as he rushed forward, ignoring Shay as she fell to the ground. He launched himself at Ice who was half-turned, gun in one hand, which went off, the shot going wild, but fortunately missing any of them. He hoped. He heard Shay scream again as his fists pummeled into the dealer's face. In the back of his mind he could hear sirens, but it wasn't until Brady was yanking on his arm that he realized what he was doing. Enough. Wyatt, stop, Brady said, his tone sharp, cutting through Wyatt's. Angry haze. Sirens and tires squealed and everything else fell away. Wyatt was moving through a thick fog, Brady helping him to his feet. Jimmy was there, gun drawn. Another officer got ice off the ground while Jimmy picked up the dealer's weapon from the sidewalk. Wyatt turned to see a female officer wrapping a blanket around Shay's shoulders. He walked toward her, stopping just before they were touching. Are you okay? She nodded. He would rather have felt the bullet from Ice's gun then. Watch her cry. Brady came to stand beside him. Wyatt, you okay, man? Jimmy asked, his voice booming in the dark night. Wyatt couldn't tear his eyes off Shay. She was okay. No thanks to him, but she'd be fine. Jimmy clapped him on the back. Wyatt. Brady spoke quietly. You want me to take her home? Wyatt was still looking at her when he nodded. Brady held out a hand and Shay took it, letting the blanket slip away from her shoulders. One of the officers grabbed it as Brady pulled her. Closer. Another kick in the throat. Jesus Christ. How had this all gone so bad? As Brady put his arm around Shay's shoulders, Wyatt noticed she wasn't wearing his jacket. It had fallen onto the ground. He picked it up and held it out to Brady, who nodded, took it, and tucked it around her before pulling her close again. They need to make a statement, Jimmy said. Wyatt forced himself to shut out the emotions making him want to rage. Get a uniform to give them a ride home. Take the statement. There. Jimmy nodded and Wyatt turned to deal with the situation. Lights were flashing. Cops milled around. His partner had his back, even if it was almost seconds too late. Ice was sitting in the back of a patrol car. Without looking over his shoulder, because if he did, he'd race after Shay and pull her into his arms and never let her go, he walked into the fray. He'd do his job and figure everything else out later. As his feet pounded on the pavement, his heart ripped like a razor had slid down the surface of the organ, painfully slow, draining him of happiness. He didn't need happy. He needed to do his job. Or he'd lose that too, and truly have nothing. He had the fleeting thought that the only thing he'd ever get the chance to go home to at night was emptiness. Shaking his head, he reminded himself he deserved nothing more. Jimmy joined him again and said with a grimace, someone might want to let Jake out of the trunk. Chapter 18 You're sure you're all right? Gabby passed Shay a mug of tea. Owen smiled at her as he pointed to his headset and walked down the hall. He has a conference call. Shay took a small sip, burning her tongue. It's been six days and I wasn't hurt, Gabby. Just scraped up a little. You're worse than my mom. I'm fine. On the outside, anyway. Gabby added more milk to her tea and took a drink before answering. You're very lucky you weren't hurt worse. Gabby shuddered. I still can't believe all of that went down while Owen and I were still inside. Have you talked to Wyatt? Shay looked down, like her cup had all the answers. It hurt to hear his name. A uniform had brought her and Brady home. He'd offered to stay with her, but Shay had never wanted to be alone more than she did that night. She needed no witnesses to the torment and sadness, the residual fear and adrenaline that had shaken her and kept her awake all night. When Gabby had come by the following day, she'd said Brady filled her and Owen in on everything. 
all the parts he knew about anyway. Glancing up with just her eyes, she answered the woman who'd become a good friend in the past few days. No. I just needed some time to figure things out. I can't go back and forth. If he doesn't want to be with me, fine. But I can't handle the hot and cold treatment. He doesn't trust me, and I really don't believe we can ever find equal footing. Though, he'd certainly tried to get a hold of her. Shay had ignored his calls and texts. She needed time to firm up her paper-thin resolve, because it would be so easy to let him tear it down. When she lifted her head, she saw the understanding in Gabby's eyes. I know. And I don't blame you. For what it's worth, he went to talk to Brady. Shay froze, her hands tightening on her cup. What? Why? Brady and I gave our statements to the same officer that night. Why did Wyatt need to talk to him? Gabby's smile came slow. Unlike most smiles, hers started in her eyes and worked its way down to her lips. To tell Brady that whatever interest he has in you, you're off limits. You're, what did he say? Spoken for. Shay slapped a hand down on the counter. Her mouth hung open as her thoughts collided. Where did he get off even thinking that, never mind saying it to Brady? I can't believe he would do that. He has no right. Any right he had, he tossed in her face like a bucket of ice. Who, does he think he is? What did Brady say? Gabby's eyes darted down, then she turned and opened a cupboard. You have to try these cookies that Owen's sister sent me. They're out of this world. She opened the package and put a few on the plate, but Shay was still staring at her, arms crossed, when Gabby turned back around. Gabby. What did Brady say? Gabby picked up a cookie, started to take a bite, clearly enjoying Shay's torment. Gabby. She set the cookie down. He said that if Wyatt got his head out of his ass and took a look right at you, he'd see that the only thing standing in his way was him. Not Brady, but his own stupidity. That he was a bigger idiot than Brady thought if he messed things up with you. That everybody, but Wyatt, already knew you were spoken for and your heart belonged to him. But if he hurt you again, Brady would knock his teeth out. With a tire iron. Shay's mouth hung open. Wow. Brady didn't mess around. Don't be mad at Brady. He's protective and. He thinks of us as family. You included. I've been here less than a month. Gabby shrugged and took a bite of her cookie. Doesn't matter. When you know, you know. Pressure settled on Shay's chest and she nodded in agreement. She knew. That's what made it hurt so badly. I need to go. No, don't go. Have a cookie, Gabby said. Shay stood up, pushed the bar stool in, and grabbed her purse. If she stayed, she'd fall apart in front of Gabby. She'd rather do it alone. I can't. I have to. Make some phone calls. Gabby walked her to the door and gave her a hard hug. We can watch a movie later if you want. Maybe. I'll text you, Shay said. Walking through the door, she turned and looked back at her friend. Thanks, Gabby. For what? For making me feel like I belong. For being my friend. Gabby's eyes lit up. Back at you. Shay should have been answering emails. Her inbox had four new ones and a quick response time was one of the things people had complimented her on so far. She'd changed into pajamas when she came back from Gabby's and decided that her phone calls, her errands, and everything else could just wait. Grabbing a huge fleece blanket from her closet, she brought it to the couch. Walking over to her movie collection, she trailed her finger along the spines, picking her favorites. She'd been going nonstop since last weekend, trying to block Wyatt out of her mind. It hadn't worked, so she was going to give in to the wallowing. Six hours of sappy movies and that was it. After that, she'd function properly again and would stop feeling numb. She was debating what snacks to grab when the doorbell rang. Her heart hammered. Wyatt had only shown up once, and she'd stood on her side of the door, drinking him in through the peephole, while tears streamed silently down her face. She'd just given in to the urge to pity herself, now was not a good time for him to show up. Looking through the hole, she was relieved to see it wasn't Wyatt. Mostly relieved. She opened the door to see Gabby had her hands full. Hey, Shay said, hoping her voice sounded cheerier than she felt. Hi. I know you said you had some things to do, but I've also been exactly where you are, so I came to help. Shay let her in, closing the door behind her. 
She eyed the chips and bag of cookies Gabby had in a brown wicker basket. Help with what? Gabby looked her over from head to toe then nodded, and turned for the kitchen. Okay. You have the cozy clothes. You need the snacks and the movies now, and once you get a good cry going, we'll figure out what you should do from here. Shay laughed, but it sounded empty to her own ears. I was actually just setting up for love of the game. How did you know? Gabby unloaded several chocolate bars, a few bags of candies, the chips, and the cookies onto Shay's counter. Been there. I'm not going to cry. Gabby turned to look at her. Okay. But, you want to fix this, right? Gabby. She couldn't do this. Gabby genuinely cared for Wyatt, and Shay understood that, but she didn't want to talk about him. Gabby grabbed a couple of the candy bags and walked into the living room. Shay followed, noticing that her friend was dressed in cozy lounge pants and a baggy sweater. She curled up on the couch and motioned for Shay to take the spot she'd already planned to take. What the heck? When did Gabby get so bossy? Gabby opened the bag of little red candies. I know we don't know each other super well, but we're going to be good friends. I'd like that. She took one of the candies when Gabby offered. Wyatt messed up. He has to fix his part. You have to fix yours. Shay nearly choked on the candy. I didn't do anything. Maybe not. But relationships take effort and communication and a commitment to working things out. No longer feeling so friendly, Shay sat up straight and stared at the television. The screen was paused. On the opening credits. I'm not a kid, Gabby. I know how relationships work. Her neighbor had the nerve to scoot a bit closer and touch her back. Shay stiffened. You can tell me to go if you want to, but I really do understand how you're feeling. The thing is, Wyatt is trying to communicate. Things went wrong, and he's reaching out. If you love him, why won't you let him fix it? Tears welled in Shay's eyes. Was it that obvious? Apparently her brother and Wyatt were right about her stubborn streak, because she scoffed. Who says I love him? Gabby gave her a smile that could melt ice. Ah, sweetie. Her throat tightened. She could lie to herself and say she didn't, but clearly Gabby saw through her. This can't be fixed. He'll just give me an apology, and then the same thing will happen again. He'll shut me out or keep things from me. Everyone in my life does that. Like. I can't handle the truth or bad news will simply knock me over. I'm tired of being protected from everything. Gabby rubbed slow circles on Shay's back and the tension eased out of her neck. She sighed. Have you ever asked yourself why people keep things from you? Shay turned her head and stared at Gabby, her mouth open a little. What? You think there's a reason to hold back with someone you care about? That not telling them the truth is okay as long as you're just trying to protect them? No. I don't. But I'm asking you if you've ever wondered why people feel that need to protect you. Shay felt the anger swirling in the pit of her stomach, but she couldn't stop herself from thinking about the question. She'd let her family carry her for so long. It was her role. She was the baby. The one who bounced from one thing to another, and home, her family, was always her place to land. Her safety net. It had taken the embarrassment of being with a married man to break her out of her habits, and even then, she'd run into the arms of another family who treated her like one of their own. She hadn't stood up to her parents and brothers and demanded she be treated like them. She hadn't shown them she could handle it when things got rough. Instead, she started things and didn't always finish them. She moved all the way to Boston instead of just telling her family she wasn't a kid anymore. Because around them, it was too easy to fall back into that role. She let it happen as much, as they had. He's been trying all week to get a hold of me. And she'd run in the other direction, convincing herself to move on at the first sign of trouble. I know. I run. What? She looked at Gabby and swiped her fingers over the wetness on her cheeks. I run. If something is too hard or gets to be too much, I start something new. I told myself I just hadn't found what I was looking for yet, but I think that was just an excuse to try something new. Other than this job, the event. Planning, it's been a struggle to stick with anything. And even though I don't plan on going home, it's always in the back of my mind that I can. Even today, I have emails I need to send and I, I just push them aside. Because in the back of my mind, I always know my parents and my brothers will take care of me. You're very lucky to have such a supportive family. She gave a part laugh, part sob. I am. 
Instead of telling them that and appreciating it, I felt suffocated and was too weak to insist I needed to stand on my own two feet. And maybe there are things I could have done differently with Wyatt, but nothing changes the fact that when I gave him the chance, he lied to me. I don't know how to get around that. Not even for someone I L, her voice broke as the word lodged in her throat. Shay stood up, restlessness trailing over her skin like raindrops, down a window. Gabby spoke from behind her. It's not easy to change who you are, but why it's different than he was, just since you moved in. It's not enough, Shay said, leaning her head against the cool glass. Maybe not. But whether it's Wyatt or someone else, one day when you found the one, knowing that, even saying it, doesn't mean it's an easy road. If you want someone to know for sure they can turn to you, it's important to be there when they do. We all mess up, Shay. The amazing thing about loving someone, truly being in love with someone, is that they have your back. No matter what. It's unconditional. It becomes a matter not of, will we get past this, but how? Shay thought about that. Wyatt would definitely have her back. She had no doubt he'd protect her with his own life. But she needed more. She deserved more. Sighing, she moved back to the couch and sank down beside her friend. How do you know all this? Another time, I'll tell you about Owen and me. 4. Now, why don't we watch a movie? She wanted to curl up on her couch, alone. But that wouldn't help her move forward. Sure. Gabby squeezed her hand. Give it time. Sometimes the best things are the ones we never saw coming or didn't believe we would have. Not wanting to debate it, she didn't tell Gabby that she wasn't sure what she believed in anymore. Gabby's eyes sparkled, making Shay wary. What? Nothing. Just know that sometimes people withhold information because they're trying to protect you. Shay made a huffing sound and rolled her eyes. Trust me, I know that. But in order to do that, if they want to protect you, it's because they care. Sometimes even more than you can imagine. Wow. Her new friend didn't pull any punches. It made Shay like her even more. Gabby mixed her compassion and her empathy with straight-up honesty. Because she believed Shay could handle it without crumpling. She picked up the remote and pressed play. I can't guarantee my mind will be. On the movie, Shay admitted. Gabby gave a dreamy sigh that made Shay laugh. Me neither. Chapter 19 Would you just do it? Wyatt put his hands on his hips in an effort to avoid strangling Brady. He's just messing with you, man. We'll do it. Brady turned and glared at his, obviously nicer, friend. He didn't ask you. This is no royal we. The weight of Shay and Wyatt's future rests in my hands, and I intend to take that responsibility very seriously. He was a cop. He knew how to get rid of one body, even if Brady was a fairly large guy. Owen glanced over at him, standing in Brady's living room, and shook his head. You're so lucky he doesn't have his gun on him, Owen said. I was just thinking the same thing, Wyatt said, stepping closer to Brady. The jackass held his ground, though, and if he wasn't so wound up, so freaking on edge over Shay not answering his calls or his texts, maybe he would have found it funny. Wyatt let out a frustrated growl and shoved his hands through his hair. He walked over to the window. He was the jackass, and he knew it. She had wanted one thing from him, openness. And he'd been too selfish, too sure of the right thing to do, to give it to her. In the end, he'd not only broken her trust essentially, he'd put her in the exact danger he'd wanted to avoid. I'm just messing with you. Mostly. I do want to ask you a couple things, though, Brady said. Wyatt sighed and kept looking out at the bright, sunny day that held nothing but darkness for him. He'd even stopped by her place. She might not have been home, but his gut said she'd stared at him through the peephole. I'm trained to hold up under interrogation, Wyatt said. He was mostly joking. Maybe in your professional life, but somehow, I think when it comes to Shay, you're not holding up at all. He whirled, and Brady's eyes widened. Thanks, smart guy, Wyatt said. You figure that out on your own. I wouldn't be here asking for your help if I was holding up. Brady crossed his arms over his chest, and Owen leaned back in the reclining chair. Wyatt sank down on the couch and stared at the ground. 
I want her back. She won't let me close enough to tell her that. I hurt her. I get it. You guys aren't my biggest fans. I get that, too. But if she gives me a chance, I'll make this right. When he looked up again, both guys were staring at him with a mixture of pity and compassion. It made Wyatt want to punch something. Knock it off, Brady. What do you need us to do? Owen picked up the glass of soda beside his chair, and took a drink. He'd been here when Wyatt arrived. Again with the us and the we, Brady said. But he sat down on the couch and turned to face Wyatt. Wyatt held the other man's stare. Brady must have seen his desperation because he caved. All right. Tell us. Wyatt told them exactly what he needed and said a silent prayer that it would work. He thought he'd known what he wanted out of life. Now he couldn't think of one thing that mattered other than Shay. And if he had to be buddies with these guys to make that happen. Well, at least they weren't so bad. In fact, he could do a hell of a lot worse. Chapter 20 The worst part of the days after the art show was waking up and realizing something was wrong, but not remembering what. The heaviness in her chest refused to lift, and she awoke every morning with a sadness that clung to her throughout the day. She'd gone to bed after Gabby left last night fighting an urgency to reach out to him. Just to see him. But if she saw him, she'd want to touch him. And forgive him. How many times had he already apologized for who he was and the things he did? She had no right to try and change him. And clearly, being with her required too much of a change to his set ways. She'd started to respond to some of the texts he'd sent her earlier in the week, but erased them all. She didn't know what to say. His suit jacket still hung in her hall closet. When she'd realized that, she thought of taking it to him. Instead, she'd give it to Brady today. He'd called and insisted he needed to see her. She wasn't sure what was so urgent, but it would do her good to get out of the apartment. Brady had asked her to bring her notebook for event planning. He wouldn't tell her what was going on, but maybe it had something to do with the building and the party Mia wanted Shay to organize. Whatever it was, it couldn't wait, and Brady had been too kind to her to turn him down for this one request. He answered on the first knock. Hey. Hi. Come on in. He moved back so she could. I brought Wyatt's jacket. I was hoping you could give it to him, she said as she followed him down the short hallway. She wasn't chickening out. She was in survival mode. He looked back at her, over his shoulder and paused. You could give it to him yourself. She started to tell him why that was a bad idea, but her breath caught in her throat. In his living room stood Wyatt. Dressed in a black t-shirt and dark jeans, his hair was slightly mussed and his eyes, his amazing eyes, looked tired. He looked perfect, and her heart hammered so hard she thought he might be able to see it moving her shirt. Wyatt. Shay. The word was almost whispered, as if it hurt him to say it. It knocked her breath out of her to hear it. She looked at Brady, tears forming in her eyes. Brady shrugged. He said you wouldn't return his texts. I figured he must be pretty sorry if he was begging for my help. Wyatt growled. I did not beg. Brady shook his head and put a hand on her shoulder. It was sort of heartbreaking really, the way he cried. She bit her lip and looked back and forth between them. Wyatt didn't move, but through gritted teeth, he ground out, Brady. Brady put both hands up. Sorry. I probably wasn't supposed to tell her that part. He turned back to Shay. Hear him out. If she spoke, she'd cry. She nodded and Brady slipped away, walking down the hallway, back toward the kitchen. She held his jacket at arm's length. When he took it, his fingers brushed against hers and the simple touch shot electricity through her body. What are you doing here? He hesitated, put the jacket over one of the armrests, and gestured to the couch. Did you bring your notebook? Confusion warred with the painful relief at being near him. She'd missed him. 
missed being in the same room, breathing the same air, touching him, kissing him. This was why she'd needed more time. Obviously, they'd run into each other eventually, but she didn't know if she could handle sitting beside him yet. Yes. I should go. She sat down, staring straight ahead. Please don't, he said. She realized, staring at his jean-clad thighs, that he was waiting. He was asking, her not to. Giving her the choice. I can't stay long. Or I'll fall apart. He sat down beside her, so close she could inhale the scent of his soap and his cologne, and it was all she wanted to do. She just wanted to snuggle into him and take deep breaths. Let's just clear something up first. I didn't cry. Shay smiled, knowing he meant for her to, but everything inside her went still when he reached for her hand and linked their fingers. She held her breath. But if I was going to cry, over losing a woman, you'd be the one. That air whooshed out of her lungs like a gust of wind, and she finally forced herself to make eye contact. A large lump filled her throat. He let go of her hand. Wyatt spoke in a serious tone. Can you get out your notebook? I need your help planning an event. I'm sorry, what? Brady came in from the kitchen, and Wyatt gave a frustrated groan. Get lost. It's my place. And I'm being nice, so check the attitude. He set two glasses of water down, on the coffee table and spoke to Shay in a mock whisper. His throat might get dry if he cries again. Son of, Brady. Shay laughed, unsure how this could be both funny and painful at the same time. You can go. I'm okay, she said, knowing he was hanging around to be sure. Another protector. And wouldn't she feel the same if her friend was hurting? Or one of her siblings? Did that make her overbearing? Or was it just part of caring? Brady held her gaze a moment, as if weighing the truth. He nodded. I'll see you later. Brady winked at her and then looked at Wyatt. Turns out I need to go into work for a bit. He grabbed his keys from the side table and walked away. The door opened and just before it closed, he called out, If you plan on making up, for real, don't do anything on my couch. Go back to your own place. The door shut, and Shay's nerves turned into a giggle. She bit her lip but couldn't stop. Tears welled in her eyes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This isn't funny. Wyatt's mouth tipped up on one side before he took a drink of his water, then set it down. It isn't. But at least he left. Biting the inside of her cheek, she turned to him. Part of her wanted nothing more than to sit here and just be near him. I'm so sorry, he said. Curling her fingers into fists, she stared at her lap. She didn't doubt the sincerity of his words. I know you are. And so am I. If you'd told me it was work-related and you were concerned for my safety, I would have. Listened. I wish I'd handled it differently. What could she say to that? So do I? Can you get your notebook out? Lifting her head, she frowned at him. What event do you have? I can't play games here. You know, we never really gave the friendship thing a chance before it became more so maybe one day, who knows? But right now, it hurts to look at you. So please, just say what you need to say. Wyatt moved closer on the couch, making it hard to think. There are actually several events I need to organize. I'm not joking, Shay. I'd like to engage your services. Was he messing with her? He didn't touch her and yet she felt him everywhere. If he could do this, so could she. She was through running. She pulled out her notebook and opened it to a fresh page. Scribbling his name on the top of the page, she looked up expectantly. His lips were tilted up at one side, but his eyes were hard to read. Should I just tell you all of the events? If that's what you'd like, she said. She wanted to scream at him. How could he appear so calm when everything inside of her was now shaking? He leaned forward, resting his elbows on his legs. All right. 
I've given these a lot of thought so if you can just let me get through the list, we can discuss each one when I've finished. What the hell is he doing? Wyatt. This is weird. Please, Shay. Let me do this. Leaning back, he pulled a folded piece of paper from his pocket and opened it up. It had several creases. If you have the list, why don't you just give it to me and let me look, Shay said, her uncertainty warring with the pressure of too many emotions. I'd rather read it. If that's okay. She sighed, looked down at her page. Fine. Read it then. If she didn't look at him, maybe she could get through this. Okay. He took a deep breath, and when he spoke, his voice was low. Event 1 is the perfect date. I need to arrange it as soon as I possibly can. Shay's hand shook, and she looked up at him, her eyes filling. What are you doing, Wyatt? His expression lost its swagger. His eyes stared into hers and he gestured to her book. Please, baby. Write it down. The endearment almost broke her. With trembling fingers, she wrote, The perfect date. Event 2, Wyatt said, Making it up to you. She huffed. I'm sorry. That's an event. He smiled crookedly. She's stomach fluttered when he said, I have some great ideas for that one, so yeah. It'll be an event. She wrote down with a shaking hand, Make it up to you. The paper rustled. Event 3, moving in together so we don't have to spend any more time apart than is absolutely necessary. Shay's head snapped up. Her pen froze and her heart stopped, like a machine that was suddenly unplugged. Excuse me. He gestured to the paper. I said we'd discuss them after. Please. Let's get these down. Teardrops fell onto the words she scrawled. Move in together. Wyatt leaned closer. Event 4, an engagement party. That one should have a star beside it, because I'm not sure if it's something you'd want or if we can just skip all the before stuff and jump right to getting married. She set the pen down and wiped the tears from her eyes. Looking up, she shook her head. How could he go from shutting her out to wanting to marry her? And why was she so irrational that everything in her wanted to shout, Yes, please. Wyatt. I can't do this. What are you doing? He crumpled the paper and closed the space between them. Kneeling in front of her, he took the book and pen, set them beside her, and held her hands. I'm trying to show you that I want to plan ahead. My whole life, or most of it lately, has been about getting through each day. Just making it through. But as soon as I met you, I started thinking about tomorrow and the next day and the day after that. I knew, from the second I saw you, that I wanted you to be part of all my tomorrows. She pulled her hands away and covered her mouth, but it didn't stop the sob from escaping. He brought both his hands to the side of her head, holding her still and locking his eyes on hers. I am so sorry I hurt you. Jake texted me that he was outside and everything fell apart. I went to get rid of him. I didn't tell you because I didn't want you to worry. I really thought I'd only be a minute. There was nowhere else I wanted to be except with you. She tried to focus on the facts and not the raging beat of her heart. Why was Jake there? He'd been following me. He was nervous and wanted to talk. Who the hell knows why junkies do what they do? All I cared about was getting rid of him. I didn't want the ugly part of my job to touch you. Any more than it already had. One tear slipped. Jake hurting me here had nothing to do with your job. He cursed under his breath. If I'd followed through, he wouldn't have had reason to come back. When you came outside, I was desperate to get you to go back in. To keep. You safe. I was a complete jerk, and I'm sorry. She wanted to pull her hands back but they felt warm inside of his and she craved the connection. Why didn't you tell me then? Because I wasn't certain he was gone. I'd called Jimmy after Jake walked away and was waiting for him to show up so he could follow Jake home. But I clocked Jake and threw him in the trunk. 
she nodded, remembering that part at the same time she remembered the ice-cold fear that had frozen her spine when the drug dealer had grabbed her and held a gun near her face. Like he was reliving it, too, Wyatt's shoulders shook. He ran his hands up and down her arms. I have never, in my life, been as scared as I was in those few minutes he had you. It wasn't my favorite moment, either. He looked down, his hands resting beside her thighs. I didn't protect you. That wasn't your job. His head snapped up. No. It wasn't. But you mean everything to me, and if anything had happened to you, I'd never have forgiven myself. If someone was hurting me, wouldn't you want to stop them? She bit the inside of her cheek. His pain was almost harder to feel than her own. She nodded slowly. When she put her hands on her lap, he covered them. His eyes looked damp when he met her gaze. I'm so sorry. There are a hundred things I could have done better since meeting you. I'll do better. I, swear to you, I will do anything to show you I can find the balance you're looking for. I trust you. More than anyone. I'll always want to protect you, but not because I don't think you can take care of yourself. I know you can. But when you love someone, their safety and happiness become your world. At least, that's what happened for me. I didn't handle it right, but I'll get there. Please don't give up on me. On us. When two people love each other, it isn't about if they'll work it out, but, how? Shay's tears fell, but she made no effort to wipe them. You love me. He cupped her cheeks like she was a precious jewel. Shay, I love you so much it consumes me. I think about you when I go to sleep, when I wake up. When I stop at the store. In the middle of meetings. It feels like I think about you every damn second, which is kind of messing me up. I tried giving you a couple of days. I tried text groveling and phoning. I tried coming to your place. I know I screwed up, but I will do. Anything, anything, to make this right. Being with you makes me feel like I get another chance. When I came out from undercover, I felt like my soul had been, tainted. Like I'd seen too much to ever be a good person again. You make me feel like a good person. You make me want to be one. I love you and even if you can't forgive me, I will love you for the rest of my life. She knew she was ugly crying now, but she couldn't stop it. He kissed her tears, despite how fast they fell. He held her, close and rocked her from side to side. Pulling back, she used her sleeve to wipe her face. She did not even want to know what she looked like. What about the blonde? Wyatt reared back. What? Sniffing loudly, she continued to wipe her tears. I came up to meet you because it seemed like you were taking so long on the night of the show. When I stepped off the elevator, I saw a woman leaving your apartment. And when I asked you about it, you lied. Wyatt tunneled his hands into Shay's hair and pulled her close so their faces were almost touching. I'm sorry I lied to you. She was a tenant. Turns out she had the package Jake had been looking for. She'd returned it. I honestly didn't want anything getting in the way of our night so I figured we'd talk about it later. And even if I'd thought to tell you right that minute, I couldn't have with other people around us. I really do have to keep a lot of my work private. But I should have talked. To you. It was a stupid thing to do and I'm so sorry you thought, even for a second that it was anything other than work-related. I will never, I swear to God, ever lie to you again. Her tears slowed as her thoughts sped up. She hiccuped and then let out a gasp when Wyatt stood and scooped her up in his arms. She held on as he walked down the hall to the bathroom. He set her on the counter and passed her the box of Kleenex. Turning on the tap, he opened a drawer, shut it, then opened another, and took out a washcloth. She wiped at her nose but refused to look in the mirror. She didn't want to see. Wyatt wrung the warm water out of the cloth but instead of passing it to her so she could clean herself up, he gently rubbed it over her cheeks, under her chin, across her forehead. She closed her eyes, absorbed the feeling of having Wyatt take care of her. 
not because she couldn't take care of herself, but because he wanted to. Because he loved her. When she opened them, he put the cloth down and was staring at her with embanked emotion. He breathed in, like he was trying to figure out the words. I didn't want to talk about Jake. Shauna, she's the tenant, showed up right before I came downstairs. That's why I was running behind. She showed up as I was leaving. She dropped the package off and left. That's it, Shay, he said. He paused like he was unsure of what to say next. But his voice was very sure when he spoke. I will never cheat on you, hurt you on purpose, or let you down. Again. I know I let you down, but I swear to you, it won't happen again. I've been trying so hard to keep my work life and home life separate because I was scared I'd let too much of the bad stuff seep in. I went to see a department shrink yesterday. I talked about some of my baggage and surprisingly, I felt better when I left. I will screw up. But I won't let you down again. Other than confidential information, I won't hold anything back from you. And I will love you with everything in me. I will be faithful to you, and I want the same in return. When you're ready, I want to stand up in front of our three mutual friends and promise you that. I know it's soon, and I won't pressure you but I want you to know, that's what I want. The rest of it just doesn't matter. Please tell me it's not too late. Shay's tears welled again, but she was determined not to let them fall. She had something to say, too. I'm sorry I turned my back on you. It seems like I have a habit. Of that. He stepped between her legs. What are you talking about? Instead of working through the hard parts, I tend to run or go home. I was mad at you for not opening up to me. I expected you to trust me even when a little piece of me never let me fully trust you. It was almost like I was waiting for you to screw up so I could say I told you so. I'm sorry for that. You are a hundred percent forgiven. He kissed the tip of her nose, and she cringed. She was just going to pretend she hadn't been, bawling and that her nose wasn't all red and blotchy. He didn't seem to notice. I understand if you can't tell me everything, but you have to give me enough to know that whatever is going on isn't about us. Isn't about you feeling scared and shutting down. He nodded. I promise. And you promise not to run. Unless it's to me. Shay's heart pounded like it was dancing inside her chest. I promise. And it is soon, but when the day comes, I think we should probably invite our families along. With our friends. Wyatt laughed. Probably. Tell me you love me. Shay's lips trembled. I love you. I love you so much I had no idea how I was going to get over you. Don't. Don't ever get over me. I need you. You have me. Which you've apparently informed people of, she said. His face scrunched, wrinkles forming between his brows. What? You told Brady I was spoken for. Wyatt scowled. God, she'd missed his scowl. You are. I wasn't giving up without a fight. There's nothing to fight over. I'm yours. I have been since the minute we met. He kissed her forehead. I forgot a few things on my list, he said. She laughed, feeling like she'd lifted a boulder off her chest. Oh yeah? What did you forget? He winked at her, pulled her against him so she could wrap her legs around him. Makeup sex. Pampering you. More makeup sex. Our second date. Our third. He walked back to the couch and sat down with her straddling his lap. She hugged him as close as she could while, still letting him breathe. Let's start with the first item, and then we'll take a look at the calendar so we can schedule and all of the others. He brushed his lips across hers and pushed her hair back from her face. I love you, Shay. You make me see the good in the world, instead of just the bad. Leaning in, she nipped at his bottom lip. I love you, Wyatt. There's plenty of both, but whatever comes our way, we'll face it. Together. 
Before she could kiss him, he leaned sideways and grabbed his jacket, patted the pocket, and pulled out a small, gray box. He held it between them. I didn't get to give this to you the other night. What is it? His smile finally touched his eyes when he looked at her. It's what you are to me. Opening the lid, he revealed a gorgeous, thin silver bracelet with three tiny charms. The sun, the moon, and the stars. He pulled it from the snug packaging and undid the clasp. Her hand shook as she held out her wrist. The three strands hung delicately on her wrist. He brought her hand to his mouth and kissed it. Without these things, the world has no light. It's the same for me, without you. She stopped him from saying anything else by covering his mouth with her own. Everything else they needed to say could wait. They had plenty of time to talk, since she knew she wasn't going anywhere. And neither was he, baby. We should go up to your place. She pulled back, feeling dazed, and remembered they were at Brady's. Right. Wyatt scooped her up, and she left. They weren't going anywhere, except home. Together. Epilogue. One month later. She pulled the cookies out of the oven as the door to her, their, apartment opened and closed. Setting the pans on top of the stove, she turned in time to see Wyatt stride into the kitchen. She hoped that her heart would always do that, somersault when she looked at him. His smile was wider than usual. You tell Brady your place is all cleared out. Wyatt tugged on the front of her apron and brought her up against him, his arms winding around her waist. Yup. He said we should have moved in there because cleaning up this place for a new tenant would be easier. Then he said it didn't matter because it was no longer his problem. She winced. She hadn't seen much of Brady lately. Even when she wasn't busy building her client, list or snuggling up on the couch, or in bed, with Wyatt, Brady had been splitting his time between work and avoiding Mia Kendrick, who'd recently moved in. You shouldn't take quite so much joy in his misery, she said, going up on tiptoe to kiss him. Maybe not. But it's kind of fun. Those cookies smell awesome, he said. He leaned down and nuzzled her neck, sending a shiver through her body. She knew exactly where that would lead if she didn't stop him now. Pushing back, she patted his chest. You can have one, but that's it. My family will be here soon. When she started to go around him, he took her arm and pulled her back. You nervous about me meeting them? She laughed. I probably should have told them we were living together but I think it'll be easier face to face. With me by your side. Lifting her hand to his cheek, she let the overwhelming feelings of joy and love swamp her. Always. Without warning, he scooped her up in his arms. You should change since. We have company coming. She wrapped her arms around his neck. You don't have to carry me, you know. But she couldn't help loving it when he did. He strode to their bedroom their bedroom. Just thinking it made her feel giddy. I like having you as close as possible. He followed her down onto the bed. She wound her fingers into his hair, loving the feel of his weight on her, surrounding her. I like that, too. A lot. But you should stop. We don't have time for this. We could make time, he said, nuzzling the spot under her ear. I have to tell my family I've not only met someone, but I'm in a serious relationship and living with a man. I am not getting caught in the middle of anything. Wyatt levered up and grinned down at her. If they say anything, you could always tell them I ask once a day to make it forever. Her heartstrings tightened. He did ask every day. Sometimes in the morning, while they were eating breakfast. Sometimes after they'd made. Love and other times, when they were just cuddled together on the couch. She knew the answer and so did he, but they hadn't made it official. She was trying to be logical, to not let her heart rule her head, but every time he looked at her like he was now, she wondered why she was waiting. She reached up and pulled his face down to hers and whispered against his lips, ask me again. He pulled back but only a little. 
Her heart beat in quick burst. Wyatt framed her face with his hands. Mary, me. Yes. When he kissed her, she felt the subtle shaking of his body and the heavy beat of his heart against her own. She'd come to Boston for a fresh start and instead, she'd found her future. Acknowledgements This book became so much more than I imagined it could. That's because Stacy and Alexa pushed me to make it that way and I'm so happy with the result. Thank you to both of you. To everyone at Entangled who worked with me on this one, and the last. I feel so lucky to be, part of this family. To my own family who never stops supporting me. I love you guys. I may have mentioned that once or twice. To the Romance Chicks, 2017 is going to be a great year for all of us. Every book deserves a shout out to my constants, the people that talk me down, talk me up, remind me I can do this or just make me laugh and tell me it'll be okay, Matt, Bren, Tara, Kara. Every time. Thank you. To Christy for being a non-stop sounding board. To the Fantastic Five. You guys are. Insanely awesome. Stacy S., you're going to have to share Wyatt for a bit. To Fran, for helping me get where I wanted to go. It's a really good place to be. Thank you, readers, for wanting to know Wyatt's story. I hope you enjoy it.